against who? Your pain. Hey, you know, I got a question for you, buddy. Even though we're not allowed to talk to each other and you talk all smack and everything, you're out there telling people I got your dad's inheritance. How did I get your dad's inheritance when you've already put a YouTube video out there that you got $2 million from your dad's inheritance and spend it chasing all over Kentucky to see your kids and for the children's services, remember? Now, be real. Yes, I did turn in your dad's death burial money that your mother spent out of her money to bury your father. James, you show me one receipt that shows me over $700,000 in your mom's bank account from the time she was born until the time she died. And buddy, I will give you a million dollars. But guess what? You ain't got it. Because your mom's never had that much money. You don't know what money's like. You're trying to say that the Combs owe you 25000 for living in a house for two years. But I only owe you 15000 and I've been here six years. Boy, you sure know how to add, don't you? You know, you better hope uh, your daughter or your other children don't grow up to be like you. Because so, you now have a 13-year-old girl, and if she thinks like her mommy at 18, she's going to run away with a 35-year-old man. Let's see how you feel about your little, little girl being with a man. You can do it. You did it to her mother. Andrea, we're friends. We will always be friends, but you were still a little girl when you got with him. If you would have been my daughter, he would have been getting the mm, knocked out of him, period. You know, I could see a few years between each other, but not 25 years. What? James, just keep talking. You know, you can talk about people stealing money from you. Me and Jim and all of us have stole money about from you and your mommy. Well, James, here's the long run. Nobody wants nothing from your mother. Nobody wants nothing from you. We are blessing your mother's wishes. Did she love you? She loved you at birth. But she also knows that she spoiled you rotten. She wouldn't pay your uh, college tuition. Guess what? I'm not paying my son's college tuition. He should be able to pay that on his own. And it's triple what you used to get. What you owe them, he owed them in six months. He's going to owe them $47,000 at the end of this. But guess what? He's paying it, not you, not your mommy, not even me. That's his responsibility. At least he knows what his responsibilities are, and you never have. Your mom never taught you respect. She never taught you responsibility. She did everything for you. You said your mom didn't do nothing for you? Where you been living for the last 30 years paying rent, James? Who pays your light bill, James? Who pays the truck? Who bought a brand new truck for you to drive after you wrecked one of her cars? You're right. Your mom don't do nothing for you, James. More like you didn't never do nothing for your mother. And that's why the Frost family stepped in. Because you're a worthless son. Let's be real. You couldn't go out and cut the grass. Oh, I got a bad leg. She bought a $3,000 turn zero lawnmower, and you still couldn't get on the riding lawnmower and cut the grass. You couldn't weed whack. 
You couldn't even watch your kids go outside and play. That's why you made them stay in the house and locked them in their bedrooms. You say you didn't lock them in their bedrooms. Well, there's pictures of locks on them doors. Try again. See, you're always saying all oh, this, that, and everything. But you ain't got proof of anything, James. Show people the proof. I got proof who I am and who what I am. You're telling everybody you're 65% Cherokee Indian. You ain't nowhere near it. For you to be 65, that makes me 65. And I'm lucky if I'm 0, 0. 0.65. You're talking seven generations back, James. You ain't even probably in your bloodline no more. And you're going to be able to go to any reservation you want. You're nuts, guy. You know, the, the doctor got you on any kind of medical drugs? Because you need to be on something. If you're thinking that way. You know, you think you're all bad. Well, there's a man from Canada wants a piece of you. You say you want a piece of him. Prove it to everybody. You're that kind of man. Because the courts ain't going to get involved. They don't care what you do. Oh, I forgot. Your God. Well, I got news for you. I believe in God, too, and I believe he has a son named Jesus Christ, and my God is definitely stronger than yours, because there is only one God to create the world, and it was mine. Sorry. I don't care what anyone believes. I do believe the Bible. That book's been around more than... 30 generations and more back. That book's been around since time. So you guys believe what you want to believe. I believe the Bible. And I believe, James, if in this world, if one of these trolls or somebody don't take care of you, when you get to heaven, you will face my Jesus, my God, and you will see where you go. I hope you have a wonderful life. And you can keep trying to put me in jail. Because it's never going to happen. I got some of the best lawyers there are, buddy. So you keep going. And it looks like you can't keep a lawyer. So you can't keep kids. You can't keep a wife. You know, the only thing you could keep was your mother, and that's because you were under her coattail. So, you know, James, that's what I'm saying. You like to get on and do lives about everybody. Well, I'm not allowed to show anybody about the videos that was in your mother's house, but you can. So I've also sent that to the judge because you had no rights to film your mother on your phone when she is a 92-year-old dementia woman who don't know what she's saying. You said little Jim says she wasn't dementia. Your mom was dementia. When she can't remember if her mother and father are still alive, your mom is starting to go. We all knew it. You were just trying to make sure you didn't know it because you knew it was getting close to you're going to have to get on your own feet by yourself because mommy ain't here to help you no more. But I forgot, mommy never helped you, right? Who paid your child support in Wisconsin? I wrote out some of the checks. I know who paid for them. You said you worked so many years. You should have known better, James. I'd like to take your social security number and match it to mine and see who really did work the most. See who's got more money coming in when we do finally be able to retire. I am there, Mr. Handyman. I'm preaching it as loud as I can, and I hope he sees it. 
I am done playing with the boy. I ain't getting nobody in trouble. I'm putting this out on my own, on my own YouTube. I'm allowed to post anything I want, remember? As long as I'm not saying I'm going to hurt somebody. I'm not going to hurt nobody. He's hurting himself. He's the one that gets on here and talks all the garbage. He's the one on here saying this, that, and everything. Do you think Jim would be living in the home he lives in right now if he had $25 million? He'd be sitting on the Hawaiian Island somewhere, drinking whatever they drink, eating steak every night. Jim is like me. We don't care about money. We care about family and love. To help one another, help each other out when we are in need. If one goes hungry, invite them over and feed them. Because someday you might go hungry and you might need them. Oh, I forgot, James. You can't do that. You already burned all them bridges down, didn't you? Saying everybody wanted your mom's money and your mom's property. You think your mom had a lot? Let's talk about one of my uncles, one of your mom's brothers, Mr. Floyd Frost. Your mom had nothing compared to him. You want to talk about somebody that might have been a millionaire? There's your millionaire. Another millionaire? Mr. Larry Frost, not me, the real big Larry Frost. He might even be almost a millionaire. But that's the only two that's ever came close to being a millionaire. So I don't care what you say. I know what your mom sold the businesses for. It's all on computers. It's all on the paperwork. It's all, it's all done through the court systems, James. They don't hide that stuff. You could look it up. Oh, I forgot. You only know how to turn stuff on the computer that you don't want to see, right? But things that's telling you the truth, you can't look that up. So you just keep going what you got to do, buddy. And someday we will see each other again. You know that because this world is a very small world. And I'm going to be posting every single day until you try to make me stop. And guess what? You can't. There's no law that says I can't say your name. You said mine over 500 times. So why not me talk about you? You know, you found your mom on the floor and did not dial 911. James, when we go to court again, that will be said, definitely. But has that camera ever saved your mom's life before? Yes, because she did fall once before, probably almost in the same area of her bed. And the doctors told me to pull the rugs. I pulled the rugs. Who was the one that sent your mom to the hospital, James? Me. Who was up listening to the camera, James? Me. James, who's the one that caught you giving your mom her pills at 12 noon and 4 p.m.? And I told you you couldn't do that. You have to give them to her at 8 in the morning. And you told me I didn't know what I was talking about, and I turned you in. Two, uh the lawyer, and the doctor. I'll tell you I'm the one that turned you in. You giving her them pills that close will mess her mind up. But you saying I'm messing her mind up? You said I gave her the jab? Guess what? I didn't give nobody no jabs, nowhere, no how. I don't own a doctor's office. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a doctor. If the doctor ordered it for her and he wanted her to take it, then she got it. James, when's the last time you took your mom to the doctors? Oh, I forgot. That would have been the day that he threw you out and told you you were a crazy nutcase to leave his office and don't ever come back there. Okay, so you never did. 
So now the Frost family has been taking your mom to see the doctor for the last 10 years. But now you're going to play games? The Frost family did more for your mom in one day than you did your whole life, James. And if you can prove me wrong, you prove me wrong. You show me something that you did for your mother. Did you buy her a birthday cake? Did you get her a birthday gift? No, no. Do you know who bought your mother's birthday cake? Out of his, his money, not her money, his money? Me. Do you know who bought her roses? Me. Do you know who went over there and celebrated? Me and my wife and both of my sons. So that shows me how much you really loved your mom. She loved you. There's no doubt about that because she wouldn't have spoiled you rotten if she didn't. Glenda, she is your stepsister. She will be your sister. And I got news for everybody. Glenda was a frost. Her mother's maiden name was Frost. So guess what? The bloodline run Frost. Oh, Irvy, since you don't understand how the bloodline works, do you think that one little sperm that your daddy sent up in ties, your mother, turned your mother's blood all into Hilton? It don't. Hello, that's frost blood running through her, buddy. She married a Hilton. She didn't take a transplant of blood from him. She took sperm. I think you were born a girl, and you just don't know it yet. Because you sure act like one. You cry like one. You're a little bitch like one. A little girl who don't know how to do dishes, don't know how to cook, can't keep your mate happy, can't keep your kids happy. I'm surprised your dog ain't bit you yet. I don't care what Vaughn's getting. Yeah, I'm starting to read your messages. Sorry, y'all. Exactly. He has no... He won't do anything that causes him to do effort work. He can't... You know, and you can even get on the computer and make money answering the phone for Burger King and McDonald's and the pharmacies and... There's all many, so many jobs out there that you can get paid with sitting at home on your computer and he won't do a thing. He'd rather get in there and play with horse vaginas and play with J-dubs. Yes, you are definitely more of a man than Vaughn. Exactly. He's getting a dose of the truth. I'm done with him. I'm done playing with him. My core paperwork's all show me I'm good. So whatever he's got to say, he can say. No, I didn't know he threw a puppy in the kitchen's trash can, but he should have took it outside and buried it. But that's the way he is. It probably ain't in the trash can anymore. He probably cooked it for dinner. He told the judge he had no money. He was starving. Yeah, if you guys want, you guys can send me all the videos you want of Vaughn Hilton. Try to take everyone out of it else, because I don't want to see none of that other stuff. 
because then I'm going to start putting my nose in their business too. And maybe I shouldn't put my nose in no one's business, but Va Stinky's business is my business because he is a frost. He's making it look bad on us. In my book, there is not a frost in the family that is bad. They're all lovable, they're sweet, and they will help you any way they can until you burn the bridges, until you do them wrong. You steal from them, you lie to them, you do something talking garbage about them. Yeah, well, the bridge is burnt. Yes, I will look at all comments. I see them still coming across, but it's kind of hard to read them and talk at the same time and make sure I keep my words straight because I want him to understand me clearly. I am done playing games. I like for a cup of y'all to go live, but I don't know how to invite you to join in with me. Or if any of you really would want to. It don't matter to me. I just like being out and being seen and gives me something to do. I'm thinking about going on every single day and finding a new topic to talk about. You guys all know that I watch quite a few of you. I got three main ones I do watch. Secular Opinion, you are number one. And that number two spot is Fighting with Miss Parker or Grumpy Lobster. I watch them both. I like them both. They're all doing good. You guys ain't seen any of them? Go see them. They are very good. They love some of their shows. Miss Parker is the one that's got me thinking about going everywhere and talking about everything because she does the same thing. And, you know, there's going to be some conversations I'm not going to agree with. There's going to be some that I am going to agree with. Nobody's perfect. Nobody is the same. We are all different. Every single one of us. We might all look the same. We might all have same parts and stuff. But we're not. We're all different completely. We come from different bloodlines. Some of us was raised right. Some of us was raised wrong. Well, I know I've been silent, but the judges and the lawyers and everybody were telling me to stay quiet for a while. Let it all fall in place. Let everything come down the way it's supposed to. And I'll be okay. And that's exactly what I did. I kept my mouth shut until the video came out, which was not supposed to come out on YouTube. Thank you, Secular Opinion. It came out on Facebook because I was posting it to her and Alice's granddaughter because she wanted pictures of her grandmother on Mother's Day. So I was posting. My big fat finger got in the way and hit the one with Irvy in it, Stinky's in it. And he complained to the judge, so I got in trouble. But I also contacted my public defender and told her what was going on, and they've now got everything taken care of. He says it ain't over yet. To me, the way the judge looked at me and everyone else looked at me and the way my public defender looked at me. It's all over, buddy. It's done. The only thing you have to worry about is getting your two fifty dollars a month for the rest of till your kids turn 21. Because once you're, they're 21, they can take their money out of the bank account and there won't be nothing in that account and you will get no money. I said it earlier, you're lucky I ain't got a six-bedroom house right now. Because if I was rich and I stole two million from your mother, I would put a house right next to where your mother's house sat. I would have built a six-bedroom home and I would have adopted your kids. And you would have never seen them again. And they've been right next door to you. 
I would have looked out the window and let them look at the wind out the window and laugh at you, James. I'd have them calling you a piece of shit before the week was over. I treat you like the way you treated your mother the year you wouldn't let her see him because she wouldn't give you no money. So you told everybody, oh, she hit him with the broomstick. She hit him with the coffee cup. You couldn't even keep the story straight, James. And you kept your grand, her grandkids from seeing her for a year. Do you know what that did to your mom? That drove her crazy. That drove her nuts. That made her really know how much you loved her, James. Not at all. Videos that you posted, your mom ain't did shit for you. The video that your mom was there and told you that's the reason your kids were taken from you was because you had maggots growing in your pizza there on the table and you couldn't pick it up and throw it in the garbage? She seen it. Your mom cried, James. Do you understand that? She cried watching that video. Larry, please turn it off. Please. And I had it took off the screen. You know, you are the worst human being in the world, James. I'm sorry to say that, but any man who ever treated his mother like that, you guys are a bad man. And I don't care who your mother was. My life was my mother and always will be, even though she has passed and went on to the pearly gates. Same thing with both of my grandparents. Grandmothers at that. It ain't just the grandfathers, it's the grandmothers. My mom's side and my dad's side, they were wonderful women. I just wish somebody would have raised you right, James. Your mom must have been working too much because you know she worked her butt off all her life to make sure you had something in life. And look what you did to her. So, James, you take that to your conscience, to your mind, and you do whatever you want because I don't care. You want to post another video of me? Go ahead. I will send the response out the following day. Because just as your haters are on here, my friends are on here. And they're watching everything you post. And I don't care where you post it at. It comes back to me. And if it's too bad, I'll send it to the judge. And if it's too, not bad... Then I'll get on here and talk to you about it. But oh, yeah, I know you're not going to get on here and talk to me because you're not allowed. Do you think I care about laws? You know, you're an Indian and you care about the laws. Guess what? Us Indians didn't care about the laws, there was no law. So, yeah, you know so much about the Indians. You're 65% Indian, but you know nothing about them. Do you know which one of your family members was the Cherokee? Because uh, we've looked up your father's side and I didn't see nothing. I know where the Cherokee Nation comes in because I got it on paper. I got proof where the Cherokee Nation comes in at. You talking about tears of fears. You know nothing about it, James. You're lucky to probably remember the title of it. Did we lose any family there, James? Since you know the tears of fears. Did we lose any family there, James? Who killed your eighth great-grandfather, James? You're right. You don't know. Quit talking if you don't know about it. If you know some and you know it's 100%, I have no problems with you talking about it. But when you're toothpaste lying the whole world, then I got something to say about it. Just like you said something about Queen Elizabeth II today. You know somebody that is disrespectful and I don't care if you like her or not. And I hope her son sees it. Because guess what? 
He is now the king. He ain't just nobody. He is the king. Go over to his country and tell him his mom's a worthless piece of and see what he tells you. He'll have your head on a silver platter, buddy. You don't disrespect nobody's mother, period. I never disrespected your mother. From the time I met her until the time I took my hands off that coffin. And I would never disrespect any of my elders. You know, you talk a lot of stuff, James, but you can't back nothing up. You have no proof of none of it. You say you worked for the military, you were in the army, and then you went to government work. Well, guess what? I know people that work in the government, and they still get paid from the government, even though they've been out of government work for the last 15 to 30 years. They still get a paycheck every single month from them. Where's your paycheck, James? Oh, you didn't get enough time in, huh? That's it. One day don't count. You got to do four years or better. Oh, you couldn't last even in a college four years. So how are you going to make it to boot camp for four years? How are you going to do anything for four years? There ain't nothing you did for four years but stay on this computer running your mouth. You've been doing that for 15 years. I wish you'd get on right now with me, Mr. Vaughn Hilton. Or hey, Jay Job, you out there? Come on and see me. Come live with me. You want to hear about your friend? You want to have an argument with me? Come on, me and you. I'll tell you all about your friend. He says I don't know nothing about him. Well, it's not hard to look him up. Hamilton, Ohio. Look up the school yearbooks. Look up the school records. It shows you everything. I could get his birth certificate if I wanted. Does he not know that the computer is very strong? You could almost do anything on the computer. He's so good on the computers. Here, I'm only maybe a year into learning how to do the computers, and he's been doing it for 20 years, and I'm getting better than him already. Yeah, she was diagnostic tested, and she had old timers and dementia. The dementia was first, and then the old timers started kicking in. And I agree. The computers are great because they're a good way to communicate. I have boys in Toledo, Ohio still, and I communicate to them. I got over 200 friends in Toledo. I communicate with them. I got friends all the way across the United States of America, as I call them, brothers, all across America. And now I even got a couple in Canada. So I'm doing good. I definitely want to thank, and I think I did a video earlier today about this. I want to thank everybody that sent their condolences about Alice. I want to thank everybody who was trying to send money to help bury Ann Alice. And Alice had money put away for her funeral. She knew it was going to cost her money because I checked up on it like almost a Four months after I took power of attorney, I made sure everything was ready. Her gravesite was ready. Her tombstone was ready. Her funeral was paid for. All I had to do was pay for opening and closing and the flowers. You know how you put flowers on a casket? That's the flowers we paid for. 
I think it was like three hundred and seventy-five dollars or four hundred and fifty or something like that for the main flowers to lay on her coffin. And I spent eighty-five dollars for a dozen of roses with one white one in the middle with baby breasts. The whole works. It was beautiful in a vase. And it sat right there on her table the whole time of the funeral. And before they closed that coffin, I was the last man there. And I put a rose in her coffin and told her I loved her and I'll see her when I get to heaven. I'm sorry, everybody. That woman meant a lot to me. I mean, I spent the last 14, 15 years with her. She was a great person. She was well-loved. She was well, well of everything. I mean, if you needed something, she was there to help you. My mom was dying in the hospital. She won me $1,000 to go be with my mother. How could I ask for anything better than that? When I got home from seeing my mom and buried my mom, I gave her her $1,000 back. I would never, ever hurt Miss Alice or rip Miss Alice off or want anything Alice has. There is only one thing that I would like to have that I hope don't get destroyed. And the grandkids don't destroy it. Hopefully they'll be old enough and they'll take care of it. If there is one thing Alice has. And I'm not going to say what it is. Because I don't want James to go break it and tear it all up. But there is one thing she has that I would have. And it, to me, it ain't worth no money. It's worth the brain and the heart. That's where it came from. And who owned it. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't mean to cry. I mean, that woman gets me upset all the time when I'm thinking of her. I'm always crying about her. I mean, I wish she was still here, but we all know she was up in age. And she's lived a long life. I mean, come on. She grew up through the Depression. And it wasn't just one kid. She had, you know, seven brothers and sisters. So, it was a family. I know my grandfather had to have a lot of problems and had to be out in that garden day in, day out, and out there feeding them animals to make sure his family was being fed. Back in them days, they didn't have too many businesses. It was you go out in the garden and work and grow your own food. You raised your food. You know, me and her sat and talked about that a long time, a lot of times. You would not believe how many times I've sat on the phone with her for four and five hours talking to her about the old past. I know I'm a long friend and I don't have to worry about crying, but, you know, I loved her. I mean, that's period. I had more love for her than her own son did, and that's that's pretty bad. It really is. Any man who does not love his mother for just even giving birth to him. And that's not a man. That's not a child of God. That ain't a child at all. The children are taught to love their parents. Did I love my father? No. Do I love my dad? Yes. He taught me how to fish. He taught me how to hunt. He taught me how to treat girls. He taught me how to cook. He taught me how to go out there and get a job and work my butt off and get what I want the hard way. And that's what I did.
I don't play games. If I want something, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to work for it. And I'm going to work my butt off until I get what I want. And that's what I tell my boys every single day. To me, right now in this world, it's all about money. The more money you got, the better off you are. You can't take a woman out to a nice restaurant if you ain't got no money. You can't have a house if you ain't got no money. You can't have a vehicle if you ain't got no money. I mean, and my son is working hard. I mean, he's been a straight A student since the day he entered kindergarten all the way until the 12th grade. He brought one B home in the 11th grade and he cried about it. Dad, a girl beat me, too. She beat me. She was higher ranked than me this year. Son, girls are supposed to be smarter than boys. Don't worry about it. You're okay. There's nothing wrong with you. You know, I had to bring his confidence back up. But, I mean, an A student all of his life, yeah, I'm proud of him. And now he's in college. He's in his second year. He's doing great. He's still an A student. All I get is praises from him. I mean, he is great. I couldn't ask for no better. The other ones did okay. They're not as good as Larry, but they're doing okay. They're surviving. They pay their bills. They work. They make money. One's married and have children. I have a baby still at home. Can't call him a baby. He's a senior in high school this year. Kids grow up quick, and you got to enjoy them while they're small, because if not, sooner or later, they're just going to move out on you and be gone, and you never see them again sometimes, and sometimes you get to see them all the time. I've told these two here at home right now that I hope, like on Blue Blood, that we can get together every Sunday for dinner. Just to keep our family together. You know, since my grandmother has died... The family don't even get together for family reunions no more. Since Miss Alice has died, there will never be another Frost reunion down here unless somebody else starts it. And I mean, they're, like I said, they're all across the United States. So, I mean, a lot of them are hard to get here. My Aunt Hazel, when she was alive, she flew in from California to be at some family reunions for that week. I got them in Tennessee. We got them in Georgia. We got them in Michigan. They're all over. You could try to do video call dinner, Larry. That wouldn't... That would probably work. Yeah, dinner. There you go. Dinner time. Yeah, guys, I just wanted to get on here. I'm so bored. I sit around and do nothing all day besides go to the doctor's office, watch Blue Blood, or play games on the computer, and I'm getting so tired of playing the computer games. So what game can I play? I'll go live on YouTube. See what I can get into. See how many visitors I can get. See how many thumbs ups. I'm just glad I learned how to get on here. I'm glad that I got some friends on here. I know that some of you ain't here because you guys are at work or ain't realized that Larry's learned how to use his laptop finally. But, I mean, I'm just, I'm tired of James. I'm tired of all his bull. Uncle Jim is, too. And we've been, literally, I'm holding Uncle Jim. And Millie is holding little Jim. And all of us is holding little Jim down. Because little Jim has got a temper. And he wants a piece of him, too. But, like I tell Jim, that he's not worth it. He's not worth him even going to court, going to jail, or anything like that. His time will come. We all know that. Yeah, I love Blue Blood. I've seen it. Every, I've seen every episode. 
that and NCIS. Love that Abby. She nothing's gonna get past her. Like she said, she can kill you over a hundred different ways and never find out how, why, or how who did it. She is good. You know, somebody told me he had a hole in his brain at one time. I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe that's his problem. I don't know. But I think if that is a problem, then his mom should have had him checked and had him being taken care of. You know, and I think that's kind of where it all kind of went sour, guys, is she was babying him and... When he cried, Mommy, she left me. Mommy, she threw me out. She let him come right back home and took care of him and pampered him and fed him and gave him everything he wanted. You know, he says he was going to move into his mom's house. He posted it on YouTube. Well, you ain't going to post a video on YouTube and shit, tell me you're going to move into your mom's house as soon as she died. Because, yeah, them locks were going to be changed. And the lawyer said we could. I couldn't, but little Jim could. And it was done. Why didn't you try to move into your father's home when your father died, James? That was the best home out of all of them. Why did you let your mom sell that house, James? That was the best of all of them. That was the most property that your mom owned, James. Why'd you let your mom sell it? Because you didn't care. You didn't care about nothing until the last 20 years of her life. And then you knew it was getting close. So now you want to make sure you got all that money and everything coming in before she goes. Well, she knew that. And that's why her and the lawyers got together and wrote the will. Two fifty a month, period. That don't mean she pays your bills. Why you get the two fifty? That don't mean she pays anything else. All she is giving you is two fifty a month until the twins turn twenty one, and then you get nothing. Because it all goes to the kids. And you said if the kids get adopted out that they don't get nothing. You better check the Kentucky laws because you're wrong again. I don't care if their name's Joe Blow or Joe Joe. That social security number with their real birth names Shows you who they are and they will receive everything. And I don't care if you got a law degree, a homeowner's degree, or a ordinary de degree. I don't care if you got orders from the President of the United States. They still ain't no good, James. If I leave my son something, my son gets it, no matter what, period. Hello? Nobody can take it from them kids, not even you. Maybe if you had power, maybe. But guess what? You have no power. You don't even know how to take care of them. The only thing you know how to do is take Jerry's check and spend it on cars when you should be spending it on his clothing, on his medical bills, on food, on rent. Want me to keep going? Because you got over $5,000 worth of cars in there. Keep going, James. I could keep going. You know, time is coming. I guarantee you that, everybody. Time is coming for him. It might be a while. I might not even live to see it, and I don't care. But when he comes up to the pearly gates of heaven, I will be standing there laughing my butt off. I guarantee you that. 
because I know what's going to happen. And my grandfather, his mother, and his father both will be standing there with me. And I know Mr. Hilton and Miss Alice are going to cry when their little boy can't make it in them gates. Because you believe in the wrong God. You believe in treating your mother like shit. You believe treating your family like shit. You believe treating the world like shit. And you think you're going to get in the heaven's gates? Boy, I got a surprise for you, buddy. It ain't going to happen. Yeah, the way he eats, I might outlive him, but, you know, I ain't eating too healthy right now myself, so. But I ain't eating all junk foods. My wife is at least giving me some kind of food. I think the only junk food I had this week, I had three cookies with a glass of milk. Oh, does Burger King count as junk food? I had a half of a Whopper. Doctor says that he wants me to start watching my weight. He needs me to start eating a little more because I've lost 40 pounds in over four months. And they say I'm kind of losing it a little too fast. But like when I told him, when you go from eating two and three Whoppers at dinner time to a half a Whopper, you're going to lose weight. When you go from drinking a 12 pack of Dr. Pepper to drinking two Dr. Peppers a day, you're going to lose weight. I want to thank everybody that sent Grumpy Lobster to Vegas. I think he loved it. Him and his wife. They looked like they had fun. I watched all the videos. Looks like they had a great time. And hopefully before I die, I would like to someday go over there and visit her myself. And it won't just be her because I do have a brother in Vegas too. So, I would love to go and say hi to her and us sit there and smoke a couple big fatties. And, you know, I don't drink no more, so we just have to get stuck with the fatties. But I sure can go to that go-go place that she took Mr. Grumpy to because I sure like looking at women. I'm a man. Yes, Grumpy is the... Well, I can't say the best, but... He, he's on the top of the list. Him and Miss Parker are fighting for second place right now in my book. With Seckler standing on top. I do hope one day I do get to meet her. And she'll see this video. And she knows. I mean, she seems like a really good person. I only know her on here. All of you guys seem like good people. I mean... And I hope God watches over each and every one of you every single day of your lives. You know, the world needs more good people in it because right now this world to me is going crazy. When kids are going around killing kids, there's something wrong. When there's people going into stores and killing 25 people, something's wrong. Some people say it's racism. Some people say it's other stuff. Me, I don't believe in racism or however you say that. Excuse me. Give me one second, please. Honey, will you blind out my window for me? Because that sun is bright right into the cameras. There you go. I hope everyone can see me a little better. These little pockets of caring are like lifeblood. 
Well, that is life. You got to care for people. You got to care for what's going on around you. You got to care about the world. We live in this world and we have to take care of it. We don't take care of it, then it don't go on. We can't leave it to our children. You know, that N word that a lot of people out there say, I have used that word two or three times. And I'll say it to Claire's day. And I know I got family members watching this right now. I called my own father that one time. And he's as white as white. You know why? Because to me, a N-word, that word that you all talk about, is to me means somebody who does not care about the earth, somebody that does not care about the world, somebody that don't care about nothing. They throw their garbage. You go to McDonald's, you eat your lunch, you drink your pop, and you throw your garbage out the window. That's an N-word to me. When you, my dad's, oh, so what? We got the county jail people out there cleaning up. Give them something to do. That ain't the point. I don't care if there's people out there cleaning up every single day. You don't throw your garbage out in the earth. You don't destroy the, our land. I mean, think about it, people. I mean, wow, I can't believe I've been out here an hour. Yeah, I think I already responded to that. I hope I do meet Miss Parker someday. She seems like she'll be a good person to meet. Or even Grumpy Lobster. Or, <laughs> secular opinion, <laughs> I sure'd like to meet you too, Bertie. Like I told you, I'll buy you a Heineken's if that's what you drink. I don't mind no one drinking. I used to love to drink. But I could never drink no kind of beers because it seems like I drink a Miller's and I go pee for about five Miller's or six Miller's. I was more of a Jack Daniels kind of guy. Most bars know me as a double shot of Jack on the rocks with a Jack and Coke on the side. That's how I walked into the bar and ordered every single night when I went that bar. And they knew me very well. I mean, I closed them every night for almost two years. But did I say I worked across the street? I closed my shop and go over there and close their shop. So I was there about three hours every night for two years. Usually taking a new girlfriend home every night. Yeah, my, my wife just called me a slut. But it's the truth. I was looking for the right one. You know, you just, I wasn't lucky. I wasn't lucky to find when I entered into high school at 15 years old that I'd find my true love for the rest of my life. Some of us have to look for a while. Some of them fall right in your hands. You never know. I mean... Hopefully they fall right in your hands when you're young and you guys can grow old together and enjoy life together. Some of us ain't that lucky. Did I grow up with my father? No, he left me. And you know one result? He told me because his, my ma was going to put him in jail for child support. I laughed about it. As you all know, I have been to jail a lot. A lot of it domestic violence. My ex-girlfriend, wife, whatever you want to call her, with my other two children, she had me put in jail at least 15 times. And then... One day they said, well, Larry, you got to stay 100 feet from her. She was at work. I went to her house. I took a measuring 
tape with me. I measured 100 feet away from her house. I marked that line. And when she come home with them boys, for I can watch her carry my children in that home, I watched her carry them in, and she called the cops. Cops come out there and looked at me. You know she has a straining order. You have to stay 100 feet away from her. I looked right at the officer. Yes, I do, sir. I know I have to be 100 feet away from her. But I like to see my kids because I love my kids and I would never desert my kids. I'm not like that. I'm not leaving my kids without knowing who their father is. And officer, I am 101 foot away from her front door. So I am not breaking the laws. James, I wish you'd get on here with me because we sure have a nice little talk, wouldn't we? Oh, I forgot. You're afraid of the courts. You say the courts won't let us talk. Courts never told me I couldn't talk to you. And the courts never told you you couldn't talk to me. So there's another lie that you're telling everybody. What are you? Habituous liar. That's, that's what we're going to call you, the habituous liar. Or would you like us to just stay with stinky? Because that sounds better when you only take a bath every six months. You don't change clothes but once a year. So, I don't even think you take a bath every six months. So, anyone got anything to say? Now I'm looking to see what everyone's telling me. Because I'm getting bored and I'm having problems figuring out what to say. Has to believe on would be... About something. Yeah, well, he'll be on later tonight, guys. He'll lie about something. He'll say I'm not telling the truth. I'm lying, but it, you know, promise. It's me. Hi, Todd. Yeah, I know. It's hard to believe he would lie about anything. That's Mr. Truffo. 120% Cherokee Indian. But I still run the same exact bloodline as him in the same area, but different people. And I'm nowhere near that. I'm lucky if I'm 0, 0. 0.65 Cherokee Indian. Was Chief Redbird related to us? Yes, Chief Redbird was my eighth great grandfather. So what? Daniel Boone's sister was my ninth great-grandmother. So there's plenty of white, plenty of guys, like I said earlier, and I'll say it clear as day today, right now on this video, I am a, what we call a Heinz 57 sauce. I am mixed with everything. And I mean everything. German, American, Indian, Scottish, Italian, probably Mexican and black American too. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I got a feeling I'm mixed with everything and I don't care. I'm happy to be me. I raised my boys right. I taught my boys right. And I'm trying to live my life the way I think it should be lived. And if no one likes it, sorry about their luck. And that's how it's supposed to be. I want everybody to live their lives. You know, when we were growing up, let's talk to some of you older people like uh, Grumpy. Grumpy, 16 years old, what did you want to do with life? Did you want to be a policeman, a fireman? Or should I go back to when you were Ted? Because at 16, you were probably already thinking of women. You're seeing the same thing with you, Todd. I know you're up there probably in your 40s now. What did you want to do when you were 10? Me? I wanted to be the police officer. And then I wanted to be a gigolo. But did I become either one? No. Then I want to become a farmer. I did get to see that. And boy, I'm going to tell you, it's hard to be a farmer. It's a lot of hard work getting up at 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, taking care of a 
10 acre piece of land that's got all your fruits and vegetables on it another five or ten acres that's got your cows and your pigs and your chickens and your rabbits and all that on it it's a lot of work Yep, see, there we go. Robin wanted to be a policewoman. Good for her. And Todd wanted to be a police officer. So, see, a lot of our dreams, you know, did they come true? No, but we still went happy. We're still happy with what we do now. We enjoyed life. We raised our families, and we went on with life no matter what we all become. I've had a lot of jobs. I've been from an ice cream delivery driver on an ice cream truck to being a roofer, to being a cook, to yeah. building windows, to building houses, to landscaping. I mean, I can go on and on. I did a lot of jobs. I worked in a truck stop, worked at a truck wash. You wanted to be a butcher. Yeah, you would eat good. Butchers do eat good, I heard. I don't really see too many people go live anymore. I mean, I do get a couple at nighttime, but I don't see no daytime lives. Maybe I'm going to start doing that. <coughs> I don't know if some of you guys are at work or if you're all home waiting to get ready to go to work or what, but Todd, I appreciate you doing that family tree history a little bit on Stinky because it kind of gave me a clue on a couple things too that I looked up through it. It worked good. I appreciate it. I also seen the video where you were telling Vaughn about how to get the money for his mom's grave. I was hoping that you would have seen me posting. I paid for it. It's paid. It's paid. He never called him. Never talked to that funeral home at all. They tried to call him three times. And if he would have talked to them, they would have told him. The minute she passed away, the next morning, the body was transferred to the funeral home. An hour after that body re was put at that funeral home, I was there paying it in cash. Yeah, and I have a witness, James. Guess what? I also got the receipt, James. So I can prove what I can say. Would you like to hear it from my witness? Because she's standing right in front of me. My wife don't lie about nothing or nobody or nothing. She's more church going than I am. That girl, church doors open, she's there. Except when I'm sick. Except when she's sick, she says. And she'd have to be really sick. I think I'm going Nobody is going to pay Vaughn's bills anymore. He is going to receive a $250 check from Alice's estate until the kids turn 21 years of age. He was complaining to the judge on the 7th when we went to court, but that ain't enough money for him to live on. That all he gets is that $250 in cash, and he said $250 in food stamps. He says his bills are over 400 a month. Well, the estate says, well, we don't know what to tell you. We're not going to pay your bills. We will send you a $250 check every single month until the twins turn 21. And at that point, all the money will be given to the kids. And what the kids do with their money is up to them.
It says 250 a month, Todd. No, it don't say no more than 250, but it says 250 a month is all he gets. And when the judge read it to him, he's like, oh, no, 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 that ain't right. My mom wouldn't do that to me. His mom did do that to him. You know, I'm sorry to tell him. I mean, she got tired of spoiling him. Was me and Jim brainwashing Alice? No. We were being truthful with Alice. We were telling her what was happening because in her last 10, 15 years in life, she started going loose up. She couldn't remember things. She kept thinking her mommy and daddy was still alive. She she couldn't even remember her sisters all died. All her brothers is gone. She was what I call the last of the Mohicans. She was my last great aunt living. No, it does not say no more than 250. It's 250. It says he will receive 250 a month as long as the money is there. Well, when the twins turn 21, the money will not be there no more because then they can receive the money. They can do they can tell me they want me off my property and one of them can move here. One of them could tell their dad to get off that property and they can move there because they own it. They can throw their dad off that property. But personally, I think if the foster parents got full custody of the kids, they should not be able to throw Irvy off the property. Because he don't own it. No, he read it wrong. <laughs> he can't even read, people. And he's two years a college degree student here. Remember that? Y'all remember him saying that? He got two years in college, but he can't read. How did he get past sixth grade if he can't read? Oh, I forgot. That's me that didn't get past sixth grade, huh? Ha ha. Check my records. Woodward High School. Toledo. That'll tell you where I went and how long I was there. You could also find out who my first, first job was at. Joseph's Supermarket. LaGrange and Erie Street. Bag Boy. I was bagging groceries for a living. Making three thirty-five an hour. No, his house is not livable, but his mother's house is. That is a beautiful home, and I'm surprised that nobody's tried renting it out yet because I know she's going to at least get 700 a month for that, and then it's under the natural gas line, too. Oh, yeah, she de they, they jump all over it for 700 a month. Lunchtime. Or should I say painkiller time? Okay, well, if he's reading from the older will... And let him read from the older will. It still ain't no good. Her new will is the one they all went by. They go by the newest will that was wrote. Oh, I forgot. He says that we can't count that. Well, if you can't count that, and we do go back to the will he's got, guys. He literally said he changed his name to Vaughn Hilton, didn't he? So, that first will that he's talking about says James... Hilton. 
not Vaughn Hilton. Hilton. So that means he's not James Hilton. He's not even in the will. There's no James Vaughn Hilton in that will. It's James Hilton. So he gets nothing. I don't know how he met his first wife. Grumpy Irv. Grandpa Irv. I didn't know Irvie until after I moved down here 15 years ago. And the worst thing of all, I stuck up for him when I first met him. Because he had real long fingernails and real long hair. And he come outside to a family reunion. Looking like Ozzy Osbourne would look like at 5 o'clock in the morning after two concerts and partying all night long. Hair looked like it was an afro that was four foot long. And I was like, why don't you go in there and brush that hair, James? Put it in a ponytail, put it up under a hat, and nobody sees it. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. I took my hat off and my hair fell longer than his. I know how to maintain my hair. I knew how to take care of my hair. I wasn't going to go to no family reunion looking like some cro chromio bum that just crawled out of the woods. I'm going to go there looking nice and looking decent and letting my family, oh, that's Larry. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, Arnold's grandson. You know what I mean? I want to look good. I want to make a good impression on people. Are you talking about correction on his name or his kids' name? Because that's why he kept saying that the kids wasn't going to get it because they wasn't under Vaughn Hilton. They're under Hilton. But like me and Jim and the lawyer has discussed, we know who Vaughn Hilton's kids are. They all three have a social security number. When you are born in the United States of America, you get a Social Security card. That number is with you for your whole life, Stinky. That number will tell me everything that you have done your whole life. You had to use it at schools. You got to use it at any work spot. It was on your driver's license for how many years before they start taking them off because people would use another ones? Come on, think about it, James. What are you, that dumb? You know, you're telling Todd and all these people that you're 120% Indian when you know Todd's going to get on that computer, Amazon, as you call it, Amazon. And prove you wrong. It's all on there. Hello. These are the computer days. Everything's on a computer, James. You should know it. You've owned that computer how long? Oh, I forgot. You don't go that far. You just stick in the horse vaginas and uh, stick in on J-dubs. And then that's it. You don't go nowhere else, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Shows me what kind of life you really live. Um, hey, James, you want to get into talking about Andrea now? You say she's the nutcase. She should be in the nut house. I seen the video where she apologized about your mother. And she said she was sorry. And you told her not to worry about it. I do take her sorries. But I don't take yours. Because, you know, that was wrong that she hit your mother. She blacked your mother's eye. And you know something? If I would have thought about it and if I wanted to be a prick, I could have made one phone call and had both of your wife's eyes blacked. Really, I should have just blackened your eye for your wife hitting your mother. 
Because that's disrespect to me in my book. But, you know, after I talked to your wife, I understand why she punched her. Because you quit taking, giving her and giving her meds. Probably the same way your mom died is because you quit giving her her meds. You know, Andrea Meese talked. And no, I'm not trying to sleep with Andrea. I don't sleep with young little girls. My wife is my age, buddy. I don't need no little girl to make me feel good. My wife makes me feel good. Oh, you wasn't looking for a wife, James. You're looking for a baby maker, a house cleaner, and somebody to raise all your kids and make sure your dinner's made no matter what the hell you're doing on the computer. You can get on the computer, play on it all day, and make her do all the house cleaning, taking care of all the kids, making sure they're all dressed, bathing them. I've seen it, James. We've watched videos. Every one of us has. Of you doing this stuff. And you say you're a good father, huh? Yeah, well, I'm sorry. You're not a good father. You know something? I was told to stay away from my kids 100 feet, and I kept going there. James, you have literally have the opportunity to go down to CSB and see your children. You would video chat with them instead of going there. You know some. I love every time that I get to wrap my arms around any one of my children. Even if they're 30 all the way down until my 17 year old. I am tickled pink when I can hug them. That hug is more than anything in this world. But you will never know. Because you don't love your children. You have no respect for your children. You don't care how your children turn out. Do you want your Lila or Layla to turn out like her mother? Do you think when she turns 18 year old, she should get with a 35-year-old man that cons her into coming and staying with her, saying that he's going to give her the world and don't give her shit but a headache and three kids? I wonder why she cheated on you, if she did, and I don't believe she did. I think she just needed to get out of the house and get away from you. And if that meant her leaving her babies, then she had to do what she had to do. But I literally think she should have called CSB herself on you. I think she ought to called the police the day you pulled the gun out on her. She should have put you in jail. Mentally, and I'll say this, Claire, and I hope, Andrea, you see this. Personally, honey, I would have called the cops the day he pulled that gun out on me. He would have went to jail. And you and your three children would still be living in that house today. Miss Ann Alice, which is your mother-in-law, would have helped you out any way she could have. That I can promise you. The only thing I would say is you do not keep the kids from her. Because that was her pride and joy. And when you become a grandparent, when any of you become a grandparent, you guys will realize that it is very precious being a grandparent. The good thing about it, you can spoil them and rotten and send them back home to their parents. Todd, you're the master of the receipts, huh? Yeah, buddy, I like keeping receipts too. I like to see where everything's going, where it went. You know, maybe not my fit food receipts, but when it comes to anything like port and papers and stuff, yes, I keep them all. I got every court paper that I've ever received on Alice right here, right now. I can prove it all the time. I can prove it right this second. I can yell for the wife to grab my uh, book bag and it's in there. 
and I teach my kids the same way. Just like I told Irvy, Irvy, if you you got all these scholarships and you did all this and you did all that, prove it to me. Show it to me in a picture frame hanging on your wall. Do you want to see my sons? I can show you my sons. I can show you where he graduated from high school. I can show you where he got a full scholarship. I can show you that he's a 4.4 average in school. My son can prove all that. Can you? No, you can't. Did he hide Lita, Li, Lila's social security card? I don't know if he hid it or not, but, you know, it's all recorded in social security department itself. If you, you know, you take the name and you know the name and the birthday, you can punch it in and you can get social security numbers. They won't send you a card until you prove that you are them or you are their guardians to get it. I know that for a reason, because right now I am going in court, for, or not even going to court. I am trying to get my name on my youngest son's birth certificate. After 17 years, they said my name's not on the birth certificate, so I can't collect no food stamps or K-tab pouring no more. Even though they've been giving it to me for seven years now, $118 for both of them. Now they said I can't claim it because I'm not on the birth certificate. So now I got to get his birth certificate with my name on it. So we had to go get his social security card, his birth certificate, picture ID. We had to get it all again. Show them all of it. I even took Arnold, told Arnold, hey Arnold, ask, tell these people who you are and who your parents are. You know, some things are crazy nowadays and some things ain't. You know, I grew up respecting my parents. I grew up respecting my grandparents. Anybody elderly, older than me, I respected. Kids my age, I usually gave them the benefit of the doubt. If we got along, we got along. We didn't, I didn't hang around with them. They have already been put up for adoption. Has it went through yet? I do not know. I know he was supposed to go to court on the 6th, is what he told the judge, and he missed it. That his lawyer didn't tell him that he had a court date, so he missed his court date. So I don't know what's going back on that. And then somebody said something about he has one coming up on the 26th of this month. So all we can do is wait and find out what happens. Grumpy, Grandpa Irv, I really think you're wrong. I think them kids would be great kids. If they have the right people raising them, you got to have the right people raising you. Even if you have a mental disability or <clears throat> anything, you got to have a parent who is going to love you, take care of you, no matter what. Before one of my kids starve, I will starve. Before one of my kids does without, I will do without. Would I ever adopt them? Yeah, I wish I could have. If I would have had a big enough place, I would have adopted them myself. Because I think they could be good kids. I think all kids could be good kids if they're raised by the right parents. <coughs> you want to send me clips. Most of my clips, I'm just getting used to 
this here studio stuff and this uh, YouTube. I don't know how to get clips here. As everybody knows, I am also a Facebook account user where 90% of my family members are family with me on it. And probably two or 300 people from Ohio area because most of my family's there. So I was raised there for almost 30 something years. So I do know a lot of people. Um, I would say if you wanted to probably send me anything, I would probably send it through the Facebook account. If you have a Facebook, it'd probably be easier for me to get because I, when I get on here, I go straight live. It's kind of hard for me to look. Um, I am talking to somebody about throwing a little movie together. Me and him's been talking about it. We are taking all the clips that we can get for, we can try to throw it together. But we had one little problem. Who are we going to get to play Stinky? Because we can't get Stinky himself. I thought about getting Stinky and giving him $10 to play himself. But if we did that, then when we all got around to start the movie up, we'd all die from his smell. I don't want no one dying. So we can't have Stinky as the main caster. So we'll have to find somebody to play Stinky. If you have a suggestion out there, let me know. Oh, Todd, I've been waiting for that eviction movie for a long time, buddy. And uh, hopefully someday it will come up, buddy. But the way it looks right now, it might be a while. We got to wait and see what the foster parents are going to do or what the lawyers are going to do. I keep telling them they're losing over a thousand dollars a month there. At least almost. Well, if you don't count Irvies, they're losing seven or eight hundred dollars a month by leaving Alice's house empty. If James's was worth living in then, you know, that that's a $1,000 piece of property sitting there that they can be bringing in every single month. That's $12,000 a year for them three kids when they turn 21. As long as the properties don't need no help. Like he don't break the pipes and let the dogs crawl up under there and tear up the ductwork again. Or he lets them shit through the house or runs the toilet over and we got to replace the floors again. I don't know if y'all know, but one of his bathroom floors, not the one there by his bedroom, but the one in the other room where the shower is, they were replaced twice within six months. Brand new tubs, brand new shower, brand new toilet, brand new bathroom sink, brand new flooring. The wood under the flooring, the whole thing was replaced twice in six months. So, I mean, hey, my views are starting to go up. 18 watching, 19 likes it. So, the, eight, the 18th one watching that didn't like it must be Vaughn Hilton himself. Hi, Stinky. How you doing? You want to come out and play? Larry's playing today. I want you to come and play. Or is it your little sidekick, uh, John? John, you watching me? Oh, uh, you don't have to hide. Come on in and see me. I hope he is, Todd. I really do. That's kind of why it's out there. They told me I cannot post anything to do with the videos inside her home that has him in it. This don't have him in it. This is mine. I'm posting it live from my home that I pay rent to, to the Alice Estates. My money does not go to James. My money does not go to the kids. 
it goes to Alice Hilton's estate. And it will sit there until them kids turn 21 years of age. And it's theirs. Baby Jane, I see you're in Kentucky too, huh? Well, hello, Kentuckian. Yeah, he's trying to put me in jail too. I wouldn't worry about it. He's a lot of talk and no action. That's what he's all about. He's called me out once. I've went over there. He ran in his room. Hid in his trailer, locked his doors, wouldn't come out. So, I mean, he just talks a lot of shit. I know exactly where that's at, too, Ashlyn. I got some family over there by Green Up. Team Larry, ha ha. Thank ya. Marble? Ma I'm sorry if I said it wrong. Yeah, he, he, he can't afford no lemons. How's he gonna suck on them? The only thing he's gonna suck on is John. Yeah, I'm still learning. I ain't even know what most of these buttons are. I see the button that says end stream, and I've learned how to use that. Larry, do you ever go to Camp Wildcat, too? No, I have never been to Camp Wildcat yet. As you know, my family does go there, and some of them are... Pretty well into that, but I've not been able to go there yet. I would love to. I want to check it out and, you know, see what things are like. And I thought that'd be kind of interesting. But I'm in no hurry to do it. I do have friends that go there, too. And it was so weird because I have a friend on Facebook that I talk to all the time, and she said she met somebody down there that was some real good people. And she told me their names, and I was like, you know, that's my cousin, right? She goes, oh, no, I didn't know that. You know, so to me, the world is big. The United States is real big, but once you start talking to people and you're a friendly person and you get along with everybody... You get to know a lot of people. You really do. If you go across the United States of America, I know I have to know at least 5,000, 10,000 people through my lifetime. I've already answered that, AC. No, I do. I have not went to the Wildcat yet. Now, I did go to a place called Wildcat Holler in Ohio. But that was when I was deer hunting probably 15 years ago. I am a deer hunter. I am a squirrel hunter. I am a rabbit hunter. I like to, I like meat, so. At least I still got 17 watching, so I'm not losing nobody. Anybody got any more questions? You grew up in green up. That's pretty cool.
Yep, I got some friends there right now. Well, to me, they're family. They married into the family, so they are family. <clears throat> Everybody quit talking. What's going on? You're getting quiet on me. No, everybody is not shorter than Vaughn Hilton. Gray alien, I'd keep you around, buddy. i keep a close eye on me if, I, if you were kind of smart, because I'm going to be posting all month long. I'm going crazy on this thing, buddy. I don't know if I'm only allowed to make so many videos or not. I have no idea. But I want to see what he's got to say. He got something to talk about me. Let's do this. Because I'm done playing games with him. I'm tired of him lying to all you guys. I watched that one video where him and a couple of them were all talking about uh, his mom's funeral and how he was going to pay for it. He needed 7000 I like that face he gives when he turns around and looks and says, well, who paid for it? Who do you think paid for it, James? Really, who do you think paid for it? Your God? Wasn't you, of course, because you have no money. You're telling the lawyers and the judge that I took your dad's inheritance money and I spent it. Your dad's inheritance money went right into your mom's bank account. Her name on top, like I always told you, you cannot open a bank account with the social security checks with your name on the top of the account. Her name has to be on the account, but you know everything, so you didn't listen to me. So I showed you how to do it. Her name is top of the account. I am the man who controls it, shows it where it's going, where it's being coming in or going out. I got receipts for everything. When your daddy's money was deposited in that account, it showed it in the account. When I drew money off that account, it shows me the account being drawn off. It shows me where the money went. It shows me exactly what you got left. I got receipts for the workers that worked to put the flooring in. Who put the air conditioner in? Who did the electrical work? Who did the flooring work? Joe crawling up under your trailer and fixing the water pipe. I got receipts for all of it. The bank shows it all. And now the lawyers have it. You say I ain't paid rent in seven years. James, I got a rent receipt for all seven years. So, kiss where the sun don't shine, as you say. You ain't got nothing on me, James. That's the point. Nothing. The only thing you got is that little old video. And you think that video something? Wait till the movie is released. I am going to be a very, very, very rich man. Because everybody's going to want to see this. Promise. Promise. Everybody. And me, in secular opinion, and your ex-wife, and maybe Grumpy Lobster if he wants to come back over here in the United States and have some more fun. And we'll bring Miss Parker on over to let her see what the beautiful state of Kentucky looks like. 
would treat her to some hospitality down here. But James, we're all going to be there and we're all going to watch the movie live. And so is the rest of the world. Promise you that. And by the time you, by the week after the show is out, James, you won't even be able to go out to your house, buddy, without somebody knowing who you are and what a piece of low-down, dirty scum you are and how you treated your mother and treated your family for their whole lives. So, enjoy. Oh, Miss Parker, did you get your paycheck this month? It was a 2022 penny, right? That's what you said. Brand spanking new, straight out of the mint. Grumpy, I know you got yours. Yep. I know the judge got hers. She said she got hers the other day. Why we were at court, she got it that morning. So, sounds like everyone's paid off. Now, what are we going to do, people? Y'all know he's putting Miss Parker in jail because she's taking bribes. He wanted to know how much money she made off the frost. I paid her one penny. I tried to get her to take a wooden nickel, but she said she'll just take a brand new penny. She says she ain't seen none of them in a while. Sorry, Miss Parker. I had to squeal. And Grumpy, I'm sorry. I love you both. Wouldn't miss either one of your shows for if for nothing. Unless something's going on with the wife or kids, of course, but. No, I don't kill puppies. Not at all. Never have, never will. If I was going to kill any dogs, I'd like to kill the two out in my own front yard. My own. My wife's. Neither one of them likes me. They try to bite me. and You know, but they're, they're her dogs. I mean, I also like them because you're halfway up my road. They're already standing straight up, tail straight up in the air. Rub, 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 rub. I know you're coming. So I like alarms saying that somebody's coming down the road. So that's why they're still here. Or I would have tried to calm my wife on getting rid of them. But they are good dogs. They both come from my dad's dog. Them are two puppies that my dad's dog had before she died. I kept two of her puppies, or the wife kept two of the puppies. Um, No, I did not see the puppy, and I personally wouldn't want to see it. And I don't know how long ago it was. But if that's true, then somebody should turn hit turn that video over to the authorities of animal cruelty. Because I don't care if it's dead or not. You don't throw it in the garbage can. And if it's dead, you should go outside and bury it in a backyard like you anything. And that don't mean bury him next to his mother. Because y'all know. We buried her next to a dog, as he says. Wow, I can't believe this. I've been on here two hours and still got 18 people watching. I must be doing pretty good for my first couple of times being live, huh? I'll have to straighten up my background a little bit. Y'all see that big old sunlight coming in. It's shining pretty good. Well, to be, if he felt sorry for that dog, he'd go out there and bury it. 
Why would you let it leave sit in your own garbage can in your house stinking? That's all I can say. Why? Does his stink on his own body cover the smell of a dead dog in the house? If it's so, then somebody needs to send help over there to him. J-Dub, you better send help for your friend because he needs help. Yeah, animal control would definitely be the main one. Well, that's surprising. They might have, but uh, he just ain't said nothing about it yet. It just matters how long it's been because uh, for a while there, them cops and everybody, everybody was staying away from everybody down here. They say that C-19 is pretty bad down here in the area right now. Which we really don't worry much about it because we barely ever go out anywhere anyways. If he leaves the trailer, the Frost will claim that he abandoned the property. No. No. No, because we know where, if he goes anywhere, the only furthest place he's going to go is down to the uh, Dollar General to buy food again. I mean, that's the only place he can go, I mean, or the gas station. And I don't care which one he goes into, I can find out either way. That gas station is like the Toledo. <laughs> the gas station is like the Toledo News. You want to know something? Go on up there, and you can find out everything. I'll go in there at eight o'clock tonight and find out everything that happened today. I mean, this is a small community. There's probably only. 75 people, maybe, at the most, around this little carryout area. So, I mean, 75 people going into the same little store every other day, every two, three, four days, <laughs> they get to know each other. And then I'm related to most of them. When I first moved down here, my... Let me think of who was it that told me that. One of my cousins told me, Larry, because when I moved down here, me and my wife was not getting along. We had a little bit of problems, so, so. So I moved down here with my two boys by myself. And my cousin looked at me, Larry, if you think you're moving down here to Clay County, Kentucky, and finding you a girlfriend or a wife, I think you've lost your marbles. And I looked at her and I was like, what do you mean? She goes, 98% of Clay County, Kentucky, Osley County, Kentucky, are related to you through the bloodlines. Getting really didn't believe it. I Okay, okay. But when I look up the records, she's right. When I look at what I got from Ancestries.com, she's right. My family's been here a very long time. And there's a lot of them. Right now, I'm carrying 54 subnames. So that would be 54 grandmothers. Because then would be the subname. The regular name would be Frost. I was born of frost, I will die of frost, because I am a male. Just left Vaughn's power get cut off, then he'll have to leave the trailer. Well, as long as he as long as he's paying his light bill. 
then he's going to be in the trailer for a long time. But, you know, some months, like uh, Millie told me, last month his light bill was over $300. He's only getting two fifty. So how is he going to pay the light bill and water bill? Can't forget the water bill, but come on, his water bill can't be too high. He don't do dishes. He don't wash clothes. He don't wash himself. Can't be too high. Yeah, AC, you're right. Can't forget the water bill. I'm not. But think about it. He don't use it. He can't come begging for help there, alien. The bridges are all burnt down. The bridges are gone. He burned them all. Does he have to pay rent? At the moment, no. Because his kids control the land. I think it's going to be between the, the judge, the lawyer, or the parents that are power of the kids can take care of. One of them three is going to be taking care of it, and it's going to be up to who's doing what is what's going to happen. Could the judge leave Irvy in it? Yes. Could Alice's lawyer leave Irvy in it? No. Will the parents of the three kids leave Irvy in it? I would kind of say yes, but then I would also say kind of no, because with them leaving Irvy in it, they're losing money. Every month that goes by, they're going to be losing over $1,000 a month. Every month. Because Irvy's in the trailer and the other trailer is empty. I don't think you're going to find anybody to rent the trailer for $700 a month or better with Irvy living next door. I wouldn't give you $100 a month with Irvy living next door. Because within 30 days of my first month's rent, I'd probably drag him out of his house, run in his mouth, and beat the shit out of him. You know, you kind of got to get along with your neighbors to live next to somebody. That's why I'm glad I get along with my neighbors. Even though they're half a block down the road, they're... They're still neighbors. They can still spot me if my house is on fire. They can call the fire department. I just want to enjoy life. Keep living day by day. Keep praising God for waking me up every morning. And keep praising God to help my kids become better men. That's all I can ask for. Um, I'm going to get off here because it has been two hours and you guys are probably going crazy. I see anybody else go live tonight. I might get on with them. I don't know. Matters how bored I am or what's going on. Sometimes at nighttime, I watch them live people on here selling stuff. So I do buy a few things off the line. Things that me and the wife might need or want. Um, just happy to be alive, people. And I'm glad I can go out there and say hi to you all. Um, hopefully, when the movie comes out, you all come over and see it. I mean, I'll be streaming, showing it. And it'll probably go to Secular Opinion. And uh, definitely Grumpy and Miss Parker and... All of you. I'm going to try to send it to everybody. I mean, I figure if I tell Secular Opinion, it'll get out there quick. So, I notice he gets a lot of viewers, but Miss Parker has been catching him. So, but she's doing a lot more, too. I see there that Secular is on maybe once, twice a week, and Miss Parker's on like almost every night. 
And then Mr. Lobster there, he's trying to get on almost every night, which is cool. I like that. Gives me something to do, people. I enjoy getting on and watching you guys. Even if I don't say nothing, I just like to get on there and see what's going on. I thought about going on one time to talk to, um, I don't even know their real names. I don't even know them, that heavy set girl and that guy, preacher boy or whatever. And him hitting them kids, I wanted to get on there so bad and say something. I want to call them out on that. Because I'm going to tell you something. I don't care who you are. You hit my kids. I'm coming for you. Promise. Now, if you're the same age as my kid and you want to fight my kid, I'll drive you both to the park. I will sit there and drink me a Dr. Pepper. Smoke me one of my big old fat painkillers and watch you guys and make sure you guys don't kill each other. And if you're growing a dot when you're done, I'll invite you for a Dr. Pepper and you can help me smoke my killer painkiller. Because, you know, that's how people solve their problems. You want a problem with someone, go out in the park, fight it out, get it over with, and go on back to life. Not run home, grab a gun, and shoot you. That ain't life. There you go. Rev, also known as Jason. Shanny and Rev. Rev, buddy, here's one for you, buddy. I hope you see this. You're lucky them were not my boys or which if you hit one or both. Because if it would have been right now, me and you both would be locked up. I'd be locked up in jail and you'd be locked up in a coffin. Especially with them being under 18 years of age. Shanny, you know, I don't know neither one of you. But you are not a woman if you're going to let any man, and I don't care who he is, not even their father, hit them kids. Putting them over your knee and spanking their ass, yes. Hit them in the face, hit them in the chest as hard as he can, no. So I have no respect for you, Shanny, at all. You know, I hope both of you both get a lot better. You guys need, really need God. You better think about what God you're serving. Because I don't think you guys serve the same God as me. I have only whipped one child of my natural blood one time. And one of them got to watch me whip that one. And guess what? I've never had a problem with none of the four. Never. When I said something, they did it. When I told them something, they listened. As a father, you are supposed to teach them, not beat on them. Did your daddy beat on you, Rev? Do you need an ass whipping, Rev? Is that what it is? You hitting a little boy. That is, I couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe when I heard that. You know, I thought you guys were okay. I watched some of your videos. I didn't stick up for you, but I didn't down mouth you neither. I was listening to both sides. And once I watch so many videos and I see what's going on and I see what happens and I hear it and I see it from my own eyes, I know 
You should never have had them kids. Ever. I know. I have children. It is rough. I also had a child who was special needs. And that is rougher yet. But you know something? I got through it. I'm a strong man. I got through it. My handicapped child right now is a second degree college student running straight A's across the board. There ain't nothing that that boy can't do in life. And he knows I'm proud of him. I call him every week. I mean, I miss him. I wish I could live next to him. I wish I could live by the dorm where we can come home every day and see each other. But that can't happen. Well, you know, Mrs. Mr. or Miss, all I see is a 1600 there. Because all they just do is cheat and chong any money they get. Well, see, and that's the problem. When you're getting your drugs before your children are took care of, and your bills are took care of, there's something wrong. As you guys heard me say it twice, my painkillers. Why do I get my painkillers? Because I need them for my pain. Two, because I can afford it. My bills are paid. I have two deep freezers in there with full of food. I got all my meds. I got enough pop to take me until my next payday. My wife. Let's me get my painkillers if I want it. Do I go hog wild and got to blow five, six, seven, ten of them a day? No. If you're buying the right stuff, not no green old nasty garbage, you're buying the real stuff. You only need one a day. One a day will last me unless I get company over here. And then sometimes I kind of will smoke one with my company to help her pain. So, yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Mr. Cheech or Mr. Chong. But you make sure your family's took care of first. That's the main thing. Take care of your family first. And then whatever little drug you do is your own business. I have a friend of mine one time borrow $50 because he didn't know how he's going to feed his daughter. It was the day after he got a social security check. Where'd your money go? Oh, I went out and got me a big old baggie. Before you went and bought food. Before you paid rent. You ran to the man's house and got it? That's not right. I'll make you a deal. I'm not going to loan you $50 to go feed your child. But I'll be right back. I went to the closest restaurant. Bought his di dinner for his daughter. I took it back to his house. I gave it to his daughter, and I watched her eat it. Not him, not his wife, not the dogs, her. And I looked at him, have a good day. I'm not going to let a kid starve. Okay, that's definitely not. But when you're going to go spend your drugs, money on drugs without feeding your kids, that's wrong. You want to do without food? That's fine. Feed your kids, then you go without. You don't don't feed your kids and you feed yourself and buy drugs with the kids' food money. 
That's not sensible. That's their money. Just because you opened your legs and had them kids don't mean you get paid for the rest of your life. Man, I thought I was getting off here and somebody wrote something and now I'm going off again. Yeah, Larry's been wanting to get out there and talk a lot lately, guys. I'm telling you, I sit here all day long, bored, watching TV. Watching old reruns. It keeps going and going and going and going. And then I see what new things come on with Rev and all of them. I see when they did that thing on G-Man thing. You know, I, I wouldn't mind talking to a few people online here. I don't care. I mean, you know, Nick, bravo there, boy. You know, I thought you were a pretty cool guy. I mean, some shows are kind of interesting if you did it right and if you talked right. But, I mean, some things you kind of just screw yourself, really. I mean... When you start putting business out there, people's going to use that business. You know, you should know that way they, you know, we are doing Vaughn. I mean, if you say you're a expert at something, prove it to me you're an expert at something. You know, don't lie to me. Be truthful. Seem like you're an okay guy to me. I don't know. All these trolls and naysayers or whatever and all them, they'll let me know if you're a good guy or not. You know who I like to watch. You guys know who I'm watching. Secular opinion. <laughs> Miss Parker. Mr. Lobster. Them are usually my main three. I was watching that little girl from England, I think it was, but I ain't seen her on in a while. I don't even tell you the truth. I don't even think I can remember her name. I think it is a VV. You guys probably know who I'm talking about. I've seen her post some of Vaughn Hilton's uh, little clips. Did you guys see what he said about Queen Elizabeth II today? That he said yesterday about her? I kind of said something about that today myself. That's wrong. That's the name. You got it. Yeah. I watched a couple of hers before, too. I don't see her on much. She plays a couple games, and I see her playing the games. I leave. If it ain't talking about Irvy or... Something I'm interested in, I leave. I do that to all of them, though. I mean, I go somewhere and they're talking about something I don't care but to hear about, I leave. I mean, that's just me. That's what we all do, right? That's good. I mean, that's fine. I don't know if she got in trouble, but, you know, I am i don't even see her doing any other live shows yet except, you know, playing that game. So, I don't get into war games or killing games or, I mean, hunting games maybe. I'm more into playing poker and uh, shooting pool. I used to play a few other ones, but now my memory's all gone in my phone, so I can't play them anymore. They're sticking me with only certain games.
That's what hangs over my bed. I touch it in the morning when I wake up, and I touch it before I go to bed. That man saved me from all my sins for the rest of my life. Does anybody know the sin that he will not forgive you for, though? Not too many people know that one. I do. There's only one sin that they will not forgive you for. Uh, excuse me. Not bad manners, just good Dr. Pepper. The only sin you cannot go to heaven or the only sin that cannot be forgiven is suicide. If you commit suicide, he will never forgive you. I learned a lot of this when I was a young boy. My grandmother burned it in my brain. She'd grab me by the ear and drag me to church every Sunday. I loved her to death. Did I want to go to church every Sunday? No. I wanted to go to the park. I wanted to go play. I wanted to go out and have fun. But I did as Grandma told me. You all getting tired of me? You guys about ready for me to get out of here? I see I'm losing a lot. I'm down to 13. I see a couple of you still posting, so. People should donate to the food bank around the corner from his old house. Whose old house? I don't have an issue with people regarding using or for pain relief, but when the goal is to say hi 24-7, 365. Yeah, see, I don't have to stay high 24-7. Just like I said, one J a day does me fine. If it's any good, one J a day. Just keep me comfortable, keep me relaxed, keep me not worried about nothing. People say I got a lot of patience by not going over there and ripping his head off. You know, something, it's my painkillers. It's also my wife. You know, she watches over me. She takes care of me and she don't want me to get in trouble. So I do as my wife tells me. Does that mean she's the boss? No. That means I respect her and I love her and I'm going to listen to her. And I just got to stare down. Well, thank you for saying that, but. It's the truth. Well, yeah, I know, but I don't want to get overconfident. Well, baby, like I said, never lie. Because if you lie, you got to lie again to cover up the first lie. So if you don't lie, you don't, you know, it's, even though the truth might hurt a little, but so what? A little. It might get, might as well get it out first time because if you keep letting it go and go and go and go, it's going to get worse. You distress your way. Well, I know you distress your way and I distress mine, honey. But thank God that 
we still make it work after 20 years. Hard communication. Thank you. Thank you. I was waiting for you to say that word. She is right. It's all called communication. Ha, 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 gray alien. Honey, who am I talking to? Yeah. Um, I am talking to, honestly, 13 people. Well, hi, 13 people. I am now live okay. with 13 people watching. And I know Mr. Alien's there. Dark side Becky. Uh Nat Nat Nadison May May Maple. H Batch is here. Dark side Becky, okay. Bobcat Kill. You know, I mean, I thought it was funny that he was talking about his wife, too. Like, she should still be in the nut house. No, I don't think did you guys that. see that? I thought that was funny. I really did. She don't need a nut house. And she's right there on the computer listening to him say it. And I th honestly, personally, I think she is smarter than he is. I would say something about Irving. When but, she's on her pill, she's okay. When you take her off her pill, she's going to go loony. Don't we all? Hello? Some of us, you take us off our pills and we die. Ask me, I know. I got three pills I take every single day that keeps me alive. Exactly. She is doing definitely far better than Stinky. The only thing that matters is life. That's right. Live life to the fullest is what you can do with you and your family and enjoy every bit of it because none of us knows when it's our time to go home. Oh, I will find out what it says there, alien. Oh, I definitely will. Promise. My nose and my ears and my mouth is all over that one already. Because he literally says he wasn't going to give them to her and... I, me and him got into a fight. See, why he didn't like the cameras, as you all know, he was complaining about the cameras. Do you all know that camera saved Alice's life probably twice? Do you know he was giving her her medicine at 12 noon and then turned around and giving her medicine again at 4 o'clock? Four hours apart? Do you know she's fell before and hit her head and the cameras caught it and I was able to call an ambulance and go over there and make sure she went to the hospital? But he's complaining about the cameras. And he says, I got three of them. I don't know if y'all heard that. Three cameras. I have one in the living room. I have one in the kitchen and I have one in her bedroom. So Larry's been watching a 92-year-old woman get dressed and undressed every day. Oh, uh, I don't know if you're saying if, if that's a bad thing for me on them cameras or a good thing for me. But it's the power of attorney. I have the legal rights to put a camera anywhere that that woman owns. Because like they told me, the minute I took power of attorney, I was never Larry Frost again when it came to her. I was Alice Hilton Jr. 
I carried her name with the junior under it because anything that she can do, I can do. And I respected that. I love that point. But, you know, I didn't push it to the limits. I didn't push it to what I wanted because I respect Alice. I gave Alice what she wanted, what she needed. She needed to see the doctors. She had to make sure she had food in her house every day. Her bills are paid every day. She is took care of every day. And that's what I did. Them cameras, they were to make sure everything went fine every day. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's what my lawyers told Stinky, too. Did you know the cameras were there, Stinky? He said, yes. My, my lawyer looked at him and smiled. Okay, that's all I need to ask you. If you knew the camera was there. I mean, it ain't like you can hide them. They're standing right out in front. He knew the day they... And he told them all. He told the judge and everybody. He swore under oath. I put the cameras in that house. Funny thing. I didn't. I didn't. Alice ordered them. And somebody else put them in the house. They got stolen. We turned around and bought two brand spanking new ones. Not with his mommy's money, with someone else's money. And they come up missing. And that's when Larry went over there yelling and screaming at him and telling him, if I did not find them cameras within one hour, I'm going to come over there and rip his house open. Because I got social security last four digits of the social security number on them cameras. And I can prove they're mine. Within 10 minutes, they were both back at his mother's house. Hooked up where they belonged. You know, her pills came up missing once like that too. She was taking her own pills on her own. And he come over there and took them from her. Said he's going to start giving them to her. And that is when I went ahead and I ordered pill pack. Everybody heard of pill pack? Where they uh, put them all, you know, day by day. They put your pills in one pack. It comes day and night. I was having it all put in pill packs where it made it easier for her to open it up and take them herself. He took the box home. And did he show them to me every single day? Some days I did watch him open the packages. Some days I watched him come over there and they'd be in his hand and he just handed them, handed them to his mom in her hand and I didn't see what he was giving her. He could have been only giving her one pill as far as I know. And that's where the blood work's going to come in too. Because they're going to say exactly what was in her blood. Got to stretch out. Got to stretch out. Wish I knew how to black out for a minute, but I'm still learning. I see we're getting new people. I'm losing some and I'm gaining some. I mean, I got a question. I wonder if Irby still got his kids' as blankets when they were born. What do y'all think? Think he does?
Honey, what happened to the rest of my pillows? Because it seems like the only one I can find nowadays is that big fat one I just got. I mean, it's no rush. I was just wondering what happened to him. Put them all over here. Them on the floor. Yeah, I agree. Under a pile of trash, maybe. Yeah, my kids are all in a a bag put away. Well, I didn't want them all, but I wanted a couple of them. Just leave two or three on the bed. Okay. Told you, I like a lot of pillows. Exactly. I can't use you as a pillow, so I have you to use something. Well, your, arm, <coughs> your arm will probably make my chest hurt. Uh, you. Yeah, true, alien. True. He's too lazy to throw anything away. That puppy's probably still in the garbage can in the house. How's Nightmare? Anybody seen any videos showing Nightmare lately? Or Midnight or whatever its name is? You running water, dear? Okay. Okay, midnight. Not to get anybody fighting or arguing. I mean, any of you other people out there, Heinz 57s? Or are you guys all thoroughbreds? Yeah, I know, honey. I didn't mean it to sound like that. My wife says she thinks I'm talking about a horse. No, I was just, you know, to me, honey, 57 means that you're mixed with a lot of nationalities. You know, or... Is there somebody, yeah, like a mutt, exactly. Or is there somebody out there who's been German all their life and, you know, they didn't marry, they didn't marry an American woman or an African-American woman or a Chinese woman. He's still with a Russian woman or whatever. You see what I'm saying? Where they never mixed. I'm English, so I am definitely a Heinz. Okay, don't feel bad. I think a lot of us are Heinz. Well, honey, some people, you know, it's like I told you, honey, a lot of people talk different. It matters where you live in the United States or even around the world you know when i was growing up my dad would say hey i'm gonna make pigs in the blanket and i was like all right to me he would roll rice and hamburger and crackers and eggs and a bunch of seasonings and onions and a bunch of stuff in a cabbage and put it in the oven and cook it for an hour and a half. And put some sauce and ketchup and stuff on it. And that's what he called pig in the blanket. I moved to Kentucky. And I say, I want pigs in the blanket. And they all look to me. That's not hard to make. Go get a pack of hot dogs and a pack of biscuits. And roll your biscuit out and wrap it around your hot dog. So, I mean... 
Toledo, we call it pop. Down here, they call it soda. Why is his light bill so high? I have no idea. Mine was 130 this month, and I have three window air conditioners running at all times. They do not shut off. My boys do not shut their ACs off. Or their laptops. Them never go off neither. They're on 24-7. Especially in the summer. Before school started. Okay. Honey. In the UK. Pigs in the blanket. Is sausage wrapped with bacon. Yep. That sounds good too, don't it? Well, UK, I think I'm going to have to try that. Sounds like a heart attack to me, but I think I'd like to try that. Honey, you how... <laughs> What are you complaining about? It'd be easy. You don't cook no more. You got an air fryer. When's the last time you cooked a meal for me? That wasn't cooked in the microwave or air fryer. Or the crock pot. Yeah, exactly. Over a year, I know. I'm going to tell you guys something once. Take it the way you want. If you like your wife's cooking and you want her to keep cooking, do not buy her an air fryer. <laughs> Promise, because all you're going to get is air fry food. They quit cooking once they get one of them. Everything's air fried. Wife says quicker and easier. The girl that said something about UK's pig in the blanket, dear. She says, yeah, she loves her air fryer, too. She says she don't blame you. Yeah, we bought one air fryer. It wasn't no real big one or nothing. She cooked some fries in it a couple of times. She cooked a couple other pizza bites and stuff like that in it. She liked it. It wasn't two weeks later she went out and bought a bigger one to cook a lot more in. She said forget cooking snacks in it. We're cooking dinners in it. But, hey, long as the food's cooked and it's not coming out raw, I don't care as long as I eat. I told somebody the other day, you know what I'd like to do? Even though I'm not allowed to eat much anymore, I'd like to go around to these restaurants, go in there and eat, and tell them why they're not surviving. How can you not survive owning a big chain restaurant? Come on, hello. A lot of it's your workers, though. You know, a lot of workers. A lot of people don't care. Later, 1600 That's good there, H-Back. That you got a husband and you don't have to cook. Well, when me and my wife first got together, she didn't have to cook neither. But now that I have almost become bedridden and I taught her how to cook, 
for the last 15, 20 years, she's now cooking for me. So if, you know, I don't want to say it because I don't want to embarrass my wife. I don't want her to get mad at me. My wife wasn't a perfect cook when we got together. But now she can cook almost anything she needs to cook. She can literally throw meatloaf together. She can throw spaghetti and meatballs together. She can cook pork chops. She has a problem making over easy eggs, but, you know, a lot of people do. You wouldn't believe how many times I've got free eggs because of that. Go to a restaurant and order over easy eggs and they bring them over medium, over hard. Nope. Send them right back to them. I said over easy. I, I bet you I was offered at least four jobs just because I knew what over easy eggs were. You know, I loved to cook. I really did. No, I wasn't no fancy cooks. I wasn't into none of that all good stuff. It wasn't no McDonald's Burger King. I like them little greasy spoon corner little one mom paw shops. Where you have a special menus and you guys can do special things and you have your special thing. You know, and every once in a while you change the menu. No, I didn't get rich. No, I didn't move up no chains, a ladder, but it made you feel good. Sometimes cooking, though, can drive you crazy, too, especially when it's a mom and pa restaurant. I hated it when I had to do the bar rushes. The manager put me on night shift one time. We were, I was probably there about four months. And I told her, I don't want this job to work. I'm going to quit. You take me back to first shift or I quit. And she really didn't want me on first shift because that's her shift. It, it was funny. Oh, yeah, we love our air fryer. It all cooks good. Yeah, I mean, there's no problems at all. Taste is fine. I mean, same to me. I don't know. It just seems like when you cook it in the, on the stove and take your time and watch it and Put them little special seasonings in it. That's like putting love in it. And to me, it always, you know, maybe I'm just spoiled. I'm a 58-year-old spoiled man who got used to good foods growing up. I can say my stepdad did know how to cook. <coughs> I see I'm going up and down. I'm back to 15. I had it 13. I don't know what else to do. So I'm just live today, guys. Nothing to do. Larry saying hi to the world. If y'all don't know, I'm James Vaughn Hilton's cousin. James Vaughn Hilton's mother was Alice Hilton. Her oldest brother was Arnold Frost. That is my grandfather. So what's that making? First or second cousin? I'm just sitting here hanging out. Waiting to hope he would even come in here and talk. Or just come on here and say hi to all you guys. And see how you guys are all doing. 
exactly. Proper home cooking meals. Exactly. Yeah, we got one down here. It's like uh, 20 miles from me. I've never tried none in Manchester. I always run up into Boonville. Got a nice little spot. Only thing I don't like about them anymore, though, they only do one pan of fried potatoes a day. I figure they must not sell a lot of them, but that kind of bites, because that's always one of my favorites. Fried potatoes with onions. You're right, Bobcat. Alice Hilton was my great aunt. So, Irvy would be what? My second cousin? Or would he be first cousins? That's what I thought. Second cousins. Yeah, that's mostly what I do when I worked at that greasy spoon, Mom Paws. I was the first, almost one of the first ones there. The boss man would come there, unlock everything, walk through, see what money they put in the, you know, safe from the night before. I'd go in, I'd start a pot of coffee, and um, I'd have to start throwing potatoes on the grill. And when I say potatoes, I'm talking 20, 30 pounds at one time. The whole grill full with potato. You get them halfway done, you take them off the grill and put them back in the tub. A brand new clean tub. And then when the orders come in, she was right there to scoop it out, throw it on her grill, finish cooking it. If you wanted onions, they threw onions in it. Whatever you want. If it was an omelet or... Yeah, they, they made a lot of potatoes. I'll bet you we probably went through 40, 50 pounds of potatoes every day. And that's how I got used to cooking eggs. Because... uh. After a while, she found out that I wanted her. I wanted her job. I didn't want to be the manager. No, I wanted first shift cook. Quick, easy, good people to work with. Beautiful customers. I mean, they were always loyal. They were there every single day. They never missed no time. I mean, they would be perfect. Any of you guys ever worked at a Mon Pa food store or a food restaurant? Well, I only got 14 watching. I hate it when Stinky says you guys ain't blood, but maybe distant, distant relations is at best. He's such a dummy. Hi, Blue. And yeah, he is a dummy. Does he think that one shot of sperm that went up in his mama egg gave him all his blood? And took all hers and gave it to her too? It don't work that way. I bet you $10 he's got more Frost bloodline than he does the Hilton bloodline. Because his mama was a Frost. Well, there was that saying there that uh, 
they wasn't even by the same parent. Guilford had Arnold with some white chick, some white woman. And James's mom was born by the Indian woman. The only problem, the Clay County Library has records of this. And I have been there and looked them up of when the births were. And it, on the births, it all says that Guilford Frost, Carrie Chandler, had eight kids. So what's that tell me? Carrie Chandler only lived to be 42 years old. So here Guilford, he's only 42 years old. He's got eight kids to take care of. So he gets him a white woman, as they call her. And then he got another white woman after she died. Blue says, we are having that little Irvy just be jailed because he has not paid child support. Do you know anything about this, Larry? No, I do not know nothing about it. Um, I try to stay out of his business. I know he did tell the judge on the 7th that he did not know about the court date on the 6th for his kids because his lawyer quit on him, and that's why he didn't go. That was the only thing I know about the kids. Carrie Chandler was the mother of Guilford Frost, and Carrie Chandler are the mother and father of all eight children. Yes. Yeah, they're on the birth certificate. It's on, It's in the 1930 census. I mean, I think in the 1930s, though, it might be cutting my grandfather out of that one because I don't think my grandfather was living in the home at that time. He might have been at the war. Because you got to remember, my grandfather was the oldest of the bunch. My grandfather was the first born. Yes, they can come after him for child support, but it kind of matters what's going on with what. I mean, if the foster parents adopt them, I don't know if they can come after child support after that. And personally, the only thing they can get from child support from him is to put him in jail. And they're already losing money by helping the foster parents take care of the kids. They sure don't want to feed him in the county jail or keep him in jail. And I think Irby would definitely hate going to jail because he don't like to shower. So I can imagine what he'd be smelling like coming out of there after five years. Every time they took the children out of the house, he owns child support. Yes. The only way he would not own it is if him and the court system or the mother or somebody has been involved in the case and owns the children or in custody of the children who is taking care of the children says they do not want child support. Because I did get out of paying my child support in Ohio that way. Because she told them that I ain't making no money. They don't need my money. That they got it all under control. And the, but he looked at me. Or what? let's just say my friend looked at me. And said you pay for some clothing. And help me with their school supplies and stuff. And we're cool. I was like no problem. 
No problem at all. Did my kids need anything? No. My kids grew up very good. They were rough a little bit. They've had it rough. I mean, we didn't make it too easy on them. But they're learning. Just like any kid and all kids have to do. They got to learn. Today, I have a cousin getting married. Right now, probably as we're speaking, I have a cousin getting married in Ohio. I don't think he's but 20, 21 years old. Best wishes. Love him. Hope it lasts forever. Roughest part is the first year or so. Compromise. Talk to each other. Work your problems out. It's the best I can say. And I say that to anybody who's getting ready to be married. If you don't, if you don't trust her, then don't marry her. Don't love her. Get away from her. I mean, personally, it took me a long time to find love and it takes a long time. Sometimes you might think you found the right one and it wasn't. There's been a few times like that. Quite a few. But I do agree the idea that jail would be worse for Irvy than being home. Yeah, I think jail would be worse. Because homeless, you can always find food. Homeless, you can always find a place to stay. He does have that truck. He could sleep in it. And to eat, all you have to do is go behind Burger King or McDonald's and dig in their garbage. They got plenty of leftovers in there. Promise, I know. I've thrown a lot of garbage away to them restaurants. I ain't saying I. Oh, I'm sorry. Someone's saying something blue. Not just showing. Irvy wouldn't run his toothless mouth and get in trouble with other inmates and guards. No, because he would know better. Because them inmates don't care. They're already doing time. What's a little more? <laughs> you would hope so, Todd. I don't know, guys. I'm really thinking about starting some kind of live show every day. Something to do at, you know, the boring times of the day. I usually don't do nothing. Watch TV. Be bored. Answer 200 phone calls every day. Tell a marker is trying to get me to donate money or say that they could pay my credit card off or all this good stuff. You name it, they've called and tried to get me to do it. Well, I'd love to do it from Lake Alice, but I wouldn't want to get in trouble. I don't want to stir up no uh, wasp at the moment. 
because you know things are still pending you know but you let them children take control I will talk to them children and I will be able to go back on that property and James better hope the price ain't if they go to sell anything he better hope the price ain't too low because I'm going to tell you, the frost are going to be all over that. You know, but I personally, I don't think they're going to sell it. I think they're smart. They keep it, collect the money coming in every month. And when they get old and they're ready to retire, throw whoever's living in it out and move in it and retire. Be buried up there next to Grandma. There's enough room up there to bury them all. I mean, it matters what you want in life. That's what it is. Miss Alice, l let's talk about Miss Alice. I love her to death, so hopefully I don't start crying again, people. I'm sorry if I do. But um, Miss Alice was born Clay County, Kentucky. 1929. So, her dad did go through the depression. You know, he did have eight kids. He lost his wife when she was only 42 years old. Leaving Guilford eight children to raise. He got remarried or got a girlfriend and to help with the kids, probably. They moved to Hamilton looking for work to get work. To make better money because there wasn't no money down here in Clay County, Kentucky. She grew up. She got a job. She worked 20 years, she told me, at the Whirlpool. She turned around and invested all the money she has saved and bought a couple of nursing or bought a nursing home. And then it became two nursing homes. And then it became three nursing homes. And she decided now that she's now up in her 60s and 70s. She's about ready to retire. And she thinks she's going to do that. So what does she plan on doing? Retirement. Her plans was to go back to the city, the state, the area that she was born in. You know, that's all of our choices where we're going to be buried. James got mad. We put her up on the hill. That's where she wanted to be. If she didn't, she would have put the tombstone there. Period. He says that me and Jim talked her into it. Why would I talk her into blowing $2,500, James, if I'm stealing her money? Would I want to steal that $2,500, too? Think about it, James. So she moved back, found a house, she bought it, cash, Alice didn't play games, she paid in cash, no checks, no not cash, lawyers right there to sign the transportation of the properties and everything, she did it all straight the way she's supposed to. Her and her husband must have had a little bit of problem. They bought another piece of property right next door. It's got a piece of okay trailer on it. They move over there. Better shape than what the house was. House stays empty a few years. 
Uncle Little Jim comes down to visit because, you know, it is his aunt. So he's allowed to visit. Comes down, sees her, talks to her. And he's like, oh, that's kind of cute little house next door to you. Who owns that? And Alice goes, well, I do. Well, that's kind of cute. It's quiet down here. I wouldn't mind owning a little piece of property down here. Well, Jim, I, I can, you know, maybe sell you that house or something down there. If you, you know, at the right price. So, Miss Alice sold Jim that house. Because she's down next door. She got another place better. Then she turned around and went and bought a brand spanking new trailer and put it on the exact same piece of property that that first trailer's on. Cool. Well, some reason her and Big Irvy wasn't getting along. She bought house next door big beautiful brick ranch home looking thing big front yard 250 something acres in the back all wooded area up three mountains there beautiful everything went fine you know Jim bought the property from her he ended up staying at his company until he was able to retire and then he moved down here so jim probably almost owned it by the time he moved here he probably owned a couple payments still because you know he can't you know afford to pay outright cash or nothing he ain't a rich man so uh, everything went fine big Irvy died I didn't know Irvy at the time. I never really met Irvy. Not that I could remember. About six to eight months after Irvy died, I moved down here. And I say it was that pretty close. That or Miss Alice just left his clothes in there for years. But somebody told me it was about eight to ten months before Irvy died. About eight or ten months ago. We went in his house, and Alice had me and Ronnie Ray and little Jim, and there's someone else there helping us. We were taking all the stuff out of there, taking it down to her house, and putting it in the barn or the garage for it didn't get wet, didn't get destroyed, didn't get lost. And she could figure out what to do with the house. James says his dad was rich. It wasn't his dad that was rich. His mom wasn't even rich. She had money. Don't put me wrong. She had money. But in her 94 years of life, she spent pretty close all her money. She has went kind of crazy with her money. But she enjoyed it. And that's what counts. Her going and getting her hair done once every three months. You know what I mean? She loved getting her hair done. She liked to have it cut. She liked to have it done. She liked to have, I mean, whatever she liked. She loved her chocolate pie. You know, she always ordered that off the Swanson Man. I don't care what else she got, but it was definitely chocolate pie was one. I'm going to jail? Okay. That's good. You know, if I'm going to go to jail, that's fine with me. Then I'm going to go to jail. I feel sorry for the jailhouse. Or whoever has to house me. It's probably going to cost them more in drugs to give to me every single day than uh, what it is that they're keeping me in there for. Right. 
do I know what happened after Glenda died? About what? What do you mean about after Glenda died? I know Glenda died in Hamilton, Ohio. I know Glenda lived down here for a little while. And her and her mother got into it. Was Glenda Alice's real child? No. But in the long run, Alice Hilton would have been Glenda's aunt. Y'all did catch that, right? Glenda's real mother is her aunt. Well, I don't care what he lies about. I can tell you. I could tell you who Glenda's real mother is. I know for a proven fact because Alice Hilton told me. Her mother told me. And me and her talked. We get along and we have seen each other. She talks. She knows who her mother was. She knows who raised her. Yes, I do know, Todd. I'm sorry. I didn't know if you knew it or not. Yes, that is her mother. Hazel is her mother. Smith, I agree. What does he not lie about? I don't think there's anything he don't lie about. He lies about anything and everything. You know, exactly. You know, Todd, Hazel. You wrote the word Hazel. Let's put her last name in there. Do you know what it is? I do. Frost. Alice's sister. Yes, exactly. Mama Hilton. You got that right, Todd. Hazel Frost. Todd, I don't know if she was the youngest, but I mean, it would only take me three to five minutes to find out. It matters how busy my wife is, because all I have to do is have her grab me the book. I got it all in a book. My aunt and me have been working on it for almost 10 years now. The only problem, Todd, where to stop? Because, I mean, you can just keep going and going and going and going and going. Yeah, I think right now I'm back down to like 54 grandmas. You know, so how far do you go back on the trees? It, it's, it's weird, man. It took 250 people to make me. That started back in the 15th century. How long am I allowed to stay live before I get in any kind of trouble? Anyone know? Todd? Okay, thanks. I just don't want to get in trouble with nobody. I mean, I don't... You know, I don't want to... Like I said, I didn't want to get on here with someone else and get them in trouble.
Frank, I have a thing with getting in trouble sometimes. Remember when Irvy came around to yours to upload it? Yeah, exactly. He's been over to my house two or three times to use my main computer. And you know, two days after he got done doing what he did, my computer's not worked since. And that's why I had to go to them welfare phones just to even get online. Luckily, my wife bought me a laptop for Christmas. See, I got a good wife. She knew I wanted to get on. She knew I wanted to speak my mind and talk to other people. It's lonely living out in the backwoods. Look out my front door and I see the top of the house. That's it. Look out my back door and all I see is about four or five hundred acres of woods. <clears throat> well, I don't know what you mean by cutting him off. I don't think she's ever cut him off. She did get really upset at him. Um, she, Yeah, when he wasn't letting her see the kids, she was still paying the light bill. And you all know that kid that was in North Dakota or wherever. You know, she paid his child support to keep him out of going to jail. And he's mad right now because his mama never paid his college tuition thing that he went for two years. You know, why did he go two years? Why didn't he do all four? Why didn't he become somebody? Did he drop out and go to the army? Did he drop out to go to karate school? I don't know. I don't know much about him. Like I said, I never grew up around him. All I know is when I was born, I was born in Toledo, Ohio. My father was born in Hamilton, Ohio. And that's where my grandfather moved when there wasn't no work in Clay County, Kentucky. He moved up there. All his jobs, I don't know, but I know he worked for a door company. He made doors or he cut the windows for the doors. He did all kinds of things in that factory. Funny thing about it, James says his dad was rich. He worked at the same place my grandfather did. My grandfather didn't get rich. And I know he was there quite a few years. Because I got his 10th and his 15th year pins. You know how they give you pins every so many years that you're at a company? I got his 10th and his 15th one. So I know my grandpa did over 15 years. Oh, is that what? He dropped out of the college to go save the prostitute and the children from burning buildings. Yeah, that's probably it, Batch. You are probably definitely right. Honestly, I don't know if they, she does know the fur gates in Hazard. I have no idea. 
you know, like I said, Miss Alice probably moved back down here when she was in her 60s. She might have knew some of them if they were maybe a little closer to this way. Maybe. I don't know. She might have. I mean, I do know a couple of them, but they don't live in Hazard. I know one that lives here in Manchester. He's a preacher. You heard me, right, Riza? He don't look blue to me. Looks like white to me. Well, are you talking about at birth or are you talking about what he would look like right now? Right now, I'd say he's probably brown. Going to the black color. Except his leg. It's probably green. At birth, I do not know. He was born before me, to be honest with you. He is like six months older than me. Yes, dear. I can make tuna casserole, but it's kind of hard to start it now. Why? Because it's a time again. Yeah, it's a little early for dinner. Okay. But I mean... You could, honey, you don't, is that what you really want to make? I mean, I, I wasn't trying to say not to use the air fryer. I mean, if you want to air fry, you can air fry. I just, I was just like figure of speech, something to talk to these guys about. I mean, I've only been live for three and a half hours. Well, I know that. Pretty soon they're going to be calling me. James Vaughn Hill with Junior because I'm getting on here doing nothing but video chat and talking shit. Pretty soon I'll have me some trolls. Joking, guys. Please don't. I'm not. I'm not lying about nothing. I'm. Rizza says the air fryers are the future. Yeah, my my wife loves her air fryer. I said it earlier. I don't know if you were here, Riz. Uh, we bought a small one for little snack stuff. Yeah. You know, like little pizza bites, like five or ten pizza bite stuff. Okay. Little handful of fries, four, okay. five, six, ten nuggets. She loved it so much. Next week, she went and bought her a big one. <laughs> so, yeah, she likes it. I was just saying I ain't had a real meal in about a year that ain't been air fried. You're fine, baby. I still love you. As long as you're not feeding me dog food, I love you. I know that's expensive. You feed cat it to food. the dogs. I, I don't want cat food. That's nasty. I was just joking. I'm not <coughs> cat food. Well, really, I mean, tuna fish is called cat food. Yeah, but. I like catfish. Yeah. She said she did the same thing. She bought a small one and then got a big one, too, after she used the small one on. I want the one that opened the door. Yeah. <laughs> you you want the monster one, the $2,000 one. Yeah, see, now she got her going, guys. She wants the most expensive one out there. I just have to go buy it. I just said I want one. Yeah, well, you want one telling your husband that you want me to get it for you. That's what that means. Sorry, well, that's... I don't want, I don't want anybody to after 20 it. years, I think I'm getting to know you.
I was trying to figure out what you were saying there for a minute, but now I understood it. That I'm different than Stinky. I'm all right. Thank you. I appreciate that. I should make you a mod, Larry, to keep Todd in line. Todd, I mean, let him say what he says. I don't care. I'm I'm not James Von Hill, and I, I let people say what they say. I say what I say. And we go on. We all have different beliefs. We all have different sayings. We all, we're, nobody is the same. Period. Am I, you all agree? Nobody is the same. I mean. I keep trying to tell you that. I mean, some people are the same. I mean, some of you is like alcohol. Some don't. Some like herbs. Some don't. Some people believe in God. Some don't. And I'm the one that some, do. some people believe in mix and mix race. Some don't. Somebody, some people like blue blood. Some don't. Some people like football. Some don't. Come on. Everybody's different. Think about it. Alcohol is on the what? Down? I don't know. I ain't touched it in quite a while. And it would have been on the New Year's that year that I quit. Because the doctor said if I want to stay alive, stay away from it. Didn't like beer. I had it when I was a kid growing up. Seemed like I drank one or two bottles of beer and um, taking a six pack pee. So I went to Jack Daniels. Tried a lot of other liquors, but always came back to that Jack Daniels. If I was buying it, it was Jack Daniels. Riz, I did see they lost their queen yesterday. And I am very sorry to hear about that. I hope God is standing there taking her hand when she died and taking her himself. Because that woman did a great thing for the UK and around the world. Even though Von Hilton is down mouthing her. I said that this morning on one of my lives. A queen, 70 years as the queen. She's been through more presidents than Irvy has. She will be greatly missed. Yes, she is, was a great woman in my eyes. Am I part of the UK tribe? Like I said, I'm a Heinz 57. I got mixtures of all blood in me. Bad. My wife said sometimes blood, bad blood. Well, you know, when you poke a grizzly bear too much, yeah. they attack. <coughs> You go by a grizzly bear and go real slow or just hold still and try to take little steps back and away from it. Don't turn around and run because they're coming after you. You literally back up very damn slow and don't act too scared and get the hell away from it as fast as you can. That's my opinion. Hello, Dan.
And don't her son take over now as the king? So I am going to say congratulations to the king of UK. I hope you do a good job as your mother did. She was a great woman and I am sorry for your guys' loss. Yeah, 73 years old, and it's his first job. He didn't need a job. His mommy's the queen. That's a job in itself, keeping her happy. I think James was trying to go for that record, huh? Maybe that's his world record he was trying to break. How long he's scam off his mother. Because it looks like he's did what? 57 years. Yeah, I heard he's had a few jobs, but he ain't been at them long. Todd, don't be starting no problems now, buddy. Don't make me have to kick you out of here. No fighting in my chats. Yeah, I see that. He's starting trouble with you. Riza, don't take everything serious, honey. I mean, life is life, period. My wife says life sucks, but me, I live one day at a time. Enjoy your life. If you got a husband, you really love him, spend time with him, show him that you love him, spend time with the rest of your family if they're around, because we never know when they go. And just enjoy life. You got to make the money to pay your bills. I understand. We all do that. Every one of us has to pay bills. Nobody lives for free. Nowhere. Unless you live in the backwoods of the woods. In the woods. In a tent. Then you ain't got no bills. But besides that, any human being has to pay rent. They got bills. No. Irvy still got bills too. Boo. He does have a light bill to worry about. He does have a water bill to worry about. At the present moment, he's got car insurance to worry about. And when his mother's birthday comes up again in January, he's going to have to worry about the plates again. So, I mean, yeah, he only gets $250 a month. $250 a month ain't going to pay him much. It ain't, it barely, it ain't even covering. The light bill sometimes. Todd didn't even attend the funeral. What funeral? If I didn't have a mortgage to pay, I'd have a lot more money. Oh, yeah, I agree, Todd. I agree. If you didn't have a mortgage, you would have a lot more money. But, you know, when you own property, when something breaks down, you have to fix it. You can't call your landlord to fix it. You know, if you own the property, you own the home, you're supposed to have insurance on all your homes, everything. Some people buy the wrong insurance, but you're supposed to have insurance on it.
Well, I didn't know Todd was supposed to show up at the funeral. I was there. And I can prove that. <laughs> Big time. I can show you her coffin. I can show you in her coffin. I can show you the rose that I put in her hand before we shut the coffin. I have proof. I, I, I'm not one to know play game stuff. I can show you the flowers that we paid for for the coffin that got laid on the ground when she was put in the ground. So, in other words, the coffin was put in the ground, covered up, and then flowers laid across her where the brown dirt was supposed to be. Todd, if you were in the area when that funeral was coming on, buddy, you would have been welcome there. I would not have cared one bit. James says he didn't go because there was too many guns there. Tell you the truth, there was no guns inside the funeral home at all. Not at all. Were there any guns in the parking lot? Yeah. I can't say no to that. Yeah, there was plenty of guns in the parking lot. But there was none in the funeral home because I made sure of that. I did want nobody bringing a gun in that funeral home. I don't think he's afraid of a gun. He's just afraid that one of the family members would use it if he said the wrong word, Todd. The Punisher would have got punished. Promise, guys. The Punisher would have been really punished if anything happened at that funeral. There might be a couple older men there. But I'm telling you, these men are men. They're not little boys like James. These guys are men. I'm not going to put no names out there because I don't know if they want their names out there, but there was a few men at that funeral that was her family members that wouldn't have took nothing, no bull from him at all. And personally, when I get time, we're talking about that. I think that I am going to send them videos that I've been getting about James Vaughn Hilton saying that he's an army whatever ever he's Victorian or whatever I'm thinking about sending it over to him because this gentleman that I'm talking about he did 25 years in the United States Army he retired from the United States Army he then turned around and put 25 years into the prison system as a security guard or whatever they're called, prison guards, did his 25 and retired. He was there. <laughs> I wish James would have said something wrong. I don't care if this man is 71 years old. He stopped. He's big. He, you could tell he's a country boy. AC, it was kind of in his backyard. It was up the back of the hill. But at least 60% of us stayed down in the backyard. You're right. We were in the backyard waiting for the hearse to come back down because we are 90% of us couldn't make it up the hill. Once the hearse and maybe one or two more vehicles got up there, nobody would have been able to turn around. You would have had to try to back down that hill and that's a killer. So instead of all of us going up there, we did our 
prayers and everything down in her driveway, right in front of her home. And then the hearse and six of the men went up there and lowered her in the coffin. And there are pictures of where she was buried, who she was buried next to. Because as everybody knows, James put a video out there saying we buried his mother by a dog. Well, when they dug the hole, they didn't find no dog nowhere near it. And if there is a dog up there buried, then he did it. And me personally, I don't see him walking up that hill or even driving up that hill. I bet she's never been up that hill in his whole life. And he's been there 35 years. He probably ain't left the property in 35 years. Besides to go to the store to get food. You mean she wasn't buried next to a dog? No, Todd, she was not buried next to a dog. But I'll tell you somebody that was. My father. My father's buried by two dogs. And I have no problems wrong with that. Because one of them belongs to him. One of them was his pet. I mean, one was his, all his love. I mean, he got her when she was six weeks old. And he had her until the day he died. And I had her until the day she died. And I put them together. We dug at the bottom of my dad's feet where the coffin would have been. Went down there. We hit the back of his coffin. We scooted over two foot. And she was buried there. No, I'm not the executor no more. I'm out of it. I have nothing to do with nothing no more. All my paperwork is in, Batch. I have nothing to do with it. The only thing right now that we got going is he's getting me for posting a pitch or a video on YouTube. He got up on the stand on the 7th of this month, got up on stands, was sworn in by the judge, and lied. Told her that I posted it out on YouTube. Well, guess what? I didn't post it out on YouTube. It was posted out on Facebook to begin with. And my fat finger hit it and accidentally sent it. I sent three at one time, not just one. That ain't the only one I was sent. There was three sent. Two of them were supposed to be sent, and the other one was supposed to stay right where it was, but it got sent too. So he turned it into the judge saying that I was posting videos of him in his mom's house having a personal conversation with his mother. So the judge put charges on me for it. I got a public defender. We went to court on the 7th, and they swore him in. And he says that I posted it on YouTube. And let's see, what else was said? Oh, they talked about the camera a little bit. And then it got to my public defender. She goes, Vaughn, Mr. Helton, did you know the cameras were there? He said, yeah. What was that? I'm sorry, I missed that. Did you know the cameras were there? Yeah, I know the cameras were there. Okay. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. They said, okay, well, Mr. Frost, would you like to get up and take the stand? My lawyer looked at me and smiled and said, right to looking dead at me. 
Larry, do not take the stand. Don't worry about a thing. I looked at the judge. No, ma'am, the boss told me to plead that I do not want to say a word. She goes, well, okay, Mr. Frost, I will get a hold of you if there's going to be another court date. If they're not, have a good day. And I looked at her, thank you, judge, and rode my wheelchair right on out of there. Well, yeah, everything Bond says dark side is, you know, not the truth. I mean, the story's coming out, but he's lying about it all. He don't know what he's talking about. Yes, AC, I just became in a wheelchair in the last six months. As you all know, within the last four years, I've had two heart attacks and an open heart surgery. My walk-in has got decreased every, every month. It seems like I'm barely walking at all. I take 10 steps. Both legs go real shaky. And if I don't sit down right there and then, I'm falling down. No, you could not challenge me in no basketball game. Oh, you're going to be in a wheelchair too? Well, I don't know. Yeah, for a reason, a basketball game in a wheelchair. I know that ain't giving him the vantage. I can probably still beat him in my wheelchair, even though he, because his leg ain't so hot neither. I'd rather see this fight going on. I already told Seckler opinion. I got a thousand dollar bet that he stomps him. Anyone else want in on that bet? Well, yeah, I mean, I've seen his leg. It's bad. Me personally, I'd go take care of it and find out what's going on. He says there's only one doctor in the world that can do it, and it's all the way across the world. I don't believe that. America has a lot of smart doctors. Um, you know, whatever it is, you can probably at least try to get medicine for it. He won't go to a doctor. Since I have known him, I've never seen him go to a doctor's appointment for himself. Maybe two or three times with the kids, but for the kids, just to get them registered for school. Todd has to live by no baby scalping rules. Yeah, Todd, no scalping babies. I love children, buddy. My opinion, if you lay in the bed and make the baby, you should be man enough and woman enough to raise them and take care of them the right way. Don't teach them the wrong way. And every one of y'all have common sense. You all know the right way and the wrong way. Vaughn Hilton, James Stinky, whatever you guys want to call him, is definitely the wrong way. Kids need loving mothers and fathers. Someone that's going to teach them right from wrong. Someone that's going to teach them how to cook. Someone that's going to teach them. My wife's like, why do we need to teach our boys how to cook? They're going to have wives. Guess what? They ain't got wives yet. They ain't going to marry at 16 years old. They're going to run off to college. They're going to get their own home. 
they're still got to cook for themselves unless they're going to go to McDonald's every single night for the rest of their lives. I mean, I, and you know, what if they're, they do get married. Their wife wants to come to a home to a hot dinner if he can cook it for her. A lot of women like men that can cook. I seen one just say something to me earlier about that. My man cooks. Yeah, he's that. Call DoorDash. Yeah, they deliver. That's like I told my boy that's up in college. Buddy, I don't know what they feed you, but if you get hungry, you got money, and there's pizza joints and all different kinds of restaurants around you that will deliver to that university because you're dead in the heart of town. Everybody, I'll come to you guys. Yeah, see, there it is, too. Dee D just said it again. Her husband is a good cook. And she got herself a good cooking man. Irv could door dash, but I don't think he can handle all the walking. Hell, I got one easier. He can go down to one of the uh, drugstores in Manchester, walk in there, grab all the medicine, throw it all in the front seat of his car, and drive to their addresses and beat your horn twice, and the people come out and get it. He don't even have to get out of his car the rest of the day. He can't work. He don't want to work. He wants to sit home and get his horse stuff together. Larry is spitting facts. You're right, Todd. Because if he wanted a job, he would get a job. If you don't know what I mean by horse stuff, then you have not been watching long enough. Well, I do have an adults only, so kids are not allowed in here. I could have really said what I wanted to say, but I'm being respectful to you guys. Because my mother and grandmothers raised me right. With respect. Yeah, somebody was trying to get him to do a cooking show once, too. And I thought that would have been kind of funny because I could look at all the dishes in his sink. I mean, would you want all them dirty dishes next to your food being cooked? Has anybody ever went to a restaurant and order something and get the wrong order? I do that a lot. I'll go to a restaurant and order something and always get something different. It's sad how long it takes to smuck a... AC... I can take all day, like I said. One a day is all I need. I ain't even halfway yet. One, two draws. I'm comfortable. I can sit here and talk all day to you guys. I feel good. I feel no pains. No pains in the legs. 
chest, the heart, the brain, I'm fine. I feel any kind of pain. I got a little phone right here that pushes 911. Do I play Street Fighter? No, I do not. Um, usually when I'm on Facebook, I'm shooting pool. And um, on the laptop, I have been playing poker. Texas Hold'em. And my good at either one, I would say I'm average on both. As you, if you go to the, ask me to be your friend, you'll see I ain't got much money. I've won millions, but i am probably got about $20 in my account right there now. You know, so, but I, I like to play big times. I go double or nothing. I mean, you never know when you're going to win. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. Yeah, I do shoot poor. Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't call it professional pool player, but I have played for a bar too. And I didn't play too bad single, and I didn't play too bad with partner. Is, uh, is Stinky still buying lottery tickets? Not that I know, Blue. Because he ain't got no money. He's, hey, the money he's getting is from, what's that, Solar Opinion or something like that? No, honey, wrong name. Solar Opinion is sending him money for dog food. So as far as I know... He gets two fifty in stamps, two fifty in check, and whatever he's that guy sending him for money. No, I don't think it's secular opinion, Dan. There's a or solar it's solar marshal or solar there's something. Okay, yeah, see, Blue wrote it. So, so are Marshall. The ones that's usually hanging out with J Dubs and Vaughn. I talked to him. He seems like he's okay to me. You know, he asked me a few questions. I answered them truthfully. I have nothing to hide to nobody. Oh, he didn't send money. He sent just the dog food. That's a smart man. I uh, Thank you. I, I'm glad you said that because I thought he was sending him money and he was taking it and buying. I don't know if he was buying dog food or what he was buying, but. Yeah, I. My ex-girlfriend got mad at me about that once. You know, and that's, that's things that, you know, some people think about, you know. When we split up, she called me one time. Larry, I need diapers for, you know, my son. Okay. You don't have to go get them. I'll get them. Just give me some money. Give her $20, $30. She goes and buys them. A couple days later. I need diapers. What would just happen to the ones I just bought? Oh, he went through all them. Okay. Well, I'll make you a deal. I'll stop on my way home. Before I go home, I'll stop and get you some diapers, and I'll bring them to you. Oh, no, no, no. You bring me the money. I'll go get them. No, it don't work that way no more. I'll go buy the diapers and uh, bring them to you. She wasn't buying diapers.
Honestly, I don't know if he wears adult diapers or not. But uh, I don't want to get talked about, but I have at least once or twice. When I had a bathroom problem. So, I mean, like I said, I don't lie. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I have wore them a couple of times. So what's everybody do? I mean, are we all across the whole United States? I see I got 21 people watching me right now. That's the highest I've been. I don't know who's all inviting their friends, but hey, thank you. I'm glad that people are watching me. Who's my football team? Well, honestly, I do. Are you talking pros or college? I kind of like the Cowboys. I really liked them for a long time. I think it's just their helmets with the big old star is what drew me. I mean, I do got a lot of cards like, you know, I remember when, you know, Tony Dorsett and all them was running back in the days. Um, college, I'm an Ohio State Buckeye fan. My namesake was born like five or six minutes after the 2003 national champions that we won. As, my, as the game ended and we won, my wife went into labor. So she waited until after the game, and I was so proud of her. I think she just got so excited that they won that we nicknamed him Buckeye. I thought that was pretty cool. So, yeah, I'm an Ohio State Buckeye college team. You know, we all don't have good teams. I mean, some of you guys out there like them Rams who won the Super Bowl last year. Oh, see, I got people here that follows the Dolphins and the Hawks. That's what I'm saying. We're all different. I mean, when Jeff Gordon was around, I liked it because of the number 24. It wasn't that it was Jeff Gordon's car. It was the 24 car. And when it first came out, it was, you know, the 24 car. And that's my son was born on the 24th. So that kind of went right perfect. Yeah, 24. Jeff Gordon. NASCAR. Who is now retired. Do I still ride with the 24? Definitely. Win, lose, or draw, I still ride with him. You know, I'm from Ohio. If we got a group or family that we like or team that we like. There's a lot of people up there that like some Browns. Them Browns didn't do too good for a long time. Them Detroit Lions ain't did nothing in a long time. I mean, me and my wife and our my son, all three have different football teams. My wife is a Detroit Lions fan. My son, Larry Jr., is a Green Bay fan. Cleveland, a.k.a. Mistake on the Lake. <laughs> good one, good one. We, I used to call them the Cleveland Clowns. No, Jeff Gordon was not from Toledo.
Oh, your ex. I'm sorry. I didn't read it all down there. I'm sorry. I jumped to the conclusion. My ex would have loved you. She adored Jeff Gordon and was also from Toledo. That's cool. Yes, I am from Toledo. And yeah, I did like Jeff Gordon. But like I said, it really wasn't Jeff. It was the 24 car that drew me to it. You know, and now that um, William Byron's driving it now, he's not doing too bad. I mean, we're, we got a good run. We've got a couple wins on his belt. Is he another Jeff Gordon? Maybe, maybe not. No one knows until the future comes up. But I think Jeff Gordon made a good impact, too. So, 20 years, 93 wins. That's pretty good. Some years he won 10 and 11 races in. Four-time Winston Cup champion. The Iron Man champion. So, he got a few trophies there. Cowboys got Super Bowl rings. I'd like to see the Cowboys go this year. I mean, everybody else probably wants their teams to go. Oh, okay. Here I got person yelling Green Bay. Yeah, I can't tell nothing from your profile picture because I can barely see your profile picture. But, hey, yeah, Green Bay, I mean. Well, I mean, Detroit Lions just need to figure out where their mistakes are, who's not making their plays, and get somebody in there that can. I mean, when you finish last in the lead, last in the whole thing, and you're number one pick, you want to start filling in them spots that you're hurting. You're hurting for a running back. Get you a running back. You're hurting for a quarterback. Get a quarterback. You fill your positions every year. Ain't that what the draft is? That's what I was always told and thought. Maybe they don't do that no more. I don't know. They change so much stuff so quick. Bye, D. Have fun. Enjoy life. Probably see you again because I'm talking about daily stuff. So who knows? As long as I'm living, I'm on live somewhere. If it ain't YouTube, it's Facebook. My name, I Senior. But you got to make sure it's from Onita because there's a couple of Larry Frost. Hey, did you all hear the story about James saying we were related to Robert Frost, the poet? Y'all ever heard that? Somebody said there was one out there of that. I think that's funny. As far as I know, I've looked through the tree. And if he's in there, he's he going to have to be distant, 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 because it's just like me from Irvy. Because he ain't nowhere in my tree. And I have looked. And there are two Robert Frosts in our family tree. And I looked up their birthdays. And I looked up where they were born. Where they were raised. Where, everything about them. And then you look up a Robert Frost the poet. And he never lived there. He never. The years are completely off. Everything. So, I mean, no, we were not related. Hmm. 
That's what I'm saying. James don't know nothing. He just runs his mouth trying to find something to talk about. Kind of what I'm doing right now, honestly. But his is all stupid shit. His is all lies. Yeah, Robert was a common name. There's a lot of common names out there that I can name after each other. And then there's some people that kind of kept it close to home where they named, you know, they had a boy and a girl. The boy was named after the daddy and the girl was something like mama's name or if it wasn't mama's name. I see Jim's a real good common name, too. John. John is a very good common name. I probably know about 10 different Johns. No, oh, I lost three people. So who's new? Anybody going to say hi to me that ain't been here? Anything we want to catch up on? Anything you didn't hear? I'm Larry Frost. I'm James Vaughn Hilton's biggest troll right now. He thought he was funny. He's trying to put me in jail. So I think I just figured I'd do a video for a few hours and see what we got going. I do like genealogy. I wonder what frost means. Honestly, I think I have it on paperwork. I would have to dig it out. It's in the big folder. And my cousin, Ronnie Ray, he has our, um, our crest, our shield, or whatever they call that. He had it put on his leg. But when I originally looked it up, the one on his leg and the one that shows me and what I got, they're two different ones. So, I don't know. I don't know if it changes after so many years different designs or what you know what i mean for the certain years but if all y'all didn't catch it i am a heinz 57 i am mixed with everything and proud of it And like James Vaughn Hilton says, I made it to the sixth grade. If I look up what name, AC. I know what I am. I got 54 sub names. That means I've had 54 grandmothers of all nationalities. And that's just my daddy's side. That's not counting mommy. And I know my grandmother came from Scotland. Born in Scotland. And was come over here on the ship as a little girl.
And it took me nine years to find that. Yeah, it took me half of my life to find out what her real name was. Do you call your grandmother by her first name? Or do you call her grandma? Yes, AC, I was talking about the Family Shield thing. Ronnie Ray's got one on his leg. And I honestly think I got one, too. But I don't think mine and Ronnie's. I didn't get a tattoo. Mine's on a piece of paper. And the one I got don't match the one Ronnie's got. So I don't know which one's right. But to me, I think we're mixed. I've seen... Everything in there from England to German to American to Indian. Yet we do have Cherokee bloodline, but it's so far back there, it's not even a trace in our blood no more. So, no matter what James Vaughn Hilton says, there's no 65%. If he's lucky. If he can show me a blood test, tell him to go have it done. And if he shows me that he's got any blood in him at all, that is Indian, I will give him a $100 bill. Oh, yeah, the list from Scott. Yeah, it's definitely log. Yeah, I called my grandmother, I thought her real name was Lydia, and when I tried to find her and couldn't find her, I couldn't find her, because that name wasn't there, that wasn't my grandmother's real name. My grandmother's name, she changed when she come across the boat. Why? How? Who knows? But her real name was Elizabeth. I am doing pretty good, trash man. Just sitting on here talking about stinky a little bit. Him talking about putting me in jail and all this and that kind of failed on him. I'm tired of him running his mouth. I'm bored. Nothing to do. What else to do? I learned how to get on YouTube. Larry's going to go live and see what people were out there doing and saying and talking. Well, I'm alive. If I'm alive, I'm doing well. Yeah, he needs to grow a garden and eat, but the only problem, too late now, most gardens are starting to come in already. I mean, my neighbors down there has got four foot corn already, so another three, four weeks, and they'll be pulling it. Weather guy, I really hope he is. I do. I, my, my laptop here is telling me there's 15 of you watching, and I hope one of them is him. I really do. Or his best friend, J-Dubs. Do you know, I just, I don't like people talking sh shit. I don't like people running their mouths and saying things about the frost. You know, unless you can back up it being true then I don't want to hear about it. I think if my uncle Little Jim stole $25 million from Alice, he would not be living in a house that needs work that he's been putting money into since he's really moved in. 
James says, oh, he got a new truck. Yeah, he did. He also got rid of his other one. That was worth more than his brand new truck. He got rid of an antique. He did add on to the house. He needed an extra room. James thinks you can just move in a house and never take care of it. You ain't you don't have to update the furnaces. You don't have to update hot water tanks. You don't have to update toilets and sinks and bathtubs and floors and walls and paint, lights, switches, plugs. Houses is a lot of stuff to maintain. If you own a home, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I've been picking our... Yeah, exactly. Yep. See, you're bringing it already in. That's right. Yeah, I was just watching, like I said earlier, I was just watching some of his videos and kind of, instead of blowing off and going crazy, my wife won't let me do nothing. I just figured I'd get on here and just talk. I mean, I'm live. I learned how to go live. I'm happy. Now I got more friends that I can talk to. And none of you has joined me because I don't know how to have you guys come in here and join me. And we can talk about things. I see a lot of you posting over on the side chat, they call it, and I'm reading most of them if I can. I just like getting on, saying hi, how's everyone doing? Hopefully everyone's having a good day. I think whatever James gets, from now into the end of time of his life, he deserves every bit of it. That's, you know, that's the only thing I can say. I mean, if he thinks his God is that powerful and can do whatever, then go for it. Let his God do it. You know, like I said, everybody is different. Everybody. Not to be racist, is there anybody out there that don't believe in God? Of course. Is there people that believe in them? Yes. Did some people like Trump? Yes. Did some not like Trump? Yes. So, you see what I'm saying? Both ways. Nobody is the same. Even though they say there's a twin out there for everybody. In my opinion, I don't think there's a twin out there of somebody. I think the twin's a family member that's four or five, six generations that you don't know that's, is that look-alike? I'm moving from Louisville to Iraq soon, but I'll never stop watching stinky videos. Yeah, just, you know, pretty soon I hate to tell you, Patch, Patch up. Pork chop. I'm sorry. Pork chop. Sorry you're here. You're moving out of the United States. And uh, Stinky won't be on long. I mean, you might get him a few more months. Maybe another year if he's lucky. My hopes is that the godparents get full custody. And they tell him that if he can't pay rent there, then he has to go. 
because them kids need money coming in for the day they turn 21 years old for they can get out on their own and sprout their own wings out. If they want to move into any one of their houses, they're welcome to do that. They don't have to live with the house parent or godparents, house parents, parents, whatever you want to call them. My opinion, your parents are the ones who raise you. Not the one who laid in the bed and made you. The ones that raise you are your parents. So that's where my mother and my stepfather comes in. I did have a stepdad if y'all didn't catch that earlier. And my father did get mad at me one time because I was on the phone to my stepdad. And I didn't call him stepdad. I said, okay, dad, I'll call you tomorrow or something. We'll holler at you. He ain't your dad. I looked right at him. I said, I'm going to tell you something. You take this any way you want. You want to get up and walk out of this house right now. I don't care. He is my dad. He's the man that taught me how to fish. He taught me how to hunt. He taught me how to cook. He taught me how to treat a woman. He taught me how to get dressed. What has my father taught me? None of them. What is a father? Father is somebody that raises you, takes care of you, and teaches you things. To make sure that you grow up to be a good person in society today. And I hope every one of you guys have raised your kids to be good in our society today. And you guys didn't raise no stinkies. Why does Mouse's family not try to adopt the children? Well, I don't know how big of a family that she does have. But I hear her mom ain't in too good of a house. I don't think mentally, and uh, nothing against a Andrea, I don't think mentally she would be able to take care of them herself because she's got a lot going on around her life. And like I told her, she definitely had to have something bigger before they even thought about letting them come home to her. Her sister adopted one. Could she adopt three more? It's also going to matter. Does she have two more bedrooms that she can spare? That's, I mean, if she's already got one and she's had a couple of her own, so she's probably already got three. And if she takes three more, that's six kids. Can she handle that? I don't know. Like I said, I don't know how many brothers and sisters she's got. I don't know nothing about that. I never got into none of that about them. Personally, I think when Vaughn Hilton pulled that gun out on her, she should have called the sheriff's department right there. And when the cops got there, have him arrested. And I literally today would say Miss Alice would still be alive. Vaughn Hilton would still be in jail. And she would be living in Irby's trailer with them three kids. Because Miss Alice would have helped her any way she needed help. Even if she paid me to go over there to make sure the food was there. To make sure they had clothing. I mean, Miss Marsha. Marsha helped a lot. I mean, the family tried to help them. Irby did not want the help. When we go to help, we were trying to chase her away from me. We were trying to get her to move out. We were trying to do this. We were trying to do that. No, James. We were trying to keep her comfortable, keep her relaxed, keep her as a human being. We don't treat our women like dogs. 
Even though you do, we don't. And if you're going to run that bloodline frost through you, you're not going to neither. Or a frost will take that bloodline frost from you. Because I, you ain't going to disgrace my last name. You want to disgrace the Hilton, you go for it. Or the Vaughn Hilton. But you ain't disgracing the Frost. There ain't one out of the whole eight of them that I wouldn't have did a thing for. And yes, I did meet all eight of them. Barely. Uncle Art was the first one to go. I was there. I seen him at the family reunion. Four months later, he passed away. Then Ann Elsie. Then Alice. Then, or Hazel. Then Alice was the last one. Well, I forgot uh, Sophie died in there too, so. Yeah, they all went within the, like five or six years apart, maybe. Wasn't far, but they're all up there in age. I mean, when you were hitting them 80s and 90s, you're expecting to be going. Even though all their dad lived 101 almost, he was 100. He was a month from his eight, 101 birthday. That must make Hilton become a deadbeat dad worse. Yeah, well, he is a deadbeat. Come on now. Think about it. You know, when he made dinner, did any of you all see him make dinner for them kids? Did you ever see what them kids was eating every day? Of course not. Because he wasn't making it. Andrea was while he's on the computers. If he wasn't on the computer, he was in bed sleeping, wanting her to make dinner or making breakfast or whatever it is. You know, he says that she had the day shift and he had the night shift. I wonder why he had the night shift for. Because the kids are all asleep. He don't have to do nothing. Play on his computer. But when the kids are up running and want breakfast, lunch, dinner, he sleeps. Why she does it all? I know why she left. Yeah, exactly. He was third shift. But then he wants to know why. His wife left him. When you show the computer more attention than you show your wife, it's time to turn the computer off. You know, I can I can imagine the words he was telling Andrea. I never asked her. I wonder what words was he telling her? How did he con her into coming down there? I really do. Me personally, I think she just wanted to run away from her mother. She wanted to get away from her mom. She just become of age. It's a quick way to get out of there. She took her check and got a bus ticket and got out of there and went straight to Irving. You know, liked him, whatever. They got married. Because Alice says they couldn't live there without being married. So they got married. They have three babies. And she leaves him. Because he ain't helping with the babies. He's not helping with cooking. He's not helping with cleaning. He treats her like shit. He won't give her her medicine. Why would she want to stay? Think about that. Why would she want to stay? There ain't no love in this world that would want to make someone stay. 
Oh, they were both on third shift? So nobody did first shift and second shift? I thought Andrea was doing first shift and second shift. Or they just wasn't getting fed at all. And that's what I'm saying. I mean, I don't know how people can do that. Honey, you still watching Quieter and Late? Okay, well, I muted it. You know, it's just like Stinky's, oh, I'm going to hit the lottery. Yeah, you and 300 million other people, James. Everybody says that. Tell your God to give you the numbers, James. See what happens. Your God gives you the numbers, and I believe that your God is powerful. But if not, then don't say a word to me. Well, pork chop, I mean, I don't know how I can hear it unless you send it to me. Like I said, I do have a Facebook account if you're on Facebook. I'm Larry Frost. Oneida, Kentucky. O-N-E-I-D-A. Make sure you look in Kentucky and not Tennessee, because there's one in Tennessee, too. Yeah, he's been getting trolled a lot of it in his life because he's been lying all of his life. You know, it's just like him supposed to be saving them hoes. Them pimps would have shot him and left him sitting on the fucking curb. Who's he kidding? Fifteen degree black belt. Yeah. <laughs> Kung Fu, Judo, you name it, he's a black belt at it. I'm wearing a black belt now, so I'm a black belt too. Y'all like that, uh. I don't know, people. I just, like I said, I'm bored, sitting at home, doing nothing, tired of watching reruns on TV. So, the only thing I can do is talk to you guys or talk to the wife. And if I ask her, she'll tell me to get out of the YouTube. You can talk to them. Leave me alone. I got things to do. So, I'm on here bugging you guys. You don't want to be here. All you have to do is leave. When I see zero, I'll hang up. Maybe. Or I'll just keep posting. Who knows? I'll post to bedtime. I don't care. I was told I couldn't get in no trouble. So what's the difference? Everybody sees what the name's up. What I'm talking about. What you all want to know. You know, and when I see some of them names come up, I know them personally. Like that Todd there, the troublemaking Todd. Um, he did the ancestry thing on it. I appreciated it. It helped me out. You know, I see a few of them that I don't know, but... You guys really have something out there that you want to ask me and you didn't hear me talk about it earlier? Ask me, I'll tell you. 
Just don't listen to Todd, because Todd will start something I heard. I heard he's one of them big troublemakers in here. I don't know how I drag them troublemakers. Todd, is that what they call a troll? Are you a troll with me? Where did you used to be one? Who used to be a troll? No, not a troll. You used to start fights. Oh, I no, honey, I don't start fights. You used to. No, I've never started a fight in my life. Oh, you lied, second. Honey, it's about time to make dinner. What am I doing? Don't you start with me? You said I didn't have to make. Well, you don't. Whatever you're making, I mean, it's a quarter to six. You might want to start it if you're doing it in the air fryer. That way it's done at six. You can take your shot and eat. If it was up to me rotten and I could evict him, he'd been out on the road a long time ago. I would have had him evicted before his mommy even died. His mommy saved his ass from me. Because she loved her baby so much. And I kept telling her, you know, that's 300 and rent walking away from you. You know, that's another 250 to 300 in his light bill that's walking away from you. You know, that's another $267 truck insurance on that truck that's walking away from you every month. So in the long run, Miss Alice was probably losing eight to nine hundred dollars a month taking care of him. He had his wife there collecting seven something. He has Jerry there collecting seven something, plus collecting almost five hundred a month in food stamps. He never gave his mom a red penny. And he never paid none of the bills. He still let his mommy pay them bills for him. He can collect the two fifty a month pork chop until the kids turn twenty one years of age, or the guardian parents become their regular foster parents, become their guardians, and then they can stop it from going out anymore. Because literally, it's Alice's trust fund. And in her trust fund, in the will, it says that Irvy will get $250 a month out of the trust fund as long as the money's there. Well, if the renters ain't got money going in because none of the no one lives in none of them anymore, they're all abandoned except him and the girls, and they all turn 21 years of age, they're going to take their money out of that bank account. When they all three are 21, that money will all split 33.3% ways, no matter what is in it. If there's a million dollars, they split it 33.3% ways the only problem with the whole thing is jerry's handicap is jerry going to be able to control that money if not one of the girls will have to take over or the parent that has raised him for the last 8 10 12 years will have to get somebody to take care of it or they will have to take care of it because of him being a handicapped child What's wrong, hon? Has he mentioned to you about any... That word that you put out there, rotten? I don't understand what that word means. E extreme people?
the only people I ever hear him and the neighbors and the lawyers and the judges and his ex-wife and people that raped his wife and secular opinion you're always top of the list I ain't saying no real names if you know secular everybody knows who he is I will definitely let you know pork chop when I go back there I guess I just got it because I heard it go ding. Yeah, I can't really play around with two at a time, so I'll mess with all that later on this evening after I get done with this one. If I ever finish this one. I mean, yeah, I probably will shortly because uh, I think there's a live auction on tonight where I can buy some stuff. And I think uh, WWE's on tonight. Reigns would have lost, but I heard he won. I don't like him. I don't even know why they put the two belts together. I thought that was wrong. But WWE, they do what they want. I can't believe you guys ain't asking me too many questions. I figured this thing would be blowing up with questions. Oh, boy. I jumped from 13 to 22. I'm doing good. Are you trying to ask me if I have extra dirt on him? No, not really. He is dirt. Favorite wrestler of all time? Well, I'm going to have to say most of my time of growing up. I've liked a few good ones. I mean, there's a couple good wrestlers. Hulk Hogan wasn't bad. Um, Triple H wasn't too bad. Rock was pretty good. John Cena wasn't bad. I personally liked The Undertaker. But Really, The Undertaker was okay, but I like when he paid the American Badass better. I wish that would have stuck around a little bit longer. If you remember that one. Well, I hope it does, Nick Geek Out. Sorry about his luck. And that's what I'm thinking that, you know, YouTube's supposed to be about. I thought that's what these lives were supposed to be about. Get on here and meet new people. Get on and say hi. If you guys want to talk about some, we'll talk about some. If I disagree with you, I'm going to tell you I disagree with you. If I agree with you, I'll agree with you. I mean, like I said, I'm a cowboy fan. I know a lot of you out there don't like them cowboys. And that's fine with me. My opinion, your teams get better. Some teams get worse. It matters who you pick, where you're at in the draft, and how things go. You know, a couple of things I have learned in life. One, you don't go playing in a, another man's backyard. That's one good lesson. And my I had to teach it to my own father. Let me take it and say it right. My father. I had to teach him that. You don't go playing in another man's backyard. You know, when me and my dad become part of each other's lives again after... Not seeing him for 20 years or so. 
we started hanging out again he was talking oh i like to fish too i like to fish i can outfish you i've been ocean fishing i've caught sharks i've caught this i can caught that and i was like okay dad yeah you're a good fisherman you are you're definitely a good fisherman when you want to go fishing oh anytime you're ready you pick the spot oh what do you want to go fishing for oh we'll go fishing for catfish okay and i picked the spot okay yeah we grabbed our pose 4 30 in the morning was in my fishing hole by five o'clock in the morning by seven in the morning i had about seven in and he was still on number one by the time the noon hour came i was 23 or 24 and he had three you don't play in a man's backyard I know where them fish were. I know where to catch them catfish at. I have fished that hole for 15 years or better. You know, if you got one good hunting spot, one good fishing spot, one good anything, you know to go back to that spot because it is good. There's a reason they sat there. There's a reason them fish hung that spot. And I knew that. Now, could Dad beat me if we went to, went to Florida and caught shark? Oh, yeah. He's did it. I never have. But that ain't the point. Challenging a man in his own backyard is not the smart thing to do. He knows the layout. He knows what he's doing. You know, now if it was me coming from Ohio and or Kentucky, either one and somebody coming from Mississippi and we're going over to California to fish, then it's, you know, that's good competition because neither one of us knows anything. But you don't play in a man's backyard. I've always learned that. So, what's everybody do? What do you guys like? Yeah, I did like the Undertaker. He was good, pretty good, good there. Like I said, the Undertaker was good. I liked him when he played uh, the American Badass and rode out on that big old nice bike. You know, Undertaker was around a very long time. My biggest catfish. It matters what kind of catfish you're talking about. Channel cat or blue cat. You know, there are different kinds of catfish. Channel cat, I'm going to say about eight and a half pounds. Blue catfish, 52 pounder out of a paid lake. That is the only thing I really miss living down here in the state of Kentucky. Is my fishing. Toledo, Ohio. If you like to fish. Toledo, Ohio. Maumee, Ohio. Waterville, Ohio. All of them are real good spots to fish. AC, I can barely read what you said. Bass is a something catfish? Bass is not a catfish. A bass is a bass. Yeah, I wouldn't have ate the fish neither if there was a body just found in the same lake. Mm -hmm. 
There is a lake on Aunt Alice. Oh, it ain't a lake. It's a pond on Lake Alice. There is a pond there. If you look at my Facebook account, you'll see pictures of it. I took pictures of it because my father and Johnny Bishop and me all three worked on it. And Uncle Little Jim worked on it. And Ronnie Ray worked on it. Miss Alice wanted a fishing pond, and that's what we gave her. Bass is not a catfish. The two tastes are totally different. A bass tastes one taste, and a catfish tastes another taste. Promise, I know the difference. I lived in Toledo and I've caught them both. And I mean, when I say I caught them, I mean I've caught them. I guarantee you I've caught more than 5,000 bats. I did say that right. 5,000 bats. There was one day me and my father went down to the river he said i hear the bass are running i was like they are let's go fishing we were bringing them in two and three at a time every 30 seconds we come home with 187 fish within four hours when the white bass run up the maumee river they run up the maumee river So I'm saying that's about the only thing I really miss from about Toledo. I hear it's getting rougher and rougher every day. I wish I can get my boys to move out of there, but they both must like it because they want to stay there. So Yes, I agree. That was her failure. She shielded him all of his life. And he's a spoiled little brat who still wants the gold spoon, who ain't even got a wooden spoon to play with. So he's got to learn on his own. He's going to learn how, how to survive. He's going to have to. I mean, or is he going to wait till his kids are 21 and let his kids support him? Because that's what's going to happen. He don't care if he gets money from where. He don't care if it's coming out of his kid's money or your money or my money. He don't care. He ain't working for it. He don't need it, so he don't care. Does he even have toilet paper? I don't know. No idea. Could not tell you one bit. If he don't, sorry about his luck. And no, I will not give him none. He's going to have, he'd probably be eating them fingernails. Because he's going to be getting hungry. I don't see how he's surviving off two fifty a month in food stamps. Nowadays, that don't buy much, promise. Especially when you're buying everything that belongs in the microwave. If it's microwave food, its prices are up. Yeah, I feel no pity for him neither. I don't, Nick. Baby, I don't know how you're doing on dinner or whatever, but it is now six. Probably. 
just licking the feet would kill him. Yes, dear. So what's the longest that somebody's ever went live, I wonder? <clears throat> I was hoping to see somebody get on that I kind of know. I mean, I know some of you. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude. I mean, some of them I've seen your names, but we've really never talked. No, never heard of no Kenny K. Like I said, we don't talk much. We don't hang out much. We don't do nothing much. The only thing I've ever did with him is go to a family reunion with him twice. And one uh, Thanksgiving. That we literally had to go back to his house and tell him to bring the turkey back home. Because his mother didn't buy it. His mother didn't cook it. That he has no rights to take that turkey. If he wants to cut it and take a couple pieces for his kids, that's fine. But he ain't taking that whole turkey out of this house. And it better be back at that house before I walk back in that door. And he did bring the turkey back. He made the kids his plates and took it over there to him. Like I said earlier, I don't mind feeding kids. I love to make sure, I'll make sure a kid eats before I eat. But you literally are not coming over here and stealing a 25 pound turkey that you never even touched. Didn't even know it was there until it was done. And think you're going to walk out of the house with the whole thing when no one else even got a piece yet? Not really. Uh, no way, buddy. I sat there and smelt that turkey cooking for three hours. You think I'm going to let that turkey go out that door? No, 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 buddy. Oh, Kenny is the one that destroyed his marriage. He gave his woman advice without asking the husband's permission. Illegal forever. Whatever. If she accepted you as a friend and she listened to you, that is her own fault to start with. Two, she must have thought you chased her in the right direction, Kenny, because she did do it. Well, now that you are Streaming, it won't be long before you know the crew. You are a trolls, you are a trolls, haters, and Nate Sayers. Okay, no, sorry, I'm not no troll haters or Nate Sayers. I am Larry Frost, period. People, I might be part of a group or whatever you guys want to put me, that's fine, I don't care. As long as I'm not as bad as, as long as I'm not trying to get no ding rewards of being the worst father or the worst husband or none of that. Because, you know, I'll be honest with you. My family is my world. And if any of you think different about your family, I'm sorry. I'll pray for you. That's all I can tell you. I will pray for you. Because if you got real family that are real true family. They will do anything for you and they will help you out anytime they can. But if you burn the bridge, the bridge is burnt. You can't repair it. There's no buying wood and fixing it. When that bridge is burnt, it's burnt. 
That means you don't stick your cousin in the back and then turn around and try to be his friend next week. You hear that, Vaughn? How much work did Ronnie Ray and his wife do at your home? Stinky. The whole bathroom? Your wife cleaned the whole house at least twice? And you blamed her for teaching your kids to write in their shit on the wall saying, I'm hungry? If she, Marsha taught them that, why did she teach her kids that? Because Marsha's not that kind of person. I know Marsha. Don't make Marsha sound like she's a bad guy. Don't make Ronnie Ray sound like he's a bad guy. Don't make little Jim sound like he's a bad guy. And personally, I know me. I know I'm not a bad guy. Am I perfect? No one's perfect. Like I said, everybody's different. Let's keep it real, people. Everybody's different. If you find somebody the same, then good luck. You might want to try to make a match. Because that might be your mate. If there's toilet slugs in Kentucky, they all have to be at Irvy's trailer. Exactly. Because I don't see no slugs over here. Unless they're anywhere between two and four foot long. And the back of them goes up standing up and rattles. Are them called slugs? To me, we call them rattlesnakes. Fifteen watch, and I'm doing pretty good. Five hours and eight minutes on. Got 28 thumbs up. Yeah, toilet rattlesnakes, yeah. Tell you the truth, I don't know if he sees any rattlesnakes over there or not. I mean, they... There might be some up there around the pond area. I don't know if they'd come down by the trailer unless they're headed for the creek across the street. That's kind of ways to go to get water. I think they'll just go straight to the pond to get it. You know, someone asked me, would I like any of that property or anything? Alice has some nice property. I personally think the best one she already sold. And that was Big Irvy's property. I, I asked her time and time and time and time again. Miss Alice, what are you thinking? What do you mean, Larry? Why are you selling Irvy's home? Why don't you move into it? And rent this brand new trailer out. Oh, no, no. I like you here. I like my trailer. Which, don't put me wrong. Irby's already showed you all. Very beautiful trailer. All clean. Sweet. Beautiful. Woman needed nothing. Three bedroom home. Not a hole in the wall. No paint job problem or nothing. Something wrong, dear? Mom?
You know, ask Irvy how many times did he go up there fishing with his mom? I'm like, a, a lot of questions. You guys thought you guys can go live with him? Only probably two or three or four of you might be able to. Ask him when's the last time he went up there fishing with his mom? When's the last time he took her to the doctor's appointment? When's the last time he celebrated her birthday? What did he give her for her birthday? Besides a hard time. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I'd like to know and it don't make sense to me. You know, some parents, some people do love their parents and then it seems like there's some that don't. You know, and I feel sorry for the ones that don't. Or if you grew up without parents and your grandparents or someone raised you, I'm sorry. Vaughn knew Alice had a stroke and let her on the floor. No ambulance called. He's a snake in the grass. No, the ambulance were called. He did call the ambulance. And... Rotten, as you call it, I can't pronounce gate Gaber Rotten, however, you say it. I personally cannot get into that conversation at all. That conversation could take me back to court, so I will not say nothing. I am not to talk anything about a month before her accident or the month after her death. I'm not allowed to talk anywhere in the, them two months. Anything before that, I can talk about. Anything that he's posted out on YouTube, I can talk about that. Anything he says out there on Odyssey or anything else right now, I can say stuff about that. There's no confidence. He's already said it, so I can't get in trouble for it. You know, and that's what I was telling my lawyer. Everything that he said in that video that was on that camera when it was posted, he's already said it before, five years before that on Facebook or on YouTube. I got prove it. Huh? I've got the videos. I've been saving every one of them. He's got friends, but I got friends too. And like I said, when I see him, we will have a little get-together. And we're all going to watch the movie together. I'd like it all to be in Kentucky if I can get away with it. I think that'd be a nice, nice little weekend thing for me. Maybe the whole week. I don't know. We'd have to see. I'll talk Uncle Little Jim into having a big old cookout at his house. Why the food's kicking and we're all kicking and relaxing and enjoying it. We'll all walk down the road together. We'll go out in front of Irvy's house and have a nice little party. Might introduce you to James Stinky's neighbor, the principal of the school. He'll see us out there partying. He'll want to know what's going on. Well, I'll invite him to say, hey, come on down to Jim's. Having a cookout. A Vaughn Hilton cookout without Vaughn Hilton. I don't know, I just think, if, you know, you lie and talk shit, then, you know, you get what you deserve. I mean, what else can I say? I mean, try to help him. I, you know, when the churches give away food, I used to call over there and tell them. You know, when something's happening, I call them and tell them. 
Oh, we don't want. I take food over to his mom's. He'd come over there. Oh, what are you guys bringing her? You're bringing her that food that's no good. It's a 10 days old. It's a week old. Look, it's expired. Was there any expired? Yes. Did I open it up and taste it? Yes. Was it something that was going to be eaten or was it going to be something that was going to sit in her cupboards for a month? It was going to be eaten pretty quick. Let's talk about chocolate donuts. Miss Alice can go through one bag every two days. Think about that. One bag every two days. She'd eat two, three, four of them things a day. She, I probably got her at least two bags a week, I know. For the whole two years that I've been buying her food. James didn't go to the store and buy her food. He wasn't getting it off the Swanson man after I took over. I got everything from the Save-A-Lot or somewhere that I could that's halfway decent, cheap, and it's something that she likes, something easy to make. I bought TV dinners. I'm not going to lie. I also bought her ham, bologna, peanut butter, spaghetti spaghetti and meatballs in the can, um, chili in the can, chicken and dumplings in the can, you know, a couple cans of tuna fish because she liked tuna fish sandwiches, plenty of eggs. The woman loved her eggs every morning. Even though the doctor told her she had to quit cooking at 90. Yeah. And she was kind of upset. And I kind of told her, you know, that's a good thing about the camera. Is that I can watch. Why? I mean, I literally could watch her cook the egg. I could look at the egg frying. That's how, where the camera was. Looking at the stove. I seen the stove, I seen the refrigerator, I seen the kitchen sink, I could see her microwave, I could see her coffee pot, I could see her sitting in her chair. If she's in the chair, I could see the top of her head. I couldn't see her whole body, just the top of the head, and you know she's sitting in her chair. When it's halfway back, she's asleep. If it's straight up, then she's looking out the window or looking out the door. or Because she barely watched TV. I mean, this is a woman who grew up not watching TV. Her life, she grew up to no TV. And then when TV was invented, she's out there working, making money to survive. Them kind of people don't watch much TV. So y'all think I'm talking too much or what? My wife said yes. Who are you talking about, Rotten? Little Jim? No, Dan, I'm, I'm not a song singer. But hey, little Jim is. I teach you how to roll a joint, though, Dan. Teach you how to smoke one, too. And if my doctor would let me, I'd teach you how to drink Jack Daniels, too. Because I, I don't know how to do much of anything. I know how to cook. Y'all don't want to watch me cook. I throw a little of this, a little of that. Matters what your taste buds like. I've made all kinds of different things. Meatloaf, love meatloaf. 
I love it with broccoli. I love it with cauliflower. I love it with two or three different kinds of cheese. Don't use the ketchup. Use tomato paste. With or without onions. With or without garlic. I mean, there's so many different ways and so many different foods that you can make. It's it's endless. No, he was the principal of the high school. Sorry. You must not. He He's not. He's not suing the principal of the high school. He's suing the principal of the elementary school that his kids went to. That he. They're the ones that caught CSB on him the first couple times. And that Uncle Little Jim gave over $200,000 worth of tractor equipment to to have his kids taken away from me. You know, for as much money as Irvy says that Uncle Little Jim took from him, Uncle Jim must be pretty close to broke because he's been putting out a lot of money, huh? Maybe that's why he ain't moved somewhere rich and famous kind of people. He had to spend all of it to pay all of you guys off. You guys were all scam artists and suckers. If you believe anything Vaughn Hilton's told you guys. Uh, he just makes me laugh, people. He really does. Sometimes he... You know, don't put me wrong. I'm the kind of guy, there's certain buttons you push, you can get me upset. Definitely one, you don't talk about my mother. Two, you don't talk about my children. After that, I don't care what you say. I don't care. Say whatever you want, and I'll tell you what I want, and that's how it is anymore. No, I was not at their wedding. And I probably would have said no to the wedding to happen. Because personally, I think she was a little young for Vaughn Hilton. Does anybody really know their ages when they got together? Wasn't she like 18 or 19? And he was 40? Twenty year difference. Twenty one year difference. Oh, see, Vaughn was 45, and she was 18, 19. I'm going to tell you something, and you all say whatever you want. I'm a 56-year-old man, and if my, if my son Arnold was a girl, and he's getting ready to turn 18 years old, and a 45-year-old man tried conning her into going there to her. I would let her go. And I would follow her. And when he opened the fucking door and I seen a 45-year-old man standing there, I would have blasted him so hard, his mama would not have noticed who he was for a very, very long time. 
you be in two, three, four, five, ten years, eleven years somewhere, difference is okay. You know, I've said it on Secular Opinions Live once. He is no Hefner. He is not sitting with a hundred million dollars in a bank account, living in a forty-six bedroom home with thirty-five beautiful women. Hello, he owns Playboy. What do you think them rich people do with their money? You know, I hear Hugh Hefner got married a few years back, 10, 15, whatever, to some one of the young girls. Hey, congratulations. Have fun. Enjoy life. If you guys love each other, I think it's okay. But, pick, you know, you don't pick the apple as soon as it's ready. You got to give it time to bloom and get nice and shiny red. And he did. His wasn't just turning 18 years old, barely off the tree. Sorry, Andrea, I'm nothing against you, honey, but 18, still 18. You're still a young girl to me. My life didn't really start until after I was 21, and I started working at 16. Life didn't start getting serious and Really, until after I was 21. Then I was out about making real money. I had to make money to pay bills. To I wanted to be somebody. I wanted to do something. I wanted to get out of Toledo. I wanted to become a dad. I did that. Four times over. The only thing I kind of wish is that maybe I should have wished I had a girl, but, you know, I take what God has given us. I told myself I'd go with a boy and a girl and stop. It didn't work that way. I had a boy and a boy, and we didn't make it work. Got with another girl, and she had two more with me. And me and her has been together since. And like I said, I got one off to college, and I have one in 12th grade. So these two are almost grown and out on their own, and... Me and mommy could jump in the vehicle, hook up the trailer, and travel across the USA. And guess what? It's time to buy the trailer. It's time to get it ready. But y'all know some. The funniest thing, and I still laugh about it. Five years ago, and I, sometimes I believe this, but I hope not. My youngest boy told me and mommy five years ago, he was like 11 or 12, somewhere in there, that he is never moving out. He is going to live with us until he's 50 years old. And I says, oh, no, you're not. You're going to be married gone and have me a grand be me a, make me a grandpa a couple of times you are not bringing your wife home and having kids in our house buddy you're you guys get your own place you do your own thing that's what life is about getting out there and being somebody and doing what you want to do you want to be a policeman go for it you want to be a fireman go for it you know, a lot of us takes a lot of different jobs until you find the right job. Some of us fall right into the right jobs. You never know. And like I said, I've did a lot of jobs. I 
I don't know if any of you have ever heard of Beach Hunt Wesson Foods. They used to make ketchup and tomato paste and puddings. I mean, they make a lot. I used to work for them. I was a stocker. I'd stock the boxes on top of each other to a certain height. We'd wrap it with plastic and send it to the forklift. They called it the 610 line. It was them real big cans of tomato juice and tomato ketchup going to the restaurants. That company, they closed up. Went to Mexico because it was cheaper for them. Most of the people there were there for 20 and 30 years, so... They offered them a buyout and moved. Mexico. A lot of companies do that. You know, I seen it the other day. I think it was China or something. They got a KFC and they're doing something different, making something different in there. And I was like, man, I hope they bring it to America. Let us try it once. Well, it looks like a few people left, few people came back in, a few other people knew. If any of you guys are UK, I am very sorry about your guys' queen. She will be missed around the world. Honey, did you get your shot yet? Or are you still waiting for dinner? How's dinner going? Okay, can you grab me a soda? I won't be on much longer, honey. I know. Oh, I know, but I, I see that look you give me. I know you didn't say nothing. Everybody quit asking me something. Nobody's saying nothing. What's wrong? Everybody leaving me? G bus? I don't know what you were saying there, Jay Morgan. It's so small I can't read it. You might have to split the word up for I can read it there. I'm at work listening and chatting when I can. Okay, that's cool. Like I said, I ain't talking about much. I'm just Bored to death. Don't have nothing else to do. Tired of watching the same old reruns. What else is there to do? Go live. Talk to somebody. Get someone's attention. They want to know something I might know. I'll tell them. If you guys want to know anything about Stinky, I'll tell you anything I can. Like I said, I'm still... Still watching the certain things that I'm allowed to post. And as soon as everything can be released and everything's good and I can't get in no trouble at all. We will have the movie coming out. And then he'll probably try to sue me for the money that that makes. But just like I made a video this today and I told the courthouses, the judges, and all the neighbors and everybody, even Miss Parker and Grumpy Lobster, don't leave you out. Um, 
secular opinion. I'm not going to leave you out. You guys all got paid today. You should all got your paychecks. That one penny that I sent to you for the payment of screwing Vaughn's life up. Because that's about what it's worth, a penny. I wish he would get on here. I do. I hope he really is watching. Now I got my wife giggling at me. I'm not saying words. The judge said she will let me know. She didn't say yes and she didn't say no. She was going to go think about it and see what she should do. Because he literally knew the cameras were there. He knows I record. I mean, how can I get in any trouble when I am the power of attorney? I am the one who controls the money. I control properties. I control everything except her medical. And to be personally honest, as everybody's 15 people listening... I still personally took care of the medical, too. I literally drove her to the doctor's office. My wife would walk Miss Alice into the doctor's office, check her in, go back there with Miss Alice, talk to the doctor, see what the doctor says, and bring Miss Alice back out to the car. And I would take Miss Alice out to lunch, or Miss Alice would take us out to lunch. Either way, it went both ways. I never charged Alice no money to take her to none of her doctor's appointments ever, because most of the time she was buying the dinner or the lunches, you know. And I thought that hey, that's fine with me. I mean, either way it goes, I'm going to buy lunch or I'm putting it in the gas tank, so it was working. But, yeah, we took her to her doctor's appointment. Did I run up to the doctors and say, hey, 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 give Alice that C-19 shot. Oh, she has to have that C-19 shot. No. The doctor, doctor told Alice and my wife that Miss Alice should get the shot. And... The wife's response and Alice's response, both and mine, after I've heard about it, is if the doctor thinks it is what she needs, then he should give it to her. So we lined it up for her to get her shots. Yes, I did. Because he don't take her to her doctors. He don't take... People, he wanted the school to take his kids to the hospital when they got sick at school. So the principal of the school or the nurse at the school, one or the other, should take James Vaughn Hill and Stinky's kid to the hospital. Forget about the other 550 to 700 kids that are in that school. Vaughn Hilton's kid is worth more than all of them put together. You see what I'm saying? He has no brains. When my kid gets hurt at school and they call me, I go to the school, I pick my kid up, and I take him to the hospital and see what is wrong with my son. And then if he's good enough to go back to school, I take him to school. If he's not and he twisted his ankle, then he comes home for three days and as soon as he's walking again, his butt's back on that bus. <laughs> he might think I'm still going to jail. I might. Who knows? And personally, I don't care, to be honest, anymore. Jail would be a little vacation for me. And like I told everybody, the wife just said to it, it'd be a vacation for her. Here's the funny part about it. It's going to cost them more money to keep me in that jail than it is to release me and leave me out on my own. We are talking. I take nine pills in the morning, five at night, 
plus two liquids and a powder every single day. I don't walk, so you're going to have to bring me my breakfasts, my lunches, my dinners. Sometimes I have chest pains, so I can't wipe my ass so good. So they're going to have to wipe my ass for me. So, yeah, put me in jail. Hello. I, I've been to jail, people. Not for a long period of time. I think the longest, maybe two weeks. Maybe a little over. It's only jail. You go in there, you eat and you sleep. You go in there, you eat, you sleep. Get lucky, you get a book and you can read a book. If you're bored. No, he has no idea how the law works. I mean, I give him credit, Jay, for trying. But yeah, he's all wrong. You know, another thing I thought was funny, people, is he says that me and Uncle Little Jim and Ronnie Ray and all of us should all go back where we were born. We all should go back to Ohio where we come from. Where did he come from? On his birth certificate, it says Hamilton, Ohio. Why don't he go back to Ohio? Remember, he's not a frost. This is frost land. You know, would I like to own a piece of property Alice owned at one time? Yes. Would I like to own my, a property that my great-grandfather Guilford lived in? I dropped dead for it. Only problem? No floor. No windows. No door. No roof. Concrete slabs. It's odd as there. Not in concrete slab. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Concrete bricks framing around a house with wood around it. That's all it stands left. But you're talking about a house that was built 1840s, 1850 somewhere. Is it true that he got into a fight at a restaurant and got beat up? I have no idea. I really did not know Irvy until I moved down here in the state of Kentucky, which is about 15 years ago. Tell you the truth, I met Miss Alice 15 years ago. That would have been like one of our first family reunions 15, 16 years ago. That me and my father, me and, yeah, me and my father came to because he wanted to introduce me to some of the rest of the family. Uncle Little Jim, I knew him from Hamilton, Ohio. Ronnie Ray, I met him in Ohio on a hunting trip. And found out who he was.
Oh boy, I'm starting to get tired of what to talk about. Yeah, restaurant beating still. Uh, like I said, no, nothing about her beating out of a restaurant, but I believe he probably did. You know, personally, you know, I don't think he's all what he says he is, people. I've seen him. He ain't all that. He just tries to make people believe that. Yeah, Jay, I'm from Ohio, and so is he. He's from Hamilton, Ohio, which is by the Kentucky line. Almost there by Cincinnati. And I am from Toledo, Ohio, which is over there right next to the Michigan state line. So he's on one side of Ohio, and he's all the way south Ohio, and I'm all the way north Ohio. I don't know, people. I've been working on ancestries a lot. I mean, how far back do you want to go? I mean, cause you can keep going and going and going and going. And I think I'm pretty well done with it on my dad's side. I might work a little on my mom's. See what I can find out. But it's kind of hard because, like I said... Grandma was born in Scotland. And that's way over there. The only way I can get any good information that way is I meet a good friend who lives over there that can get that kind of information for me. You know, I don't want to put no one out of their ways or mess anybody up or, you know, don't want you to hack me or steal her identity or no bull, you know, no theft stuff, buddies. You know, I try to be friends with everybody. I help you, you help me. Do I think he is going to be able to get another lady in the trailer to live and sleep with him or just a lady in there to clean it? Good luck with that. Pretty to tell you the truth, I say good luck to both of them. Because I can imagine what that house looks like. Tell you the truth, thinking about it, I think the last time that house got clean was almost a year ago. Yeah, what kind of creature would want to live with him? I agree. No idea. No idea. I mean, he can tell her that he's got a big old mansion and once she gets on that Greyhound bus and he picks her up, she's stuck. I think that's how he got his wife.
Yeah, there you go. Vaughn Hill and then Shanty. I think Shanty beat the shit out of him. Oh, I know, Jay. I know. Can you imagine the stink of those two mixed together? Oh, no. I don't want to imagine that. I'd have to move out of the county. Sorry. Yeah, I, I talked about them earlier today, too. So, any of you that didn't see it all, everything I've posted for the six hours I've been broadcasting. I had a few things to say to them, too. If you guys see it and you want to show it to them, I don't care. I'm going to be honest with them. I don't know them. They don't know me. I've watched the videos. I've seen the videos. I kind of was listening to him. I mean, I was kind of interested in listening to some of the stuff he was talking about. But when I heard he hit the kid, that was over with. That That is, I don't care why you hit the kid. If that kid did not walk up to you and sucker punch you and draw blood from you, you had no rights to lay your hands on that kid. No matter if he's your real son, your stepson, your girlfriend's son. I don't care who he is. Period. So, sounds like I'm saying it again. So, if they see it, they know. As long as it's not in Kentucky, can we do it over there in G-Man's house? We want to get rid of Vaughn over here, people. Help us. Con Vaughn into moving there. They can have a big old party. I think uh, I might be in the front. I personally think so too, but I don't know. I heard that uh, Shanny and them's uh, getting real close to it too. I mean, they're they're getting up there. That hitting the kid thing, that kind of. Like I said, that blue, <laughs> to me, that's worse than anything Irby's ever did yet. I ever seen him hit his kids like that. I would, uh, you know, him putting them over his knee and spanking them. Yeah, hell yeah. I would do my own that way, and I don't care who says what. My kids respect me, and they always will. I ain't here to steer them down the wrong path. I'm here to keep them from going down the wrong path. 
I know. I've been there. Done that. I don't know. Life is what you really make of it. If you want it to be important in life, then you're going to be important. If you don't want to be important, you're not going to be important. Everybody lives day by day, paying your bills, feeding yourself, taking care of your family and loving your friends and your family and your loved ones. And that's all we really all can do. If you believe in God, you worship God, you thank him every day for what he does for you. And if you don't, if you believe, you know, you're God, something else, then, you know, that's up to you. No man can make another man's choice, as I would call it. You know, James always says he's got a God. Well, I do too. And I heard there was a saying, if my God is not true, I don't lose nothing. But if my God is true, James loses everything. Because he's worshiping the wrong God. One of the commandments, worship no other God. That is definitely there. I know it is. Like I said, my grandmother used to drag me by the ear into that church every Sunday. When my hair looked like it needed to be cut, even though I don't live with her, I go to visit her and say, Hi, Grandma. I love you. How you doing? We got in the refrigerator to eat. She goes, well, you ain't getting in my refrigerator until I cut your hair. You're getting a haircut. It's long. Honestly, squadron is legal here in the state of Kentucky. If it looks like it's been abandoned, they kind of can move in there and stay for a while and not really get in trouble i mean the worst thing of all six months later they have to throw them out and exactly it's not abandoned it is owned by the state Anybody caught at that property, anybody caught in that building will be prosecuted to the stent of the law. And yeah, it's a felony here. Because, you know, when they appraise that property, they didn't appraise it with Irby's trailer on it. If they did, they sure didn't give him much for that trailer, I'll tell you that. Most of it was the property and Alice's trailer. Alice's trailer is worth twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 right off the top. Property's probably worth seventy thousand, maybe eighty thousand. If you can find someone that wants to buy hills and a graveyard, the pond don't go with that. 
pond does not go with that. That pond is on another 50 acres that Ann Alice owns that sits right next door to her property. Now, if any property went up for sale, that is the one I'd like to have. But the only problem with that, there will be a bidding war like crazy on that property. And it sucks because it's all going to be a frost. Hey. I'll give you some dipping sauce. Thank you, dear. Um... I mean, Uncle Jim said he'd like to have that property. I mean, it's 50 acres, good hunting area, got a pond on it. You know, so it's a nice little piece, and it properties against his property, too. Don't let me forget that, because, you know, Jim lives right next door, so Jim is property owner. Of the property right dead after that 50 acres is over. Jim owns the next set down. So that would still make it, you know, his yard if he bought it. Is James's trailer upside down? No, it's not upside down. He's living in it. It's nasty, but he's living in it. I mean, probably if you can clean it up and get away with getting the smell out of there, might not be too good, bad of a trailer. But I mean, the first thing is trying to get the smell out of it. Good thing there's no carpet in there at all. Everything in there would have to totally be thrown yeah. out and washed down. I mean, literally. I, so I got them, dear. Thank you. Love you. I mean, I literally would, you know, wipe ceilings, walls, floors, everything. Bleached. You know, I don't know, man. It's just, it's all weird. He's weird, period. Period. You know, you try to help somebody, they stab you in the back. And that's a family member. But I got friends out here that's been my friends for 35, 40 years. Never stabbed me in the back once. They told me once, you know, not, not about family, you know, family or family. I was always brought up, you know. Love your family until they burn your bridge. Once they burn your bridge, you're done with them. And he definitely burned his bridge. With the frosts that are all the way around him. And he says his dad comes from this area. Todd, I don't know if you got a real good look at it. But I have no idea where his dad was born at. But, um. If he was, then he's around Frost and Hilton's all down through here. Okay, so if he was smart, he'd get out of here when he's talking bad about both of us. Ain't that like taking a big fresh piece of meat in the middle of the woods where you got coyotes and wolves and hanging it up high enough that none of them could touch it? And when you get there, you got about 30 animals around there trying to get that thing out of the tree. To me, that's what it sounds like. So how many people are in here 
There's 14 now. I'm taking a survey. Oh, 13. One dropped out. I'm taking a quick survey because I think I need to get off here. My wife's giving me a dirty look. I don't care. You can stay on there all night. Well, dinner's done, too, and I want to eat. I, I'm, my name's not James Vaughn Hilton. I don't eat in front of cameras, even though I don't eat much. I agree, Blue. Happy Friday, everybody. Anybody from the U.K. or anybody who liked Queen Elizabeth II, everybody knows she has passed. And I am saying sorry to the U.K., and that she will be deeply missed by the whole United States of America. I'm sorry if I'm speaking for everybody, because I know you're, a lot of you are in the U.S., but to me, she was a good woman. If you had something against her, I'm sorry. I think any woman who can go on and live life until the age she did, and have a successful life in life, she did good. And I think being the queen for 70 years, she did good. And they're not in war. They're not fighting anybody. They're not in having no problems. They got their country situated. She helped our other countries when she could. Well, see, that's the problem. I don't eat and talk. So, if I'm eating, I'm eating. If I'm talking, I'm talking. So if I do take a bite and I'm sitting here chewing my food, you won't watch me chew it for one. And you won't hear me say one word if there's food in my mouth. Larry's an eater. I don't play games when it comes down to dinner time or any of that. When I was younger, I'd be able to go close a restaurant down. Or get thrown out of one of them all-you-can-eat buffets. Get thrown out. Some people don't believe me. I don't care. You can believe me or not. I'm be honest with you. You know, most people, they go to Golden Corral. We love the restaurant. They were good people. When you can find the real Golden Corral that treats you good, they got good food, the waitress staff's good, your managers are all good and perfect, good food, love them, you find a bad one, then you find a bad one, I was asked not to come back to the Golden Corral for a while, because I walked in there and I ate eight plates of food. None of it came from the salad bar. None of it came from the dessert bar. None of it came from the side dishes. That leaves one thing. We all know what it is. The meat department. Their meatloaf. I, I eat the whole meatloaf. The roast beef. 10, 12, 14 pieces. The fish, 20 pieces. I mean, I'm a big boy. I eat good. One thing I did do, you know, a lot of people said, and, you know, they can say whatever they want. Some people like old timers, okay, and stuff. My grandmother, they said, died of old timers or something like that. She, she didn't have like Aunt Alice did, but she couldn't remember things. And the day before my grandmother died, passed away, me and my father went up and seen her. 
because we knew, you know, she ain't got long. She's went to hospice. She went back to the nursing home. She went back to hospice. She went to the nursing home. We headed up there. By the time we got there, she was now back at hospice. I walked in there with my dad. And she looked at us. And I got family members standing there. There was three of them there. And, you know, the family members said, hi, hi, how's everyone doing? And um, dad went to one side and I went to the other. And as I got over to that side, one of my aunts was standing there. She goes, how you doing? I was like, all right. She goes, she ain't going to know who you are. She don't remember nobody. I was like, that's okay. I still want to kiss her. I kissed her on her cheek. And I said, Grandma, what's in your refrigerator? Her eyes turned like 50 cent pieces and said, Larry. Don't, don't tell me that they can't remember certain things because they do. Things will run in their minds for the rest of their lives and yours. I'm just, honey, I'm just talking. I want to be friends with people. and. I know, but you don't. I know, I shouldn't be crying, but you know something? There's nothing you wrong. There's cry. nothing wrong with a man crying. You can't make me cry. Well, don't cry. You know, you know how I feel. I know, but if you cry, I'm going to start crying. Okay, well, you want to shut my door? Will that help you? I doubt it. I doubt it, too. Sorry, people. I think that's the second time today. You know, but like I said, them are precious people in your lives. You know, like I told people before Alice died, you know, for at least a week, two weeks before she died, she kept telling me, Larry, my dad and my brother came and seen me. They said it's time to come home. And I kept saying, what do you mean, Alice? You can't go home, honey. You're already home. You know something, honestly? Right now, to this day, and I'll believe this for the rest of my life, her dad and her brother came to her and said it was time to come home. Not this earth home. Not the world's home. Home. And I really do believe that. Don't know if y'all know a story or if you believe a story. My great-grandfather, Guilford, her father, lived to 100 years old. He almost made it to 101. 30 years before he died, he predicted his death. Him and a couple of friends sat down and talked about it. And he told his friend that he was going to die on this date and this time. His friend wrote that down. 30 years or whatever that, that day, that time, my great-grandfather died. Me personally, that's a man close to the Lord. When the Lord or Jesus Christ one comes down to you and tells you the day you are going to die. Yes. And this is a man who I heard is growing up as a little kid by his family members, by Miss Alice herself. That her dad was a very God's gifted man. That if a church was open, he was there. If there was a family in need and he can help them, he was there. He would do anything to help anybody. And I think that personally, I think that's what made him part of God's flock, as I call it, the flock. People, I can't believe I've been on here this long and we've been jumping up and down. The highest I've been is 25. The lowest I've been is 8, so... I'm doing pretty good. I'm Larry. I'm uh, James Vaughn Hilton's worst troll. 
also known as his cousin. Got any questions? Anything you need to know about him? I can answer anything, but anything not to do with the death, the area of his mother's death. I cannot talk about anything in that category, but I can talk about everything else and what I know. And I'm also here to let you all know that pretty soon, as soon as everything's all over with, the movie will be coming out. You know, I'm just wondering if uh, it's going to come out here on our YouTube so all our friends can see. The four or five people that are the main characters will be all together to watch it. And hopefully we can get some people to play it maybe someday. They can play them parts. But I don't know who would want to play Vaughn Hilton. Batch, to me, it's not sweet. It's just the truth. I love my grandmother to death. And I personally think when they become old timers or dementias, there are certain things they do remember. And if you bring it up to them and help them remember. I mean, my grandmother, there was only two things that that woman ever knew about me. One, I just mentioned to you guys, I love to eat. I am a growing boy. I weigh 325 pounds. I have always been a big boy. I like to eat. When I was six years old, my grandmother chased me all the way until I turned to today. I would do it if she was still alive with tomatoes in her garden. I would start stealing her tomatoes. One time she caught me. And she's like, you got, I, I, I didn't even see you out here until right at the end. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I know what to do now. You know, I know how to get away with it. But I made another mistake. The next time I went over there, I went through the house and grabbed the salt shaker. She busted me. She said, my salt shaker was gone. I knew you were in my tomatoes. Boy, oh boy, did I get it. She used to chase me through that tomato garden all the time, buddy. Then there was one year we used to tease, teach, tease her a lot where my grandmother had a big old oak tree in the backyard of her house and she has three squirrels living in it. And this is a family who's grown up on eating squirrel. Come on now, we got three in our backyard. We get hungry, we can eat. You don't know how bad I kept telling her, Grandma, I'm going to kill them squirrel. That's dinner. I'm killing them squirrel. That's dinner. You better leave my pet squirrels alone. Them are my squirrels. Boy, we had a lot of fun out there. I loved being at Grandma's house. She was a great person. I loved Miss Alice, though. She was definitely a good person. No matter what James thinks about his own mother, you know, everybody can say, that, like I said, everyone's different how they think. To me, James's mother was a great woman. She, I think she worked her butt off her whole life, did what she had to to survive until the dying days that she went. Did she make mistakes? Yes, we all do. Just like I said, we're all different. We all make mistakes. Her biggest mistake was little Irvy and not putting him over his knee when he needed to be put over the knee. Period. That's where it started.
So I got 12 people in here. I've been going down. I don't want to go down, people. I want to go up. Maybe we need to find something else to talk about. Anybody want to know anything else about me? Anybody want to know anything about Vaughn? Does not have to do with anything around the death dates, of course. I mean, yeah, I do hear stories. Most of the stories I've been hearing about him is coming from you guys. I do hear it a little bit from Jim, because like I said, Jim grew up in Hamilton, Ohio, too. So Jim was around when little Irvy was born. Tell you the truth, um, I think little Jim would have been about 10 years old when Irvy was born. And so that means uh, Glenda would probably been somewhere around the 10-year-old age gap. So yeah, uh, Jim and Glenda probably hung out together. They probably went to the same schools. You don't know. You know, by the time James turns 16, Uncle Little Jim's in the army. Probably coming out of the army. That'd make him almost 26. I don't know. I just think of how it's so funny that he tries to blame Uncle Little Jim for all the problems and all the stuff. Uncle Little Jim shouldn't have moved down here. Uncle Little Jim has enough rights to be down here just as he does. Uncle Jim's family members come from this side of the country themselves. So we can move anywhere we want. You know, he wanted to move down here, be close to Alice because he loved Alice. He respected Alice and thought it was a beautiful piece of property and country. It's peace and quiet. You know, you ain't got too many neighbors. You got a little bit of land you can hunt on. You can fish on if you got a pond. I mean, there are good points about living out in the country. But then there's good points about living in the city. You just can't have both at the same time. So you got to choose one or the other. I like the choices on all the restaurants when it's a big city. I like the choices on the grocery stores and the k -marks and all that stuff, even though there ain't a k -marks left, I don't think. I think Walmarts took everybody out. What's Vaughn's real story? Well, I mean, I really don't know. I mean, I know when he was born, he had to be born anywhere between 63 and, oh, I think he said 64. Because I think he said it was October 24th of 64, because I'm a March 65. I think he's like five months older than me. You know, I knew he grew up in Hamilton. I know he's Aunt Alice's son, their only kid. He says he went to the Army. He only did nine months. He was supposed to be a secret service guy. He's a 25-degree black belt, Kung Fu and Chudo. Um, two years of, uh, uh, real estate law. Boy, that's, that's a smart man there. You women need to jump on him. That's a good catch for you. As a man in the fishing world. We call that carp. 
we usually throw them up on the top of the bank and let them die of uh, oxygen or whatever they do because they're no good. You guys need a, a trout or a salmon or something. You need a nice fish. Because every woman deserves a nice fish. Every man deserves one too. You know, and I think there's somebody out there for everybody. You just got to keep looking if you ain't found them yet. You know, my wife asked me, would I move on and find me another woman after she passes? Probably not. I mean, I would maybe I might find me a girlfriend, but would I ever marry again? Probably not. I mean, be honest, I mean, I'm old. I ain't got long to live. Why would you want to marry me? I mean... Y'all want to crawl in bed and have sex? Let's get it on. I mean, I ain't no good no more. I'm an old man. You might be able to get it up once or twice. I mean, it ain't like it gets up and says, let's ride all night. Honestly, I just like to be truthful, positive. Yep, you got it right, baby Jane. I mean, you just got to live life the way it is. That's period. That's how it goes. Take life what it brings you. You know, I wanted to become a farmer. I became a farmer. I sucked. I'm not going to lie. I'll repeat it. I wanted to be a farmer and I sucked. I hate getting up early in the morning and feeding them chickens and grabbing all them eggs and bringing them in and washing them, making sure they got water, going out to the garden and pulling all the weeds that are coming around all your corn and your Brussels sprouts and your carrots and your potatoes. And that's a lot of work. Maybe if I was rich and I did it the right way where it's all in flower beds and had the ground completely tore up and had topsoil brought in, maybe a little better. But where I tried it, oh man, it was a killer. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard work, Jane. At least in my book it was. Then I literally had to go out and buy another refrigerator just to keep eggs in. We had 50 chickens. When they all lay in, that's 50 eggs a day. My family couldn't eat that many eggs. We're lucky if we can go through 10. Well, with me, the wife, and the two boys, we can probably eat 10 a day. So that still leaves me 40 eggs a day. And if I don't sell them, get rid of them, beg my neighbors to take them, then the next day, I'm going to have 90 instead of 40. I think we ended up having somewhere 20 or 30 cartons of eggs. And I literally was begging my neighbors and friends and everybody's house I went to. I would drop eggs off here. Please take them before they go bad. I mean, I love the chickens. They were pretty and all, but we tried it too big. I told the wife I wouldn't mind trying chickens again. But right now, I think we ought to wait because, like I said, I want to, if my kids, if my son graduates from high school and he meets the right girl and him and her get a job together or whatever, whatever, and get their own place, me and my wife's jumping in that vehicle, 
grabbing that little trailer and hooking it up to that bumper back there, and we're gone. I will drive and take every penny in my pocket and drive as far away as I can. And when I get halfway empty in my pocket, then I'll turn around and come back home and wait for my next check. And then I will pay my bills. And guess what? I'm gone again. I'm headed somewhere else. I'm going to travel. I want to get out and enjoy the world. I'd love to go see the Grand Canyon. I'd love to go see Mount Rushmore. I'd like to go see the Statue of Liberty. Like to go see the statue they did of the Indians that's like Mount Rushmore, that's supposed to be like five miles away from it. Maybe go see the California coast. My wife, she said she wanted to go to Jamaica. My trip would be Hawaii, so, I mean, Jamaica sounds good, too, but, I mean, Hawaii sounds a little better to me, but I'm happy where I'm at. Chickens are great. My family comes from Johnson County. My grandmother was, your grandmother was a Hilton. No relation to Vaughn. Are you sure? And my maiden name is Bel Air. Gosaria is among that. That expensive. Okay, well, see, I don't know nothing about Costa Rica. I just like them hula dancers, so I say Hawaii. Um, baby Jane, these Hiltons didn't come from Ohio, neither. They came from Kentucky, sorry. They are originally from here. Here and before here, it was Virginia. It's just like the frost. Before here, it was Virginia. Or no. It was Tennessee, but it was really Virginia. It was the years that they were cutting the, what would you call them, the states out still? Where Kentucky became Kentucky and they, Virginia became a smaller state. I don't know, baby Jane, if you uh, talk to Todd, any Todd would kind of know about that. Because he did do some ancestries on his Hilton side of the family. I've never went that far. I don't look up the Hilton side. I kind of just stuck on to the Frost side and my mother's last name, which is Varlin, and they come from Tennessee. Yeah, Father Jay might know too, yes. Yes, that's the Todd. Yes, yeah, we have no Bellairs in my family yet. But, you know, like I said, it just matters, baby Jane. How far back on the tree you really want to go? I can have my wife grab my red book right now and I can show you 54 subnames, they call it, that would have all been my grandmother. And that's just on my dad's side. You know, I am a frost. And Varlin is what my mom's last name was. Let's yeah, see, you married a Valer. Yeah. 
Yeah, see, I don't know. I don't, like I said, I have nothing on the hill, and so I couldn't tell you. That's something you would talk to Father Jay and Todd about. They would probably know that. Because, like I said, they looked it up. They were trying to get Vaughn on that property where Vaughn was saying that he has no Cherokee. Or Vaughn says he's got 65% Cherokee Indian. And they were proving him wrong. And they don't have to prove him wrong. I could tell them he is wrong. I know. I run the same bloodline. Is there any Cherokee bloodline in our bloods? No, it's too far back. Indians are pretty well all wiped out already. There are a few thousand maybe sitting over there across the United States. Oklahoma, wherever, Arizona, wherever they've got them nowadays. Yeah, half the eastern Kentucky does, exactly. Because a lot of them white men were marrying Indian women. Because the white men already murdered their husbands, so they figured they'd marry them and help them take care of their kids. No, he is... If he is a one point... Or if he's 175 Indian, go ahead and put a point zero zero in front of it. Then you're probably getting what he is. The bloodline's been checked already, and there's no way. Because when I find out they can go to college for free that way, I promise I checked. <laughs> There's the bloodline does not show no Indian bloodline. Yeah, there ain't no way 175 Indian. Like I said, I'm, the bloodline's been checked. There's not that much Indian. Is there any? Probably not. Was any of his ancestors Indian Cherokee? Yes, they were. That I can tell you. He does have Indian heritage bloodline. But that don't mean he's got Indian in him. That bloodline's been mixed so many times. He says that he's got it on both sides. Is it from the same tribe? Or is it two different tribes, James? You see what I'm saying? He don't know none of them questions. I ain't even looked that up yet. If they were both from Indian tribes or part of an Indian tribe, were they together? Are they the same tribes? Or were they the tribes next to each other? You're right, James. Everybody don't know about you. And we're all just taking guesses. But when you're out there talking and posting your videos and talking, you're lying to everybody so they don't know what to believe if you're lying or telling the truth. Because every time you talk about something, they find out it's a lie. Think about it. Every time you say something, it's usually a lie. 99.999% is a lie. You said I was going to get in trouble for posting Facebook about your mom. You were mad at me for your posting about your mom on Facebook. 
You don't think the family has the rights to know? I do. I don't care what you think. She's my aunt. She might have been your mother. But you didn't love her. You didn't love her like me or little Jim or Ronnie Ray or any other person. Even though you were her son, you were also her worst enemy. She paid your bills. You were taking money out of her mouth every single fucking day. That you lived under her roof without giving her any money for anything. She asked you for a chocolate pie once, James. You told her to get her money from me. You're not buying her a chocolate pie with your food stamps. When you got a thousand dollars on them. You know, don't forget, James, your mom had old timers and dementia. I don't. I ain't never going to forget you, buddy. That I can promise. I will never forget you. And you're still trying to get me in trouble for the video. Every video that you've put out on YouTube, it is all broadcasted in the movies. We, we're even talking about a part two movie already. The first one ain't even released. And number two is about ready to begin being production mode. That's how much stuff we got, James. As soon as I'm clear to release it, it's gone. And you know what I mean. Remember, them cameras been there two and a half years. They were there before I even took power of attorney over. Remember? You can't even remember who put the cameras in. You've already blamed me twice, so that's fine. Because we know who put them in. And the person that did would automatically say she did do it. Because your mother ordered it. Your mother wanted them. Because she thought somebody was walking in her house at night. She thought people was stealing her underwear. And you said once before someone stole some food. The doctor told me she wasn't allowed to cook. You ain't there at 8 o'clock in the morning when she's up cooking breakfast. How do you know if she's going to cook an egg? You don't. So I got a camera there that shows me when she's cooking an egg and when she's not. I got a phone camera there where I can hear her talking on the phone and who she's talking to. And making sure she's not giving out information that she shouldn't be giving out. Like her social security numbers. I'm there making sure she's eating every day. I'm watching her eat her lunch and breakfasts and dinners. Them cameras saved her a couple of times. I was probably 15 minutes before that, before I turned that camera on. I wish I would have woke up 15 minutes earlier if that's when she fell. Because I don't know when she fell. All I know is I got a little bit and that was it. I can't say what happens. Because if I can prove anything, promise it all would be, be proven real quick. But everything I do have, it was, it was gave to the right people, people. I mean, I'm not talking, it wasn't given to no trolls. It was given to the right people. And I think most of you know who I'm talking about. They usually sit up on a big old bench. Wearing a black robe. Yep, that's the one.
James likes to send videos and talk stuff about me and what I post and what I do. That's none of his business. Just like he can post and say and do anything on his show, that's his business. One of these days, he's going to say something wrong. And I'm not going to think about it. And then one of these days, we're going to run into each other at that family dollar. Because I need a loaf of bread and he's getting his weekly food. And it might not be nice. I mean, because I personally, I mean, no matter if I get my butt whooped or not. I don't like people talking about me. You ain't gonna go out here and say that I'm stealing hundreds and thousands of dollars from you. You know, him saying it to maybe one of the neighbors, whatever. Him saying it to a million people, that's a big difference in my book. Because half of you will think I'm a, old, a man robbing old people. A man treating his great aunt like she's a piece of garbage. That would never happen. My family is the most important thing in my life, especially when they're the elderly women. And the men, of course. I mean, without them, I wouldn't be around. I mean, mm -hmm. them are the 90s and 80s and 70-year-old so people. I got an aunt right now who was just in the hospital. She's coming up on her 80 years, and she had some problems with her heart. I was scared to death we were going to lose her, but she pulled through it for now. So I talked to her the other day. Stay, take your time, girl. Relax, enjoy life. Don't push yourself. Just, you know, exercise. Keep trying to get up and do things, but don't push yourself. I know. I've been through it. Two heart attacks and an open heart surgery. I've been through it. They literally almost had to take my heart completely out of my body. I'm alive and that was my main thing to do. He says I should have a good 20, 25 more years on life if everything works okay. You know, I'm taking it easy. I do what I got to do. Well, should I call this a night? Coming up on the seven hour mark. Eleven people. I enjoy you eleven people being in here. Baby Jane, he's been suing you for 11 years. You know it goes up 100000 every year, right, Baby Jane? Don't worry about it. He's trying with me first because I live the closest. Well, really, I ain't the closest. Little Jim is, but... He's trying to get me first because I'm the man who has a fat finger and pushed the wrong button. And that's what my public defender knows, and I've told her. And if they want to see my fat fingers, I'll be glad to show them my fat fingers. What are they going to do? Make my fat finger pay for it and cut it off? He only loses internet is if his electricity gets, or, well, he's got to have electricity and he's got to keep his phone on. He ain't got enough for both, so he's going to end up losing something pretty soon. Matters how much money he had put away, guys. I think... Personally, I really think that he didn't go through all that money real quick that he stole from his mother before I took over, to be honest. And a lot of people, a lot of you so 
called Tro said that he blew through it all like that, like crazy. You know, I believe he did blow a lot, but thirty thousand dollars is a lot of money to go through in a couple of months. I think he had some of it put away, and that is the only reason that his phone is still on. Somebody's paying his phone bill. It ain't Jim and Millie. It ain't the Alice Estates paying it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, he did spend a lot on uh, lottery tickets. I don't know about planes and stickers, but I know he spent a lot on lottery tickets. I went into the carryout after he did one day. And I was talking to the girl that runs the register. Oh, yeah, your cousin was just in here. Yeah, how's he doing? Which cousin? Oh, of course, Irvy. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, he's around here somewhere. Yeah, he bought $600 worth of lottery tickets today. I was like, boy, it must be nice to be rich. Paid for my cigarettes and went out the door. And personally, like I said, it must be nice to blow $600 on lottery tickets. From our, from our little gas station we have here in... Uh, Onita there, Toby. And people, there's nothing wrong with my camera. And if I'm not answering you, then uh, I'm moving the camera and blocking you out for a minute. Well, you guys don't talk much, do you? That's why I was hoping I'd get someone to at least join in here with me. Where I can see your face better than what I can see all these little pictures on the side. And help me figure out some kind of conversation we can talk about. Besides Stinky. Even though Stinky is a good topic to bring up, but I don't know about all you guys, but I'm getting tired of talking about Stinky. And my wife says she don't like me talking about him, but you know, I try to do what I can do. I try to please her, and I try to please myself, too. Don't put me wrong there, Toby. Uh, it's not, there ain't no problem with buying lottery tickets. I believe in buying lottery tickets, too. But I don't spend no $600 on no lottery tickets. I think the most I've ever spent on one lottery, lottery ticket is like 10 bucks. And I usually don't play it until after it hits over the $100 million. Because if I hit 
I want to be rich. You hit it for five, ten million, you ain't going to have no money left by the time you get your money. Toby, I would say that he stole it from his mom's bank account or from up under her mattress. Or it could also have been Jerry's money because he was also getting Jerry's Social Security check. That was a couple years ago when he did that. He ain't did that recently. You all know I'm kind of new at all this. How do you invite people to come in on your chat? Any of you guys know how to do that? Them are the questions I need to be asking. The more you guys teach me, the better I get. Looks like it's just me and you, Todd. Seeing 10 people, there's like 10 of them watching or listening to us, but they're doing other things, which is cool. That works for me. Yeah, I did see that, Jay. He spent two million on gasoline for children's services because they had his kid all the way across the whole Kentucky state. And personally, besides Manchester, Kentucky, the only place I've ever known him to go is Williamsburg, which is about a two hour drive from here. Yeah, I understand that, Jay. Uh, me, I'm not shy. I don't care what I look like. I know I'm ugly. I'm not here to impress nobody. I don't have to look good for nobody. I have a wife. I have a happy life. Happy wife, happy life. You know... A lot of times I'm sitting here, guys, and I'm, I'm watching, uh, you know, like, I got some girls that they buy pallet stuff from, like, Walmarts and dollar store and stuff. People return stuff. They don't want it or it's outdated and the stores don't want it. Instead of throwing it away, they throw it on a pallet and they auction it all off. Well, I've been buying stuff from them kind of people. Wouldn't believe some of the kind of deals I find. You know, some stuff's high, some stuff's cheap. And then, you know, sometimes you get them mad at you. 
I bought one time. I was watching it, and nobody was bidding on it, and no one bidding on it. She had it on there for a whole week. Nobody wanted it. She's like, first person that says $30 for it, I'll take it. I said, I'll give you $30 for it. Here, it is a seal a meal that you can plug into your house and seal any kind of food up you want in the seal packages. Or, it's also got a plug that you can plug it into your cigarette lighter in your truck or your car. So if you're fishing and you gut it and clean it there at the river, you throw the fish right in the seal and meal bags and you seal it right on the spot. Keep it fresh. I gave her $30. That night, once I got off there and I've already bought it, it belongs to me. I pick it up in the morning. I looked it up. I found it at two places. Cabela's. Bass Pro Shop, $289, brand new. The one I bought, $30, brand spanking new. Never even out of the plastic yet. How could I go wrong? Yes. Rest in peace, Queen Elizabeth II. The gold's always good. I like Coronas. Coronas are pretty good. Ain't been a long, long, long. I ain't had a Corona in over 30 years. Can't drink no more. Well, people, seven hours, three minutes. No Vaughn Hilton. No one's asking me any good questions that I might know or anything I might want to know. I mean, you guys are probably getting tired of watching me. I mean, I don't know if all you've been on here the whole time. I know a few's left. I know a few's came in. I see questions coming from people sometimes, and I answer them, and they leave, and I get new ones coming in. My email address? I don't know what my email address is to tell you the truth. I will have to yell for my 16 year old to come in here and do that and tell me how to do that. I got another seven hours hanging in there. Yeah, I mean, I ate dinner. I mean, I had three chicken fingers and four fries. I'm good. 
Doctor wanted to know why I'm losing weight. I told him I'm not eating much anymore. I'm doing like he said. Slow down. Quit being that big eater. Eat enough to survive. That's all I need. Man, I don't see too many people getting on here. Anybody else going live tonight? Anybody know anybody going live? Yes, I am sitting in my bedroom, yes. Laying in my bedroom to be exact. It's laying on my bed. I think my wife's got the dinosaur blanket hanging up. Someday we plan on changing it, but hey, it don't bother me what it is. Oh, Grumpy Lobster is live. Okay. Miss Parker's live too. So, I mean... You all want to watch her, that's fine. You want to watch him, that's great. I mean, I don't know if you guys usually watch them people. I usually watch both, so if I get off here, I'm going to go over to one of theirs and watch them. It matters what they're talking about. I mean, if I'm not interested in what they're talking about, then I'll go to the other one. And if it's neither one, then who knows? I might start another live. I don't know. I'm bored. What's there to do in life? Sit around and watch TV. Eat. Take my medicines every day. Wake up in the morning. Make sure my kid's ready for school. Funny thing is, he don't have to go anywhere anymore. Our road is washed so far out. The school bus won't even come down it. <coughs> so he is now going to be homeschooled for his whole senior year, it looks like. Grumpy must have email. I also have some more little barriers. Are you saying you like my beard or Grumpy's beard? Miss Parker's doing hacks. Some things on her chest. Oh, okay. Well, not interested in no chest. I want to see them. I got a wife. All I have to do is ask. Be a good boy. So, what are you guys? Are you guys all the Nates and haters out there? Or are you guys known as trolls? I see I got nine people on. I'm starting to drop them again. Is the town I'm near small? We have a private school which is Onita Baptist Institute, which probably houses about 100 kids that don't leave the property. We have a post office, 
We got a small elementary school. And we got a gas station that plays carry out. And last year, they finally built us a family dollar. I think if you look up Onita's population, it might come up like 43. But, you know, anything from the Onita Baptist Institute going that way on 11, all of that belongs to Manchester, even though the closest town to them is Onita. They're like sitting on that borderline thing. I mean, I think Onita only got three blocks, four blocks at the most. When the church gives away food, the line goes all the way around the, the whole town. So you live in a small town too, no? You know, something I didn't know is, you know, they got straight irons to help your hair stay straight. A friend of mine was telling me that. I never even knew that for men's beards. Because, you know, mine starts curling up and when it gets real long, I kind of want to straighten it out. I think if they straighten it out, I might have it up to the middle of my chest by now. Do I like photographs? It matters what they are of. Uh, love pictures of waterfalls. I love pictures of Grand Canyons. I love pictures, you know, of the stars. I love fireworks. They're the good, right pictures. I mean, yeah, I like pictures. Don't we all? Your town's called Photograph? Well, that I couldn't tell you. Hell's Biker Beard. No, I was thinking more like ZZ Top Beard. Remember, I, I grew up in them ZZ Top errors. And ACDC. And Ozzy. And Zeppelin. You know, there's another job I worked. Worked what they call the Toledo Sports Arena for a couple of years. Cleanup crew. After the concerts, after the hockey games and everything, you go in there and you sweep everything down, you mop everything down, and you go home. Good thing about it is you can go to any concert, any hockey game, anything you wanted to do. When you're employed there, you can go in there as soon as the game starts. I could not walk in there before the first song started, but once that band started singing i can automatically walk in there look at them say cleanup crew and go in there and watch the rest of the show
Oh, you want a picture of my town? Oh boy, oh boy, what a long day. What to do, what to do, do what to do. Not a thing. There ain't nothing to do. Never got it. It's Friday. Wrong station. Honey, you're walking talls on. Yeah, so personally, guys, I'm pretty good. I'm living. I'm surviving. Doing a lot better than Mr. Stinky is. I still have a wife. I still have a life. I still have my kids. You want snapshots around town or around my house? There are snapshots of town out there already. All you have to do is look them up. I'm in a group called Onita's, you know, community that's got a lot of pictures. You want pictures of my place? I got plenty of pictures on my row on Facebook. Maybe a picnic thing, you know. My picnic thing's going to Burger King and grabbing them and throwing them down my throat. I mean, yeah, there are some nice little parks around here, but, you know, if you don't eat your food when you buy it, it gets cold because all the way to the park, that's 12 miles, my food's cold. You know, for a while there, we, me and my cousin, we were doing that. I mean, we were making dinners and taking pictures of our dinners and everything. You know, that's like that Golden Corral that told me not to come back there. They're out of business now. Three years later, they're now out of business. I went in there last year. I know, I turned it to it. Even though wrestling's on. I turned it to... Uh, I know. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, I know you like walking tall, so... Remember, like I told them, and I always tell you, happy wife is a happy life. Yeah, but uh, happy... Happy wife can't always watch TV, buddy. Well, if the happy wife wants to sit down and watch it, she can. If the happy wife is out happy in somewhere else, she can do that too. That's all up to the happy wife. That's why the happy wife stays at the door, my Okay. Seven hours, 20 minutes. Should I make it an eight hour shift? An eight hour. What are you working? Feels like I'm working, honey. I'm doing an eight-hour shift, and I forgot to take lunch. <laughs> or maybe that's what that two-bite, three-bite thing was. Yeah. Uh, you know I don't eat much, so I'm I'm done with that one. You want to take it back out, baby? No, I'm not. If you want to. Well, no. Alex is wanting me to help him because so we can get the... Um, 
refrigerator circulating cold air between the refrigerator and the freezer. We got to clean all the, um, we almost got it all. The ice and stuff. It's like the freezer burnt in the freezer, in the fridge. So we're trying to clean it out. Okay, dear. So what is it now? Just me and you know? I see no has been posting everything. I don't see no one else posting. We're at 11. Yeah, love the sun. Love that sunshine. Oh, yeah, I see you're still here. I remember you say you would be listening. You were just at work. Don't tell my boy that. He loves them Legos. He spent his Christmas money two years ago all on Legos. Like a hundred and seventy something dollars. I'm just sitting here taking my pain medicine, talking to all these good folks out here. Oh, a Harry Potter Lego. Oh yeah, he would he would definitely get you. He likes Harry Potter. He's never missed an episode. Yes, he spent $170 on Legos. And I think he ended up building four or five some kind of robot things. And they all sit on his shelf right now. Yeah, I believe that. 3000 on them, I believe that. I probably got that 3000 in my train set. And that's just because I just got started again. I had it set a long time ago, but kids, you know, they get their hands on them. They don't last long. I learned if you're going to buy your kids something expensive, you better wait till they're old enough to know what it is and know how to take care of it. Bought the boys both $50 remote control cars. One had it for five minutes. The other one had it for two minutes. And then they both went in the trash. One got mad at it because it wouldn't turn his way or it didn't turn his way. And his brother beat him in a race. So he picked it up and threw it to the ground. And it just like the wheels fell off. The battery pack fell out. I mean, this ain't no 30-pound boy. This is 150-pound boy throwing it down. I forgot how the other one got broke, but yeah, they were both broke within five minutes. That was the quickest hundred dollars I've ever seen get blown away. Yeah, I exactly. I'd love to have one go all the way around the room. Yeah, I got uh, three trains sitting on a four by eight right now. Sheet of plywood. Been working on it for about six to seven years now. Putting little pieces together.
ever hit rich, that'd probably be something that I'd be spending a lot of money on. I'd have to have a building built just for the train set. Something like maybe a hundred by a hundred square foot. Just for the train. They're nice. I mean, there's something to do. Yeah, I'm a big boy. That's right. I'd like to have five or six trains going around at the same time. I wouldn't mind having the little remote control dumpsters and control some of the factories and stuff like that. Have a remote control for the forklift driver loading the things. Yeah, I'm talking big boy toys. These ain't little baby toys. You know, people talked about James getting them cars. I mean, them cars are cool. Them are nice. Some of them might be collectible now later in life. But when you ain't got the money to blow on it, then you don't blow your money on it. Because now you're going to be hurting. And if you can't figure out what to do with them, they're all going to be packed away for Jerry. Not him. Jerry. Because all of you have seen the video. They're Jerry's cars, not his. Yes, yes, exactly. I've seen a lot of good-looking train sets out there. I've went to a lot of the good train set pieces. You know, but... Everything's going higher and higher all the time. Things are starting to go high. I mean, think about it. I don't know about all you guys and how old you guys really are, but I'm like 57 years old. I can remember when the GTO came out. You know what I mean? A $210 car worth a quarter of a million dollars right now. $139 Corvette 1963 split window sells for a million dollars last year. Can you imagine buying a 1963 split window Corvette brand new in the assembly line covering it up for its whole entire life? It's a $2 million car. And here it was only worth $139 when it was brand new. Some things go up in prices. Some things don't. Some things are worthless. Some things ain't. I save aluminum cans. Everyone's like, oh, when are you going to turn them in? I'm going to turn them in when the price goes up. I probably got about 300 pounds of aluminum cans. I don't know, but I've always got into trains. I've always liked trains. I like knives. I like guns. Of course, I'm a hunter. I like to hunt. Well, I really don't like to hunt. I don't like to clean. I don't like to gut and do all that. The cooking, I don't mind, but I sure love the eating. Back to the same conversation I said all oh, seven hours and 30 minutes ago. I love to eat. That's all it is. You know, Vaughn is five months, six months older than me. So, and like I said, we only met 15 years ago. So. Yep, them Studebakers were some nice cars. 
lot of people liked them. A lot of people bought them up. A lot of them got turned into hot rods. I always thought them ones with the, uh, the what do they call that? A rumble seat in the back? Where you're, the boy and girl can sit or something outside the car and not listening to the adults talk? I thought that was kind of cool. I think they call it a rumble seat. I don't know. Yeah, mint condition, original engine, worth some money, girl. Worth some money. People like them old cars. Them are cars that will never be built again. If they got the original engine and they're still running and they're in good shape, they're worth a penny. A good penny. Hell, pennies are worth money now. If you find the right one. Went to the store one day. My wife got a 1953 half dollar in her change. She seen it was, you know, she knew it was bigger than a quarter. And she was like, I'll buy that too. So she brought it. It's worth $7.50. So what? She made $7 if she wants to sell it. $7 more than what she had. She gave me a dirty look the other day. I had her get some lottery tickets. She spent $6 on lottery. And 112. So we did good. Got our money back and a little bit on the side. Helped me play again. Yeah, there's a lot of coins that are worth a little bit of money. You talking about the aluminum cans? No. No, I'm going to hold them till they're about 50 cents a pound. And then I'll take my aluminum cans in. Yes, they're pop cans. 99.9% .9 Dr. Pepper. There might be a few Pepsis in there. <clears throat> and if you're talking about coins, no, you cannot take the coins to the scrapyard. That definitely is prison time. Ten people. Not doing too bad. Seven hours and 35 minutes so far. I wonder if Vaughn ever got on yet. Anyone seen Vaughn on? Any of y'all friends with him? Ha ha. Getting tired, Larry? A little bit. I got up at 6.30 this morning. Sat around a little bit, did it a little bit, 
Come back here, took my pills, had a couple cups of hot cocoa, had a couple pops, took my meds, smoked my painkiller halfway. Yeah, I'm feeling okay. Little tired. My wrestling's on WWE. It's the bloodline right now, which, you know, I kind of wish they would start losing some of them belts. I don't think they should have them all. They're not all that. And it seems most of the time Rain holds it, they cheated. No way for what? That I'm getting tired? Yeah. I shouldn't be. Or are you talking about the WWE? You think they should keep them belts? Is he on Odyssey? I don't know. I think that's where he's been hanging out for a while. It's hard to tell him where he's at. He's going to go anywhere that he ain't been kicked off yet. I think John got kicked out of Odyssey, though. What domain is for sale? Well, you know, he does have the truck. He could always go to McDonald's and do it on the telephone. That would be about the only time. I mean, pretty soon, like I said, he's going to run out of money. I mean... I I know he ain't got that much put away. He'll be selling them cars, and I mean, he sold all the guns. He sold her tractor. If he steals her lawnmower, he's going to go to jail. He breaks into her house, he will go to jail. Mother or no mother. That ain't his property it belongs to his kids and he is not in the custody of his kids so he has no control of it i hope he's watching i really do i hope he's been watching the whole time i hope he was the first one on here and seen this I hope he's recording it thinking he's going to give it to the judge. Go ahead. Remember what she said. Remember, you were there on the screen. I was there in person. I was looking her eye to eye, person to person, face to face. I don't hide behind a screen, James. Yeah, he's definitely a weasel. Yeah, he said they stole the guns. But he's got all them cameras up there. But his cameras just didn't happen to be working the days his guns come up missing. And I have a person that anytime he wants to argue about it, I got a person that will go live. And if it comes down to going to the courtroom about it, they will go to the courtroom with me. And tell me, and who bought the guns? 
because they were there when the people bought the guns. James sold them and said that the family stole them. Yeah, I wish Ron was here. I wish he'd come in here and say hi to me. Same thing with J-Dub. You're welcome to come in here, J-Dub. You see me out there. You see the name of the, this little get-together. It's got your best friend's name on it. Come and see. See if it's him or not. Chump. And that third person that hangs there with Vaughn, I don't know if you're Vaughn's side, my side, your side, whoever's side, I don't care. You ain't said nothing bad about me. You ain't said nothing bad, too much bad about the Frost that I've heard. So I, I don't, yeah, that's it, Solar Marshall. You ain't, I ain't heard you say nothing bad about me or the Frost, so. I won't have nothing bad to say about you. And that's how we leave that. You know, sometimes I think you're working with me because there's things I want to hear him say. And then there's sometimes I think you're working against me because there's some things that's going to put me into a la-la land to go over there and stomp on him. So, I mean, well... Everybody has their opinions. You might think he is. Me personally, I think he's playing Vaughn. Oh, I'm sorry. He's playing Stinky. Is he going to eat these later on? Or? Maybe I will. Maybe later tonight, something to snack on. Unless our son wants them. You did hear me, right? Because if he's hungry, feed him. Yeah, and that could be it too. You are definitely right. Yeah, well, you know, and I, I agree with that, that they both do wind him up. But J-Dubs is kind of going over the line a little bit. And crossing the line can, you know, get him in trouble. You know, there was a video out there that I was watching that he was trying to call me out. Sorry, J-Dubs, I'm in no good of a shape right now. I'm an old man. You really think you want to fight me? You want to fight somebody? I do have a brother who lives in New York City. So we'll meet you anywhere you want to meet. He is a 35-year-old man, standing six foot two, about 250 to 260 pounds. Long brown hair. You know he's a hippie and he's my brother when you see him. But one verbal vice. You show up. Only one of you is leaving. The other one might be leaving in the ambulance. My brothers don't play. He won't kill him. He won't hurt him that bad. But he, he will know he was in a fight. He will have to go to the hospital. Oh, 
you know, I don't, I ain't a violent person. I am a 57, getting turned 58 year old man. I've settled down from fighting. I don't want to fight with nobody. Peace on the world is what I would like to have. But it don't happen that way. Everybody has their opinions. Everybody has their sayings. Everybody has their beliefs. And they can say whatever they please. But when you bring someone else's name in on your beliefs or your lies or whatever, you better be able to prove it. Because then that person is going to come after you. That's like Mr. Stinky talking, I stealing money. Jim stole money. Ronnie and Marsha. Marsha taught his kids how to write, I want food with dog shit or human shit on their bedroom walls. I mean, my family's not that sick. I'm sorry to tell him. I know the family that good. My family's not that sick. People who teach their kids to play in their shit and write on the walls, I'm hungry. There's something wrong with the parents. Sorry to say it because it is my blood relation. There is something wrong with one or both parents. When a kid can write on the wall, I'm hungry in their own shit. You all know he locks them up in the bedrooms too, right? That way they can't get out of their room and walk into his room and see what he's doing. He says he locked them in the bedroom for they didn't go outside and get into the pond and drowned. Like he can't hear the doors open. His horses are making too much noise. He can't hear the front door or the back door open. Put an alarm on it then. That's what he's got outside cameras for. Why ain't they watching any of the kids go outside? A lot of things don't make sense with that boy. Stinky boy. Secular opinions got a thing out there. Drain like Alice. If I could drain like Alice, I would. Personally, I don't think Lake Alice will ever be drained. And I don't think you could ever drain like Alice. Because it has eight live streams going in it. And as fast as you let the water out, it's going to come right back in. That is the reason why it only went as deep as it went. If it would have been up to the person that put the pond there, the pond probably would have went anywhere from 6 to 10 foot deeper. Yes, I know. We don't have to drain it no more. I mean, you could probably put a magnet in there on a bobber and make it go around the pond and uh, pick up anything that's metal under there. Exactly. It's just beer money. Are there fish in Lake Alice? The last time I fished up there, yes. There was bluegill and catfish. Chan or blue cat. So, somebody told me that somebody's caught all the catfish out. I know there was bluegill up there last year. 
because my cousin Joe and his wife and two kids went up there and fished for bluegill. Because his girls are only like five and six. And he was teaching them how to fish for bluegill. I don't think he has any more secrets, Jay. All his secrets are out. I helped that out. And I think that's why I'm going to the number one troll. Because I know a lot about him. And I've only known him for 15 years. I mean, I just get tired of the boy running his mouth and saying, I did this and I did that. You know, no, I, I no, you're going to make me laugh about that. I was always wondering that myself. And, you know, I even brought that to his mother's attention. I really was asking myself and even his own mother the same question. Because there ain't nobody that comes over to her house her size. They fall off my wife. They fall off Jennifer. They fall off Ron's wife. Marsha definitely couldn't wear them. Marsha, she could put both legs in one leg. I mean, there wasn't nobody her size, so... I don't understand how they disappeared. Only thing I can think of is Alice was putting them away or maybe she peed them once and threw them away and don't remember it. Old timers and dementia, who knows? I never seen her throw them away, but I know I bought over 36 pair in three months. So you figure it out. Yeah. Which one? What? It's got black hickeys around the top. It's Th on the bottom floor. Throw it away. All right. Don't look good. Throw it away. There's two of these in the fridge on top shelf by the eggs. One piece. They any good? I don't know. If they're not open, they're still good. They should be good. That's my pumpkin spice for the uh, pumpkin Buckeyes this month. Yeah, you all hear that? We're going to make pumpkin Buckeyes this month for next month's Halloween. I got the pumpkin flavored butter. And instead of using regular butter, I'm going to use the pumpkin butter. To make the famous Buckeyes. If you know what a Buckeye is. You all know what a Buckeye is? Peanut butter and sugar and a few other little ingredients. You're rolling in a ball. Put a toothpick in it. Dip it in the chocolate. To me, it's like a Reese cup in a ball shape. Yeah, who needs a quick fix? Quick beat up. Anybody up for streaking? No, I'm good for that. Uh, what is that? Is Ma's undies? Oh, ha, ha, ha. Caught it now, guys. Yeah, I don't know, guys. That, that was kind of weird when she started missing all them underwear. That was real weird to me. But I'm going to tell you. She says she needs it. I went out and got it for her. I mean, when she went to buy girly stuff, when she went back there to have her, 
exams done by her doctor. No, I did not go with her. I'm not going to lie to nobody. I did not go in her doctor's office with her. My wife did. My wife is a woman. She can walk in there with her and watch the doctors do that. You know what I mean? I don't have to be there. I don't need to see no 90-year-old's breast or whatever. That's like James said that I had three cameras in her house. I got one in her bedroom, too. I should have seen her fall. Sorry, James. There is not a camera in your mom's bedroom. And there was never a camera in your mom's bedroom. And there better never ever been a camera in your mom's bedroom. Because whoever would do that, I will make sure charges are filed. As a pervert. When any man, woman, or anybody can watch a 90-year-old woman undress and dress, you're a pervert. Period. So, no, I didn't have a camera in your mama's bedroom. Are you lagging now? And what was that, an order, ordery? Ain't that a nurse's assistant ordery? Or is that just a bedpan cleaner? Because that's what I heard he was, was a bedpan cleaner. If he, I've never known for a 92-year-old woman to lay on the floor. I think she fell and she grabbed her blanket to help herself try to get up and couldn't get up and her blanket and pillow and all came down to the floor with her. Be honest, Jay, a penny a piece. I gave each one of them a penny. Brand new one. 2022. And that's also what Secular Opinion got. Miss Parker got it. Red Lobster got it. They all got it. They all got a brand spanking new 2022 penny right out of the U.S. Mint. That is their pay. No, we all know what their pay is. Make him suffer. Make him try to quit lying. Make him try to become a man instead of being a little boy trying to live up under mommy's shirt tail. Well, he can't live under mommy's shirt tail no more because mommy's gone. And pretty soon, all the money and properties and everything else will be gone. So, it's all up to him. It's all up to the courts. They're taking care of it. I'm, the only thing I got to do with it now is I give my $300 a month to Jim and Millie at the moment. And Jim and Millie goes down to the bank and they deposit all the rent money they get and they put it in that trust fund. The lawyer's son, James Vaughn Hilton, is $250 in a month check every single month and he will get it until the day they all turn 21. Once they are all 21 years of age, they're going to take all the money out of the bank account. And when James goes and says, where's my 250? His three kids are going to say, well, dad, that's our money. We took our money back. You have no more money. Sorry about your luck. Yes, 60 years old, and he's now learning how to survive on his own.
And I started surviving on my own at 16. I went to ninth grade repeat. So it's my second year in the ninth grade. I went one day. The next day I walked in there, handed the teacher a note that says that it gave me permission to quit school and go to work full time. And that's what I did. Jay, they do take him serious on certain stuff. But the more he talks, the more he gets himself in trouble. And that's literally why my lawyer told me to stay quiet. Do not take the stand at all. Just let it go. He's already criminalized himself. He already says he knew the cameras were there. So he shouldn't have been rapping and raving because he knows that Larry's watching the cameras. That is my job is to protect his mother from any and all, including her son, if I thought she was in danger. If he would have smacked her, I would have called the police. If he would have pushed her down, I would have called the police. Anything. Them cameras are there for my purpose, to make sure that woman stayed safe to the day she passed on. And guess what? She did. I did my job. When I get to the pearly gates. I know Miss Alice Hilton. Will be standing at the gates. Waiting for me. With open arms. And I know. That God and Jesus. Are going to be standing there with me. And they're going to let me walk inside them gates. Have I been perfect? No. I'm not perfect. No man is. But I don't make no big sins. I don't do no bad. Not nothing to keep me from going into heaven. Sure, I drunk a little alcohol. Sure, I smoke a little painkillers. I ain't out killing people. I ain't out there worshiping no other gods. I ain't out there cheating on my wife and you know beating on my wife I'm not out there respect, disrespecting my family help your neighbors if you can and that's what I do OBI gives a lot of food away that's that private school that we have here a lot of people donate food to them so the kids won't eat it all or their kids will be gone for breaks and they have to get rid of it. So before it expires, they put it out. I'll go over there and fill up my whole pickup truck and I'll drive around everybody. I know that it ain't got a vehicle and drop them off some. That way the whole, the whole area gets it. You know, I don't think it should be just for the rich. The poor need it, too. If they ain't got a car, it's hard for them to get up there and get it. So I grab it and I take it to them. The last time we helped them, I helped 10 families. The last time they gave food out, I got a truck, two truckloads, and I helped 10 families out with laundry soap, dish soap. Potato chips, chocolate donuts. Um, there was all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's been a lot. No, we usually have a church that does it once a month. And OBI sometimes does it twice a week. It matters how much stuff they have. Sometimes they'll go three, four months not doing it at all. And then there's been months that they'll have it twice a week for the whole month. Some stuff right at the expired date. And then there's some stuff that don't even have expired dates. And then there's the stuff that is getting close to expiring. But when you see what it is and it's something that you guys eat a lot. They don't last to the expired date anyways. 
our donuts. They had two weeks before expired. They went through like 50 packs of donuts within two weeks. Some going to Alice and my boys and me, my wife. Plus, of course, we gave a couple hundred of them out to all the neighbors and the families that I say we try to help when we can. Yeah, everybody loves chocolate donuts. The only ones I had a hard time getting rid of were them coconut ones. Nobody really likes coconut around here. I do, but no one else does. Yeah, a lot of people around here don't like that coconut. I like the coconut. But I'm back to that same conversation. I love food. I'm more of a meat eater, though. I'd rather have the meat than anything. Getting a sharp pain in my back. I had to take a pain shot killer. I don't know about coconut curry, but I know they're c coconut donuts. <coughs> We've had all kinds. We've had the white powdered ones, the cinnamon ones, the chocolate ones. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of them I can think of. Sweet potato ones, yes, they were okay. We liked them too. I think the thing we got the most last time OBI was given away is we got a lot of bananas. I think we took like two and a half, three cases of bananas. And there's like 16 bushels in each crate. But we split it through like four different families. We kept a crate ourselves. We ate bananas for... A week and a half straight every day. The boy went ahead and cut a bunch of them up. And made some banana pudding. Come out real good. Yeah, bananas go bad fast. That's why we... Uh, well, most of the people that I know, them four families, a lot of them made banana bread. And once they make it, they throw that in the freezer and freeze it until they're ready for it and bring it out. It's like fresh that day. Aunt Millie, she freezes her bananas, so she says it keeps them nice and how soft or keeps them together while the bread's baking, she says. Something like that. I don't know. Hey, the motor people know how to cook. They've been cooking for so long. They know how to cook. I listen to when I'm there talking. Nothing against Millie. I've tried a lot of foods and everything I've tried has been really good. Love what they call the Robert Retford pie. If any of you have ever heard that, that is delicious. It's a chocolate pie. But they have a special name for it. And it is delicious. If you like chocolate. But I think 95% of the world likes chocolate. Eight hours, ten minutes. Anyone know what the record is on being alive? Facebook going to say, Larry, it's time for you to get off. Go to bed. I just I like to have fun. I like talking to people. I get bored sitting here doing nothing but staring at a TV and something that I've already seen. Wife's watching um, Walking Tall with the rock in it. 
Well, she was. She's out there talking to her brother right now, but. Uh, yeah, I'd like to drain Lake Alice for everybody, too, but I don't think it's possible, to be honest with everybody. You know, like I said, it's got eight live streams in it. I know. I was there when it, every time they took a scoop of dirt and mud out of it, it was filling right back up. As fast as he took it out, it took it back up. And I think the only way you'd ever be able to empty that completely is literally rip the whole dam apart. Take it all the way down to the ground and dig it out. Make a trench for the water to follow it. But then you're going to have a lot of big problems trying to put that dam back together. Within an hour, you're going to have to have like truckloads of sitting there waiting to be just straight dumped every second. I mean, because once you open that dam, it's going to be hard to close it back up. It's 2 in the morning here, south coast of England. Well, hello, England. 5 p.m. in Alaska. I am 9.13 p.m. Kentucky. On a Friday night. What are you going to try to do there, no? Said you're going to try something, but it probably won't work. I'm going to try something that probably won't work. Oh, it was going to send a receipt. A receipt for what? Did I send you a penny too? Did I send you a penny for being in the scandal with... Oh, to help me learn how to spell? Yeah, I could use a penny for that. Yeah, I couldn't give you a receipt for half the food I got in this house. During that flood thing, we well, see, you know, I know he wasn't going to starve through that. There was too many people around here that was literally giving food away. So I knew that wasn't going to happen. But I figure once they all pull out of here and that food ain't coming back in, it'll start getting tight on him again. I mean, that and them people literally saved him a week, week and a half, two weeks from almost worth of food. And they were probably even taking it to him. Bringing it right to the door, knocking on the door, leaving it to him. Here you go. Everything okay today? Have a good day. Got to go drop more food off somewhere else. You know, hey, I know. They did it to us. And I appreciated every bit of it. I mean, we ate it every day. So, 
Sometimes, hey, it's a meal, and sometimes there was some stuff that was pretty good. You know, speaking of cooking and what's good and what's not good, you know, people should try stuff before they say they don't like it. Because, you know, there are some things that you might think you don't like, but is good. Story one is, um, I had some friends of mine, her dad and both of her brothers are hunters and she don't like deer meat. I don't know who cooked it for her, her dad or her mom, but she said she's ate deer meat before and she does not like it. Well, I cooked deer meat one night. She come over and she come in the kitchen because we're all sitting in the kitchen getting ready to eat. She goes, that looks pretty good, Larry. I like, honey, you're welcome to try a piece if you want. Yeah, if you guys got enough, I'll try a little piece. She got her a plate, got her a fork, got her a piece of it. She ate it. That's pretty good, Larry. What is that? I said, that's Bambi. No, Larry, that ain't Bambi. I know what deer tastes like. You ain't fooling me. What is it? Bambi. Was it a baby deer? No, people. It wasn't a Bambi, Bambi. I was trying to explain to her that she was now eating deer. Cooks all cook different. Every cook is a different. A person is different. We all cook different. We all put love in certain things and some people can just throw food together and be able to eat it. Some people put flavor in it and make it taste good that makes you want it every time you go to that restaurant or every time you go to that person's house, you want them to make that. Because that is something that, you know, your, your body wants after you tried the first time. My wife, I was with her almost eight years. Before she would even let me cook cabbage or a Brussels sprout in our house. If I ate either one, it had to be at a restaurant somewhere. I finally told her that, hey, we're broke. We ain't got much money. Look, can I get these Brussels sprouts? Yeah, you can get them. I'll sit outside while you cook them. Okay. I started cooking them, getting them ready, letting them cook, letting them cook, letting them cook. Get them ready. I, she cooks the rest of the dinner. I throw them on my dinner plate. Honey, them kind of look good. Can I try one? Yeah, honey, you could try one. I mean, I'm not going to stop you, but you know what they are. They're Brussels sprouts, the ones that you don't like, you said. I know. Now, I can go to the store and buy four bags of Brussels sprouts. We will have Brussels sprouts for the next four days until all they're gone. So, I mean, it just matters what you use. Yes, I do. I did say that earlier. Pumpkin butter. And we are going to make Buckeyes with it for Halloween. I'm not going to give them out to kids. No, I am not putting pumpkin butter on my Brussels sprouts. But I do use butter, but not no pumpkin butter. I'm using the pumpkin butter in the Buckeyes. They're going to look like little pumpkins. <coughs> I figure if I put the butter inside the peanut butter to give it that creaminess that you need, I think it'll give it a good flavor. And I'm using good peanut butter. I'm using Jif. I ain't using no off-brand name stuff. I'm using Jeff. I'm not, like I said, I'm not giving them out, guys. I'm not going to give them to no one's kids or anything. So, I mean, the only people that will probably get them will be the family members. Like Millie and Jim and see if they think they're okay. And Ronnie and Marsha and family. I like the flavor of pumpkin pie. I like the flavor of pumpkin, so 
I can keep them for myself if I ever need them. Arnold's starting to eat more stuff, and Larry, he'll almost try anything now. Arnold, he's just starting to pick up on things. I tell both of my boys, try it. If you don't like it, spit it out in the garbage. At least try it. You never know if you like it until you try it. I mean, he kind of gives me a funny look, and I look at him, and I was like, Arnold, you know something? I remember when you were six years old, you wouldn't touch pizza. That was the worst-looking thing that you've ever seen in your life. And now, ten years later, it's the only thing you like to eat. Pepperoni pizzas. Never tried it with sautéed onions and bacon. That would be pretty good. Honestly, personally, I boil them for about an hour. Then I drop them in a nice big old scoop of butter and let them sit up in the butter and soak all in them for about 10 or 15 minutes. Open the bowl and I'm ready to eat them. They're nice and soft, soaked in butter. Yeah, my son's a pizza holic, pepperoni pizza to be exact, or pizza bites, and they have to be pepperoni tasting. He don't like the all meat. He don't like the combos. He wants the pepperoni pizza bites. Sautéed in butter would work. Wow, 9.30. I've been on here eight and a half hours. I think I am going to go ahead and close this live up. Let you guys rest. And if you guys ain't doing nothing tomorrow, I don't know. I might get back on. I might take an intermission break and go to the bathroom and get another soda. And I might go over to Miss Parker's or Grumpy Lobster and see if he's still on or not. Coconut milk, yeah, that would work. So I'm going to say good night to you all. Um, you guys want to be friends? I don't care about being friends on Facebook. We can be friends on here. Larry Frost, Onita, Kentucky. It's easy to look me up. Look at my face. <laughs> it's right there on that. If you get Larry Frost Jr., you'll see him in his cap and gown where he's graduating. You know you got the wrong Larry. And if you send him a request, he's going to be like, not answer you because he don't know you. So he will not answer it. I think he's got two friends on there. Me and his brother. That's it. Name it. <laughs> That's it. Me and his brother. His mama don't even have a Facebook account with him. Good night, y'all. Appreciate every one of you coming and staying this long. I enjoyed keeping you guys company. You guys kept me company. I really appreciate it. Um, maybe one of these times I can get one of them guys to go live with me where we're all getting here and we find some kind of conversation. I mean, what do you guys think would be the best conversation to start up? We want to talk about our president. We want to, well, we talked about Stinky all day long, so we don't want to bring that conversation up too much more. We need to figure something out to talk about. Later, all, you guys have a good night. We'll see y'all again someday. Later. <laughs>